Welcome to a new season of Junkyard Joust. I'm Aaron Yonda, and this is the very first qualifier of Season 3. You can see our five teams that will be competing here tonight. Two of these teams will not move on. Three of them will go on to the Junkyard Joust competition. Let's head into the garage and see who we've got. First up, we've got the One Hit Wonders, sponsored by the Mark W. Falenz Collection. Featuring Cosmic Blues, sponsored by Sloth's Automotive Sachet and Buffet. Twang Thang, sponsored by Tim the Bear Neal. Hip Hop, sponsored by PriceX Private Parts. Classic Rock, sponsored by Woeful Fiber Art. Rockabilly, sponsored by Dion Ice Cream Logue. Ooh, this team looks vicious. They're known as Legionary. With the Hammered Coop, sponsored by Deluxe Flame. Dual Fueler, sponsored by Sean and Patrick Hogan. Troy Soldier, sponsored by Brendan Walsh. Double Vision, sponsored by Sid from Cybertron. And The Commuter, sponsored by Regal Radio. Next up is a unique team. They're called the Worthington Drabsters, sponsored by the Worthington Library. Featuring the Jocko Liner, 74 grams, that thing is heavy. The Fighting Irish. I wonder if that's the skinniest car we've ever had on the show. Flamin' Frank Pedragon's Fiat Coupe. That is not easy to say. The Snake. Oh, that's a lot easier to say. Followed up by the Mongoose. Mongoose and a snake on the same team. Oh, boy. Pink Push is back. They got a brand new team. No Pink Caddy this time. Instead, they've got the 67 VW 1536, sponsored by Hasty Productions. The Pink Bullet, sponsored by Judy Collins. Diaper Dragger, sponsored by Mr. Strathholm. Monte Carlo Concept Car, sponsored by Ellis Wurtenberger. And the Manga Tuner, sponsored by Wayland Enterprises International. Winnebago is back with the Warpath and a more fearsome looking team than ever before. Featuring, of course, the Winnebago, 163 grams. This thing sponsored by AJ's Performance Tuning and Rod Throwing. And the biggest thing on the track tonight, the MBX Cab Over, 199 grams. And wait a minute, what is Tim the Toolman doing up in that convert? Oh, boy, I think he chose the least safe spot on that whole truck. International Durastar Flatbed, sponsored by Stump's Tree Farm. This thing has a ramp. And the 70 Ford F-350, sponsored by Winnebago Trauma Clinic. Another ramp, Winnebago getting into ramps, apparently. And finally, the VW Transport Crew Cab, sponsored by Emo Dingo. If you've seen Junkyard Joust, you know how this works. Rule number one, survive. You gotta be right side up at the end of a round in order to move on to the next round. You're out if you're sideways or upside down. Those are the rules, let's joust! Running order is up, and first on the list is Hip Hop for the One Hit Wonders. Challenge here for the One Hit Wonders is to outlive their name. They're gonna need to get in multiple hits tonight if they wanna stay in this match. You won't see any cars going down the track backwards. That has been ruled out unless there is a special no holds barred round that's required in order to get an elimination, perhaps in the finals. The VW Transport Crew Cab knocks Evil Weevil off the track. Track Buffer did quite well in the head-on collision event. I hope you didn't miss that because it was a lot of fun. Cars flying everywhere. About to hit the track is the Mongoose for the Worthington Drabsters, a team, of course, entirely made up of dragsters. And the trailer gets knocked off of the VW Transport. We've got a brand new rule this season. If a part of your vehicle could be a trailer, could be a chunk of the car, whatever it is, if it comes off of your car, it's eliminated and doesn't come back even if your car survives and goes on to the next round. Dual fueler jabs at the VW Transport Cab makes her a little bit of a recovery there. Dual fueler, of course, for the Legionary team. Some good undercutting ability on that team. And first up for the pink push, it's gonna be the tiny Manga Tuner, 31 grams. Manga Tuner, a good hit, and the first casualty of Season 3 could potentially be Hip Hop, who couldn't quite make it upright. Just about managed to turn over. It looked like it was going to happen, but then it didn't. And now Manga Tuner is in danger. Rockabilly, for the one-hit wonder, is going to try to get some revenge. Rockabilly slams into Manga Tuner, but that car makes a nice recovery. But Rockabilly's got the dual fueler up on the edge of the track, and Mongoose is in a little bit of danger right there. Good hit and potentially setting up some takedowns. Winnebago Warpath gonna send down the International Durastar flatbed, and that ramp is down. Oh, but it doesn't matter. It goes right off the back of Rockabilly. Might have been a bad time to send down a ramp truck, but so far, he's okay up in the front right there. Winnebago definitely trying to spice things up here with some ramps and some extra heavy vehicles this time around. The Jocko Liner takes to the track and annihilates the International flatbed. 
That thing is upside down and done. Rockabilly makes a nice recovery, but the heaviness of the Jocko liner devastating that flatbed truck, and Winnebago has got to be unhappy about that. Double vision now for Legionary. Double Vision, a big hit on the back of the Jocko Liner, sends him up in the air with some undercutting, and part of the Jocko Liner has broken off. I, I think that's supposed to happen. I, I don't know, but it's gone now, and uh, it's not coming back. That will not be put back on that car for the second round if it survives. The 67 VW sort of lightly slams into Double Vision, pushes him up to the front of the track. A very cautious hit, but I guess it did the trick, and that VW is safe up there. It has a very low back, too. Going to be hard to get that car off the track. Here comes Classic Rock, a surprisingly heavy car, 49 grams, and a nice hit for the one-hit wonders there. It knocks double feature off, doesn't really do any damage, and now that car is locked into the track. Winnebago's up next for the Warpath. Winnebago's got a couple new things this season. A low sort of scoop on the front designed to go under ramped cars and a nice low bumper on the back. A nice big hit there and Classic Rock is rocked, but not off the track. That didn't feel like as aggressive of a hit from Winnebago as we're used to, but I think Winnebago trying to play it cautious or something this season. Maybe feeling like all that aggressive behavior in the past hasn't really paid off. And now we've got the Fighting Irish for the Drapsters. Fighting Irish cannot get under Winnebago Bago, so that is working out nicely. Classic Rock is just about sideways. That is not a good position to be in for the one-hit wonders. Winnebago got to be pleased that that back bumper just paid off big time. And now up the commuter for Legionnaire. 60 grams of car knocks the Fighting Irish right off the track with a nice spinning recovery, and the commuter locks it in behind Winnebago. Next up for the push, it's the Monte Carlo concept car. This thing's kind of heavy. And a nice big hit on the commuter. The commuter gets tossed up in the air, upside down, still on the track, so there's maybe a chance of recovery after that hit. That was a nice one, though, from the Monte Carlo concept car. Here comes Twang Thing for the one-hit wonders. I, I guess you'd call that a good car. And a not too bad of a hit there from Twang Thing. Gonna push Commuter off the track. Commuter's probably toast. And now he's locked in on the track. MBX cab over 199 grams. Look out below. Eh, actually, not that big of a hit. <laughs> Expected a lot more from a vehicle that big. I think he got a little bit stuck on the back end in between the track, and so his hit was not as big as it could have been. So for now, Tim the Toolman is safe. Here comes Flamin' Frank Pedregon's Fiat Coupe. The coupe scoots under the cab over, and oh man, that is not a good position for that cab over to be in, but the Fiat lost a chunk of itself as it slid underneath. It's kind of a uh, sharp edge on the back of the cab over there. About to hit the track for Legionnaire it's Troy Soldier. Troy Soldier stabs underneath the cab over and the cab over tips and falls. Somehow Tim the Toolman did not fall out of that convertible. He must have his butt glued to the uh, back of the car and it's not looking good for that cab over. All that weight still couldn't survive that hit from Troy Soldier. Here comes the pink bullet. Pink Bullet knocks a couple cars off the track, and it looks like we might have just lost that coupe, but Troy Soldier makes a nice recovery. Cosmic Blues is gonna hit the track now for the Wonders. Cosmic Blues just slams into the back of Pink Bullet. Cannot get anything to happen. The cab over kind of relaxes a little bit more. He's not going anywhere. And now the Warpath is sending down the 70 Ford F-350. This thing has a nice ramp on the back. Oh man, a great hit there on Cosmic, and it looks like he's out. Oh, he almost recovered, but no, he's looking pretty sideways now. And now we're going to see what happens exactly with that ramp on the back of this truck. It looks pretty deadly. Let's see if this snake can handle it. This thing's got undercutting ability. And what? What just happened? It looks to me like the snake actually just sheared off those treads. They're now farther up underneath the Ford. So not much of a ramp truck if your ramp just breaks right off on the first hit. Good job by the snake there taking those out. Here comes the hammered coop. Hammered coop causes all kinds of damage. There's pieces flying all over the place. The Ford is tossed off the track. The snake is tossed off the track in parts. Both of them upside down. That was a nasty hit there. Legionary, very, very excited about the potential of that car. Diaper dragger now for the bush. 
Diaper Dragger gets underneath the Hammered Coop but can't get him off the track. That was a good hit though. But Diaper Dragger was the final car for this round, so that's going to be the end to the action. Let's take a look at the mess we've got out on the track. We're going to end up with eight cars eliminated in this round. And also, yep, there is the treads from the Ford lying on the track after cleanup. Yep, they were sheared right off. Taking a look at the aftermath, the Worthington Drabsters were hit hard in this round. They lost three of their dragsters. One hit Wonders and Winnebago Warpath each lost two. Legionary just lost the Commuter and Pink Push coming out of this round looking very good without a single loss. And they're going to start us off in round two with the VW 1500. Story of this match so far, the Worthington Drabsters got some great undercutting ability, but not too stable on the track. Three losses is going to be rough for them, but it was pretty impressive when they sheared off the back of that Ford and kind of ruined Winnebago's ramp plans. Here comes the Hammered Coop now for Legionnaire. Hammered Coop just annihilates the VW, and that could definitely be the first elimination for the Pink Push. That car is just a beast, and I don't think the VW is going to be coming back from that hit. And now it's Winnebago. I think Winnebago wants a piece of that Hammered Coop. Maybe that low attachment on the front of the vehicle will do something. And no, it doesn't. It sends Evil Weevil off the track, but instead of taking out the Hammered Coop, Winnebago bounces back and gets tossed off the edge in a really precarious position. That is not where Winnebago wants to be right now. Twang Thang's got an opportunity. And Twang Thang takes the opportunity. Twang Bang and Thang you ma'am. That vehicle is gone. Winnebago, a rough hit right there. Winnebago Warpath came into this match with a plan, and I'm sorry to say that plan is not going well right now. Next up, the Fighting Irish. Fighting Irish gets underneath Twang Thang, and Twang Thang now upside down and pretty much done on the side of the track. Great hit. Drabsters are really good at those kind of hits. Now, if he can just stay on the track, Monte Carlo Concept Car is going to take a shot. Monte Carlo, oh man, almost got the Fighting Irish upside down, but he made a great recovery, and look at this. The Concept Car goes flying off the back of the hammered coupe. Ends up upside down at the front of the track. That hammered coupe is a double threat. Almost got a little bit of a ramp going. Let's see if Troy Soldier can deal with it. Troy Soldier, an amazing hit, but it doesn't work out. He goes off the back of the coupe and ends up upside down after multiple flips over on the left. And the coupe almost comes out, but then somehow he slides back into position on the track. And now the VW Transport Crew Cab's going to take a shot without that trailer. The Crew Cab goes right off the back of the coop into the crates and sideways and the coop however was actually tossed off the track so that did work out but at the cost of that crew cab being probably eliminated rockabilly now for the wonders rockabilly hits the safety bar at the end of the track because there's no cars left they've all been taken off the track and that's just not a good thing to do unfortunately and rockabilly is tossed unceremoniously up in the air upside down and off the track now the jocko liner for the drabsters has to do that same thing and the jocko liner handles it a lot better all that weight proving to be an asset, and he stays very stable on the track, even with part of his car missing. He's moved back a little ways on the track, so it could be a right target for the Diaper Dragger. Let's see what happens. Diaper Dragger does indeed take out the Jocko Liner, and the Jocko Liner goes twirling all over, flips upside down. That was a nice hit by that Diaper Dragger. That car is a little bit of a menace, actually. And now Double Vision's gonna take a shot at the Dragger. A nice cut there underneath the Diaper Dragger, but he can't take him out. The Diaper Dragger makes a great recovery, and so does Double Vision after hitting that safety bar up at the front of the track. Those two cars are good to go. And right now we're looking at Winnebago Warpath's last hope in this match, the 74 F350. He's got to take a run straight in that safety bar, and he manages it fairly well. Does a little bouncing, but manages to let right side up on his teammate Winnebago. That doesn't look like a super safe spot, but we'll see what happens when Classic Rock takes a hit. 49 grams of car right here could be a heavy one. And it was a big hit on the Ford upside down. If he doesn't come back from that, Winnebago is out of this match. The Warpath made a bunch of mistakes in this round, and if they can't get a recovery, they're not even going to qualify and move on to the Junkyard Jazz. Pink Bullet. And 
and pink bullet just like that. Rock and roll is dead. Classic rock flipping upside down on top of Jocko over there and landing almost sideways on the edge of the track, but basically surviving that hit. Here comes dual fueler now for Legionary. Fueler slams into that safety bar and goes almost all the way back up the track. It was a solid recovery. Could have been bad, but a very stable car there. Got those big tires in the back and straddles the track very successfully. Here comes the Manga Tuner for Pink Push. Manga Tuner can't do anything to the fueler. Manages to stay on the track and stay upright. And that is going to be the final car for this round. And I got bad news for the Wonders and for Winnebago. They have no cars left and they are out of this qualifier. Let's take a look at the aftermath. Legionary got three left. Pink Push still have three left. And the Drabsters squeak by with the Fightin' Irish, the only surviving dragster of this match. All three of these teams are gonna move on to the main event. Congrats to our three qualifiers. We've got some interesting cars on these teams to keep an eye on. I don't know what happened with Winnebago Warpath. Looks like they didn't even show up. What the, uh, okay. Looks like we might have a sore loser right here. <laughs> um, unfortunately, Tim the Toolman bearing the brunt of this little stunt. Oh man, the cab over just breaks apart. Tim goes flying up into the air. Looks like he made it all the way to 11. And now he's gonna have to make his way to a hospital. 25 cars enter, but 10 of them will never come back. Welcome to the second qualifier of season three of Junkyard Joust. I'm Aaron Yonda. Five teams here, two of which you might remember. Aqua Turks from season one and Mandalorian Iron from season Star Wars. I guess that was just more a special series than an actual season. Let's take a look at our teams. The Mandalorian is back with Mandalorian Iron and a whole new team, except for himself, of course, the Mandalorian, sponsored by Sloth's Automotive Sachet and Buffet. The Child, sponsored by Willful Fiber Art. The Yo Dasher, sponsored by Jonathan's Leprechauns. Looks a little cobbled together, but 81 grams. Man, I've never seen a baby pod that heavy before. Should be a menace on the track. Next up is the Land Speeder. And the final member of this team, 34 Chrysler Airflow. Propulsion, now here's a team with a couple of undercutters, a couple of ramps, should be interesting. Pedal the Metal, sponsored by Deluxe Flame. Turbo Flame, sponsored by Pricex Private Parts. Tricera Truck, sponsored by Hendrika's Heavy Hauling. Thunderstreak, sponsored by Sid from Cybertron. And Too Cool, sponsored by Regal Radio. Time to get some Lamborghinis in our lives with Lambo number five. Featuring the Murcielago LP674 SV, sponsored by Judy Collins. The Lamborghini Benino, sponsored by Ellie's Hop Shop. The Aventador LP704, sponsored by Swedenborg's Smorgasbord. The Aventador J, sponsored by Hey Hey's Hatchback Hanger. And the Huracan LP620, sponsored by Jedi. Next up is Lokiverse, a team made up of various versions of supervillains. First up, of course, is Loki, sponsored by Liz's Wizard Arts and Witchcrafts. Bully Goat Red Skull, sponsored by Whalen Enterprises International. Ultron, sponsored by Mr. Stratholm. Scoopa de Fuego Loki, sponsored by Ellis Wurtenberger. And another version of Red Skull. The Aqua Turks are back with a brand new team, one of which appears to have wings. It's Eruption, sponsored by TJGI. The Buick Wildcat, sponsored by Chome. Devancinator, sponsored by Stump's Tree Farm. 71 Buick Riviera, sponsored by Winnebago Trauma Clinic. And the 80 Chevy El Camino, sponsored by Emo Dingo. The rules are simple, survive. Every car has to drive down the track, smash into the rest of the cars, and if they end up upside down or sideways at the end of a round, they are eliminated. Any cars that are right side up at the end of the round move on to the next round. In the qualifier, the match ends when two teams have lost all their cars and the remaining three teams move on. The running order is up, let's joust. We're gonna start off with Mandalorian Iron and the Chrysler Airflow. Chrysler Airflow's got a nice low back. I think they're hoping to set up a little bit of a ramp down there at the end of the track. That's probably why they're sending this car down first. Looks like most of the debris has been cleaned up from the last round of head-on collisions. A lot of car parts lying around. Now up for the Aquaturks, the Buick Riviera. 
Buick Riviera does not take the invitation to go off the back of that car like it's a ramp, and it locks it in on the track. A nice hit there for the Aqua Turks. Aqua Turks were around back in season one of Junkyard Joust. Nice to see them back again in the competition. Now up for the Loki verse, it's Red Skull, or one of the Red Skulls. There's multiples. This Red Skull, oh man, it hits the back of that Chrysler and just pops off the track upside down. Yikes, you'd expect a super villain to do a little bit better than that. Lambo number five is going to send down their first Lambo, the Aventador J. The Aventador wrestles that Buick off the back of the Chrysler, knocks him upside down and off the track. A nice takedown right there for Lambo number five. The Aventador is now curbside, though. That could be bad. Depends on what Pedal de Metal gets up to for propulsion. Pedal to Metal slams into the back of that Aventador, but he makes a nice recovery. Back to being right side up, pretty safe over there, and Pedal to Metal almost loses the front cover of the car. I don't know if you can see it, but it appears that there are two guys pedaling that car. It's actually uh, more of a, a bicycle car, apparently. They're not going to want to lose that cover. It's the only thing between them and all the cars that are coming down the track. Here comes the Mandalorian now for the iron. If you saw the special Star Wars junkyard joust in the winter you saw the Mandalorian team they did all right they didn't do great but they got some new vehicles now and I think they got a better chance the Mandalorian takes out that cover off the pedal to metal pedal to metal still on the track but now they're not gonna have that cover next round if they happen to survive this round and Mandalorian is a little bit prone right there that could be bad now up for the Turks it's the 80 Chevy El Camino it's kind of a wild looking car it's got a nice low chassis though could be helpful and a nice takedown there Mandalorian and pedal to metal both knocked off off the track. Pedal to metal, though, not necessarily. Oh, yep, actually went back sideways and almost got back together with the cover of the car, but um, that's not looking good for pedal to metal. Great hit by the El Camino. Might have just taken out two competitors with that one. Ultron is up next for the Loki verse, and look at this. Tim the Tool Man deciding to take a ride down with Ultron. And that went about as well as expected. Tim flying out of the back. Very nice. Couple of 360s there, and he lands on his feet and then gets crushed by the top of pedal the metal speed. So uh, pretty much par for the course for Tim. I'm starting to get the feeling he's just waiting up at the top of the hill and climbing into vehicles right before they go down or something. I don't even know if those teams want him in their cars. Though he doesn't seem to have done any harm here. Ultron down at the end looking good. Aventador LP now is up for Lambo number five. The Aventador slides under Ultron and pushes him off the track, but he is still right side up, so a better fate than what befell Red Skull, at least so far. And now Propulsion's gonna send down Too Cool and maybe try to set up a ramp here with that big thing. Ooh, the big front end of Too Cool knocks that Camino finally off the track. The Camino takes a bad bounce and goes upside down. It's probably going to do it for him, but that Aventador is not going anywhere. He's staying sideways on the track, and now it looks like we might have sort of a ramp set up. Let's see how Land Speeder fares with the back of Too Cool right now. Mandalorian Iron. And the Land Speeder, wow, that was anticlimactic. Just sort of taps the back of Too Cool, does not go off the back of him. And it looks like he's maybe a little bit too big for the track. I thought the land speeder was going to hover above the track and crash into cars that way, but it doesn't look like that's working out. And so he just barely makes it down the track. Not a super good showing right there. Now the Devancinator is going to take to the track for Aqua Turks. Devancinator sends the land speeder over the back of Too Cool. Gets some good movement there, more than the land speeder could do for itself. And Devancinator almost goes off the back of Too Cool, but doesn't quite make it. Stays locked in the track. We'll see if the next car to come down forces him off the back. So not much damage there from Devancinator, but a good hit nonetheless. And now here comes Loki for Lokiverse. Loki headbutts Devancinator, but can't get him off the track. Little bit of action there, but he can't move him. He's, you know, curbside, so there could be some trouble next time, but another great recovery by Devancinator, surviving the peril of that ramp and the peril of Loki. Lambo number five is gonna send down the Murcielago LP674SV next. Murcielago assassinates Loki, sends him skyward, and none of Loki's magic is able to get him out of this one. He lands right on top of his own horns, and it looks like Devancinator made a great escape there, recovering from that hit nicely. Next up, we've got the Triceratruck for Purpulsion. 
Triceratruck clobbers the Murcielago, knocks him off of the back of Too Cool, and Murcielago cannot make a recovery. Too vicious of a hit by the Triceratruck. Now up for the iron, it's the child. The child slams into Triceratruck and uh, very gently nudges, I would say, more than slams, actually. Triceratruck is nearly sideways. I think that would count as right side up if he stays like that. The child right now in peril. We've seen the child escape peril. Usually it's because of the Mandalorian's help, but the Mandalorian is already upside down and out. So there might be a little extra danger to the child here from Eruption for Aquaturks. Eruption with the wings of glory. The child goes spinning upside down, bonks his head and lands on his face. Not a good situation for the child. Good hit by Eruption. Now Eruption poised on the back of that ramp. Too Cool's ramp might not be something that all cars go off of right away, but it has been proving to be pretty devastating for some of these cars. Bully Goat Red Skull's up now for Lokiverse. This Red Skull does some serious damage. Eruption goes flying, but the wings don't help him fly. And he lands upside down and stays upside down. Might be that those wings didn't really help anything at all. A solid hit by the Red Skull. The Hurricane LP622 Super Trofeo is up now for Lambo number five. The Trofeo, oh man, he takes Red Skull out, but then bounces off the back of Too Cool and flops off the track upside down. So what was a good hit turns into kind of mixed results for Lambo number five. Propulsion's gonna send down Turbo Flame. This car looks vicious. Turbo Flame goes flying off the back of his own teammate, hits the crates, and makes an amazing recovery sliding back along the track. Can't quite get all the way off the track, which could become a liability, but a great recovery there off of his own teammate, now potentially becoming a liability for propulsion. And now here comes 81 grams of the Yo Dasher. This is gonna be a big hit. Ooh, the Yo Dasher piles into Thunderstreak, sends Thunderstreak off over to the tires, but a great recovery there, and then comes back off the crates and punches Too Cool way back down the track. Just uses that weight to force him back. I don't know if this is going to be a better position for Too Cool to be in. Looks like the Buick Wildcat's going to be the first one to test out this new position for the Aqua Turks. The Wildcat goes all the way off the back and all the way down the track. Slams into Yo Dasher and ends up upside down. That was a disastrous run for the Buick and now Too Cool's back down at the end. I think that car's proving to be a reasonable good ramp car even if it's a little bit unstable when there's a heavier vehicle around. Here comes Scoopa de Fuego Loki for the Loki burst. Scoopa skirts the back of Too Cool and actually starts to push Too Cool up a little bit. Doesn't quite go off the back of him and this might be the end of that ramp. A great hit there by this alternate version of Loki. Looks like Scoopa de Fuego was crafty enough to avoid that ramp. Now up for Lambo number five it's the Venino. Benino with a nice low front manages to get that ramp off the track and also manages to get that Loki off the track upside down and unfortunately again Lambo number five with another vehicle that does some great damage but then goes upside down itself so it's not really helping their team that much. And the final car of this round is going to be Thunderstreet for Propulsion. They sent down their Undercutter last. And the Undercutter doesn't do a whole lot of damage. Although, wait a minute, look at the Yo Dasher. If I'm not mistaken, I think we just saw the Yo Dasher go sideways enough to be eliminated. So a devastating hit there from Propulsion. And out of 25 cars that entered this round, there are only nine left. And amazingly enough, all five teams still have entrance in this match. Looking at propulsion right now, wow. Four cars left, and they are doing really nice for themselves. Lambo number five doing okay with two left right now, and Aquaturks, Mandalorian, and Lokiverse each just have one left apiece. Those teams are going to have to do something pretty amazing right here to stay in this match. Propulsion are going to start us off in round two with Too Cool. Makes sense. That thing did some good damage last time. Propulsion wanted to see if it can do some more damage to the cars that are left. The only problem here is it could also do damage to their own team. Although they do have an undercutter that could probably get under it. And they could end their own car if they chose to do that. 
With four cars left, they are in pretty good position right here to make it out of this qualifier. Aventador J now for Lambo number five. The Aventador doesn't go off the ramp. A great hit right there. The Aventador goes curbside, but manages to survive, and that is really going to help their team stay in this qualifier. The last hope for Mandalorian Iron, the Land Speeder, the only vehicle they have left. And the land speeder comes to a halt before it even hits any cars. That's a pretty crap strategy if you ask me, but I guess it worked to keep him in the last round. Let's see if it works again. Aquaturk's got one left. It's Devancinator. Devancinator did pretty good last round. Devancinator annihilates the land speeder. And I have to say, I'm honestly kind of glad that land speeder was a big disappointment and Devancinator was not interested in seeing it stick around. And that's going to end the hopes for Mandalorian Iron. They are most likely out of this unless that vehicle gets righted somehow over there on top of the Aventador. Ultron now for the Loki verse. Looks like Tim decided not to go down this time. Ultron takes down Devancinator, pushes him right off at the back of Too Cool, and that could do it for the Aqua Turks. Ultron manages to stay upright. Gonna have to call him the Lucky Verse right now because if Ultron had gone over, their team could have been out of this as well. And they are definitely still not out of danger being perched on the track like that. Propulsion's now gonna send down Thunderstreak. It's time for some undercutting. Thunderstreak takes out his own teammate. They've got a way to take out their own ramp. Man, Man, that is nasty. They uh, push him off the track. Could have tried to keep him right side up, but nope. Turbo Flame just assassinates his own teammate. That's kind of rough, but I kind of see why they did it. And here comes the other Aventador for Lambo number five. Lambo number five staying alive. They still got two in this. It's looking good for them right now. There's just a couple more propulsions that got to come down, and it's looking like we might know who our finalists are after Ultron makes that narrow escape. Turbo Flame for propulsion. Turbo Flame tries to take out the Aventador and it makes a great recovery. Flips over and lands right side up and Thunderstreak makes a great recovery there too, showing some stability. Not a whole lot to prove here for Triceratruck, but it's good to go down, get some experience and get a feel for the track. And Triceratruck puts Turbo Flame to the test. Turbo Flame with a great recovery right there. And Triceratruck stays on the track. Great showing by Propulsion. They really showed that they are a team to watch this season. So the two returning teams, Mandalorian Iron and Aqua Turks, have been eliminated from this qualifier. They are going to have to go back to the drawing board. Meanwhile, these three teams are going to go on to the main Junkyard Joust event. Now that they've got this qualifier under their belts, they can take what they learned and go back and come up with some new strategies, try to do even better in the main event. Don't forget, Junkyard Joust has a Discord. There's a link in the description. We're also doing some friendly betting on these qualifiers. You can get more information on that in the description and on the Discord. And please like the video and leave a comment if you get a chance, maybe who you think is gonna do well this season or who you're most excited about. Welcome to the third qualifier of Season 3 of Junkyard Joust. Hi everybody, I'm Aaron Yanda. Five teams are competing tonight. Three of them will move on to the Junkyard Joust event. Lots of new vehicles here and just a couple familiar ones. Let's take a look at our teams. First up is Wolby's Wreckers, an X-Men themed team led, of course, by Wolverine, or multiple Wolverines. And here's the first Wolverine, sponsored by Sloth's Automotive Sachet and Buffet. And here is the Wolverine Majorette version, sponsored by Tim the Bear Neal. Next up is the Chrysler Atlantic and the 71 Plymouth Satellite, sponsored by Sean and Patrick Hogan. And lastly, the 69 Nissan Skyline Van. Next up, it's the Bonsai Boys. They're ready to ride over their opponents like a wave. Here's the leader of the team, the Bonsai Boys, sponsored by a Hendrika's Heavy Hauling. Surfs Up, sponsored by Woeful Fiber Art. The 64 Oldsmobile Vista Cruiser, Surfboarder, sponsored by Sid from Cybertron. And Backdraft, sponsored by Raygal Radio. Sugar Crash won the Battle of the Losers, reformed their team, and now they're back, ready for action. One of the new members of their team, Hershey's Miniatures, 82 grams, sponsored by Swedenborg's Smorgasbord. The other new member of the team, Baby Ruth, sponsored by Hey Hey's Hatchback Hanger. And back in action again, it's Chunky, sponsored by Chome. Raisinette, sponsored by Whalen Enterprises International. And Crunch, sponsored by Brendan Walsh. The Red Shells, it's Mario and gang, and they have gliders above all of their vehicles. Those could be interesting on the track. 
Featuring Bowser, sponsored by Liz's Wizard Arts and Witchcrafts. Yoshi. Mario, sponsored by Ellis Wurtenberger. Peach. And Luigi, sponsored by Hey Steve Productions. And lastly, the Big Shots. This team looks ready to shoot down the opposition with Bullet Bill, sponsored by TJGI. XT3, sponsored by Judy Collins. The Z-Rod, sponsored by Stump's Tree Farm. Lean Machine. And Clip Rod, sponsored by Emo Dingo. The rules are simple. Survive. Every car has to drive down the track, smash into the rest of the cars, and if they end up upside down or sideways at the end of a round, they are eliminated. Any cars that are right side up at the end of the round move on to the next round. In the qualifier, the match ends when two teams have lost all their cars, and the remaining three teams move on. It's time to joust, and we're going to start off with Z-Rod from the Big Shots. Looks like Z-Rod's got a nice low center of gravity. Should be a good performer for this team. It's kind of appropriate that Bullet Bill is on the Big Shots team, taking on the Red Shells. And speaking of them, Mario is going to start us off. Now, Mario's an interesting vehicle here. A lot of the Red Shells team have some sort of an apparatus up above them. In this case, it's a glider for Mario. And it looks like that might stop their vehicles from going over very easily. Could give them a big advantage for this team. It's a pretty smart play. You got to take whatever edge you can get in the Junkyard Joust if you want to survive. Starting us off for Wolvie's record, it's going to be Wolverine. He's got the claws out. Look out. Wolverine! Oh man, what a spectacular failure there from Wolverine. He claws his way into Mario, pushes him off the track, and it does absolutely no good. He flips over. I think the claws retracted, and unfortunately, he flipped right upside down. Bad start there for Wolvie's records. It looks like the Z-Rod survived that hit, too. Here comes one of the rookies for Sugar Crash, Hershey's Miniature. 82 grams. This is a big vehicle. He crashes into the safety railing up front, and there was no buffer there, so he goes flying backwards, almost sideways, but manages to stay curbside. That is still not a good position to be in. Hershey's learning the hard way what it means when you hit that safety rail with no buffer. Evil Weevil is there for a reason. Backdraft is going down first for the Bonsai boys, and it looks like Tim wants in on some of that action. Bonsai indeed. Ooh, Tim does not manage to stay seated. Flips right out of the car and lands, unfortunately, on the track right in front of Backdraft. Ugh. That is just not going to be a good situation for him to be in when this next car comes down. Looks like Bullet Bill is going to get a chance to pulverize Tim the Tool Man for the big shots. <laughs> Heavy hit, and Tim the Tool Man goes catapulting off the track over and over off to the left, landing on his face in the dirt. I don't know why he does this. Looks like Backdraft and Bullet Bill managed to stay on the track, and they are nicely locked in. Now Yoshi's up for the red shells. Let's see if his glider helps him survive this hit. Yoshi slams into bullet Bill and pushes forward a little bit too hard and flops backwards on his back. Now that's questionable whether or not that is considered survival to the next round. We're gonna have to leave that up to the officials if he stays in that position. Bullet Bill on the other hand is now sideways and is in trouble. Next up for the Wreckers, it is the 71 Plymouth Satellite. Let's see if this thing can do a little bit better than its captain, Wolverine. And a nice hit there. Backdraft gets poked and almost pushed off the track. Nice heavy hit, and somehow Bullet Bill just stayed there. It's like the car didn't even hit him or something. Sugar Crash is going to send down the Raisinets. 89 grams. This is going to be a big one. Raisinets slams into the back of the satellite, sends a couple of cars flying, but good luck for Bullet Bill. He lands right side up, and Backdraft is okay. And now we got three heavy vehicles lined up on the track. Yoshi staying in the same position. The Bonsai boys are gonna send down Surfboarder next. Oh, an incredible slam in the back of Raisinets, and somehow this 38-gram car has just manhandled Raisinets, knocked him off the track completely. That is a big vehicle, an incredible feat for that car. Bonsai Boy's got to be happy with that performance. I did not expect to see that Raisinets vehicle get removed from the track in this match at all. Cliprod is up now for the big shots. 
Cliff Rod, a great hit on the back of Surfboarder, and Surfboarder goes up and over the satellite and upside down. A nice takedown there for Big Shots, but I still gotta give Surfboarder a lot of credit for taking that Raisinets vehicle out. And here comes Luigi for the red shells. Luigi with the cloud above him. Luigi flips right over on his face. The two smiling clouds doing nothing to prevent his demise. And he is face forward upside down and he even pushes Yoshi a little farther off. Doesn't do anything to the clip rod. That was a very ineffective hit. Very disappointing showing there from Luigi. Mario looking on over by the crates with disgust. Here comes another Wolverine. This is the Majorette version of Wolverine. Got a big claw in the front. Let's see if it does any better. And sort of an ineffective hit. At least he didn't flip over and end himself on that hit. It's a light car, so the challenge is going to be staying on the track when the next vehicle comes down for Sugar Crash. It's Baby Ruth, another newbie. Nice hit there by Baby Ruth, and the Majorette Wolverine manages to make a recovery backing off the track just a little bit. That could be enough to survive this round. Next up for the Bonsai Boys, it's the 64 Oldsmobile Vista Cruiser, 55 grams. A nice smash right there, and that is gonna take down the other Wolverine, flipping it over, and Baby Ruth, great recovery right there. Almost off the track, just about safe. It's a good sign that that Baby Ruth car turned right side up, proving itself a worthy addition to this team, and maybe they'll get out of the qualifiers this time. Big Shots are going with the Lean Machine. Now, this vehicle doesn't look particularly stable. Let's see how it does. Lean Machine, kind of a slow moving vehicle, hits the back of the Oldsmobile and goes underneath. Now that could actually be a very good thing to have happen. That was a nice bump and move by the Lean Machine to get underneath the Oldsmobile. Next hit could end up with that Oldsmobile getting flipped over because of Lean Machine. Now up for the red shells, it's Peach. Peach hits Lane Machine, and yep, pretty much what I said was gonna happen. Oldsmobile goes up in the air and flips it over. Cannot quite make a recovery there. Probably not coming back right side up, and I think Lane Machine is on to the next car in line. Just gonna keep carving its way towards the front is what it's looking like. Now up for the records, it's the Chrysler Atlantic with Storm, I believe, on the side of the car. The Chrysler Atlantic, oh, a bad hit. Knocks Peach around a little bit, but then flips over. I think it actually probably takes Peach out. Yep, well, eh, it's hard to say, honestly. I, I'm gonna let the officials make that call, but bad hit for the Atlantic because it is sideways on the track, unless it gets a lucky bounce when it gets hit by Crunch, who's coming down next for Sugar Crash. Crunch makes a disastrous hit. Cars are flying everywhere. The Atlantic goes over and upside down. Clip Rod, ooh man, it is close right now for Clip Rod. And look at this, Crunch is almost sideways. That was such a devastating hit. Crunch almost destroyed himself. And now I'm noticing Lean Machine also appears to be sideways here. So that was a big hit. Even though he probably took himself out, it may have been worth it. Bonsai Boys now for the Bonsai Boys. Bonsai Boys, I don't know what just happened there, but that was basically nothing. It slowed down. It doesn't look like that car fits on the track. Kind of a surprising choice for this team. I think they just chose it based on looks more than they did function. And that thing, uh, it barely made it down the track and it just sort of nudges Crunch. And let's see if the big shots can do something here with XT3. XT3, a nice hit there on the Bonsai Boys. Knocks it upside down and almost goes sideways itself. Oof, that was close. XT3, of course, if you remember way back in season one, was one of the cars that competed to be on the Dead and Gone team. Didn't make it, but it did manage to get on this team and it did all right in this first showing. Next up for the Red Shells, Bowser. Bowser, a nice big hit, but there's not much moving. Bonsai Boys goes for a ride on Luigi's Clouds and then comes back still upside down. Not saying a whole lot more, except maybe XT3 has been pushed completely sideways here. That could be bad news for him. And actually, look at this. Crunch made a recovery on that hit. Wreckers are going to send down the 69 Nissan Skyline Band. 
The Van makes a nice hit on Bowser. I don't think eliminates Bowser. Gets some movement there, though. Actually looks like maybe Bonsai Boys got righted because of that. So, unfortunately, a bad result there. A card just recovering instead of getting eliminated from that hit. Next up for the crash, it's Chunky. Good slam from Chunky, but it's a solid line of cars right now. Bowser gets tossed up in the air a little bit, and now Bonsai Boys is again in peril, almost upside down. It keeps changing on every hit, but the Skyline Van and Chunky are nicely locked into the track right now. Surf's up is up for the Bonsai Boys. This is a wild vehicle, and it's also the final car of this round. Surf's up, gets a nice hit on the back of Chunky, but doesn't really do anything. Tough to say. It looks like Bowser's probably still eliminated here. Taking a look at the wreckage, we've got Tim over there on the sidelines. Looks like he's still unconscious. And what I'm seeing from this above shot is it looks like a lot of the Red Shell's vehicles are probably going to be counted right side up here. Luigi somehow making a recovery. Taking a look at the aftermath, nine cars were eliminated out of 25. Three for the Bonsai Boys and three for Wolvie's Wreckers. One each for the other three teams. I gotta say, I don't know how the Red Shells pulled that off. I thought they had a lot more eliminations, but they came out of that looking good. But then again, so did the Big Shots and Sugar Crash. Hershey's Miniature taking its place on the track. The first two qualifiers started with more of a huge massacre in the first round. And in this qualifier, not so much. We've got three teams that are looking real good, and the other two certainly not out of it. Here comes Peach now for the Red Shells. Peach goes tumbling off the back of the Hershey's Miniatures and makes a pretty sweet recovery. I get the feeling that these Red Shell vehicles are going to be hard to eliminate. XT3, another car that had a close call in that first round but managed to survive it. And a nice hit there, but it can't quite get Hershey's Miniatures off the track. And XT3 turns right over, twists upside down. Still could cause some problems for Hershey's Miniatures, and maybe that's what Big Shots are counting on. Here comes the Plymouth Satellite. Had a solid first round. Let's see what it can do this time. Plymouth Satellite does an amazing smash, double hit, pushes XT3 up and then finishes off Hershey's Miniatures upside down off the track. A little bit in danger right there, but that was a quality smack from that Plymouth Satellite. Time to see if Surf's Up can catch a wave for the Bonsai Boys. They need something here. They are down to two cars. Surf's up, goes surfing right off the back of the Plymouth Satellite, and he wipes right out. Goes over the falls and face plants, not happening for Surf's up this time, and then the Plymouth Satellite escaped on that round, off to the left. About to hit the track for Sugar Crash, Baby Ruth. Baby Ruth slams into XT3, and look at that. A little combination hit, and XT3 is back right side up. Unbelievable recovery by that vehicle. You never would have expected it. And now Baby Ruth is curbside. Baby Ruth is a new vehicle, probably got some nerves, and they're showing right now. Luigi up for the red shells. Luigi slams into Baby Ruth and just takes him right out. Sends him over to the crates upside down, and I believe Luigi is probably going to be counted as sideways. He's tipped over enough past the 45-degree angle that I think that's going to count. Luigi definitely making up for his mess in the first round that he was lucky enough to survive. Here comes Bullet Bill, though, and he's out for blood. Bullet Bill slams into XT3, and again, that car is flipped. And this time, it's upside down behind the safety rail. It seems unlikely that it's coming back from that. Unfortunately, XT3 on the same team as Bullet Bill, so Bullet Bill got to be a little disappointed that he couldn't uh, keep his companion right side up. Now it's time for the Nissan Skyline van for the Wreckers. Big hit there, and Bullet Bill is tossed overboard. Flipping around, and it looks like he's going to make it, and he can't quite do it, and he ends up upside down. A good hit there. The Wolvies Wreckers, they just have these two cars left, and they are making a great show of it here in round two. Now Backdraft is up for the Bonsai Boys. Let's see if he can make a better showing than Surf's up. 
And, well, not necessarily a bad showing. Just a lot of bouncing around, going back and forth on the track. And it's not a great place to be in way down there. But Backdraft seems like a fairly agile car, so it'll be interesting to see how it survives in that position. And Backdraft is going to take a big hit from Chunky now. 80 grams for Sugar Crash. And it was a big hit, but somehow Backdraft takes it, goes up to the front, bounces around, and Chunky says, no, you're staying up here this time. Keep going. And now we got three cars locked on the track, ready for action. A classic line there for Mario as he takes to the track for the Red Shells. Bam, and Mario can't go anywhere. Just solidifies that line of cars. Mario stays on the track in a pretty perilous position. I get the feeling that Mario took this position on the track just so he could hang out and chat with Peach. Well, whatever he's got to say to Peach, he better say it quick. Clip Rod is about to take a big shot. Ooh, Mario barely even notices that hit from Clip Rod. Makes a nice recovery there. Good balance. Doesn't even tip over because of that glider. Mario showing off for Peach right there. And the red shells are looking pretty good right now. Let's see if that line of cars can hold up under the onslaught of Crunch for Sugar Crash. Big hit, but nobody's going anywhere. The line almost buckles, but not quite. And Crunch locks it in on the track. Here comes Yoshi for the red shells. I keep waiting for him to use his tongue and try to eat one of the cars. Yoshi plows into the back of Crunch and hits his face on the back of that semi. Flips over upside down. That uh, looks like what Luigi did in round one, but we know what happened then, so who knows? Maybe Yoshi's got a chance of recovering, but it's kind of a, an embarrassing hit right there for Yoshi. Z-Rod's back for the big shots. That's a cool looking guy. The Z-Rod boinks Yoshi off the track, and Yoshi stays upside down. That does not look very promising for him right now. And that's actually going to be the end of round two, so Yoshi is definitely out of this. Taking a look at the wreckage of round two, we're going to lose seven additional vehicles, almost as many as round one. That was a pretty good round for getting rid of some vehicles. And the good news is, though, for all these teams, they are all still in this. All five teams still have cars in the match. Taking a look look at the aftermath we've got only one left now for the bonsai boys and look at this all the other teams still have two in this match Heading into round three, and the Red Shells are going to be starting us off this round. They lost Luigi and Yoshi on that last run as Mario knocks himself into place. Our running order in the upper left-hand corner, if you want to see the order of the teams are going down. After what seemed like an uneven start, this qualifier has turned into our most even qualifier so far. Any of these teams have a chance of making it out of this qualifier. Crunch is going to head down first for the Sugar Crash. Can Mario survive this hit? And bam! Mario is knocked off the track! Crunch crushing him, knocking the glider away, breaking it off the car. And Mario still making a recovery even without that glider. But man, that was a nasty hit from Crunch. And Mario will not get to reinstall that glider for the next round if he does indeed survive this round. Now up for the big shots, it's Clip Ride. Nice hit there, but a little bit of danger. Clip Rod curbside, that could be bad. It's the Plymouth Satellite coming down for the wreckers, and we've seen the damage that this thing can do. A nice recovery there by Clip Rod. Bounces back and gets off the track, getting back to safety. Right now, nobody eliminated in this round. We've got a competition, folks. These cars are tough, and nobody wants to lose. Backdraft is the lone survivor for Bonsai Boys, so Backdraft has to be careful here and keep in this match. Good hit there. Locks himself on the track. Nobody is moving. We've got a nice line of cars established. Peach is going to take to the track next. This car's a little unstable. Let's see if it can lock it in or if it goes off. And Peach gets curbside, manages to pry Backdraft off the track just a little bit there at the very end. So now they're both curbside. That could weaken up that line of cars a little bit and cause some serious trouble for both of those vehicles. Especially since it's chunky 80 grams, this should be a big hit. 
bam, Peach goes over and is done. Backdraft flips and makes a great recovery over by Mario. That is gonna make sure that the Bonsai Boys stay in this match for another round. And now here comes Z-Rod for the big shots. Z-Rod smacks solidly into the back of Chunky and nobody's going anywhere. The Nissan Skyline van's coming down next and this is a nice sized car. It could cause some trouble. No, that line of cars is too solid. The van just takes its place in the line and nobody's moving yet again. And that is already the end of round three. It looks like only one vehicle was eliminated. It was Peach. And that is going to take the red shells down one vehicle, but all these teams are still in this match. Though Mario's not going to have his glider on this next run. Right now, the red shells and the bonsai boys the most in danger, but anything can happen when this few cars still remain on the track. Here we go for round four. The Z-Rod is going to start us out for the big shots. Z-Rod makes a nice hit and zooms into place, taking his position up at the front. Z-Rod and the Clip Rod are agile vehicles, not like a lot of the heavy vehicles that are on the track right now. I think as long as they keep their wits about them, they have a good chance of making it out of this qualifier. Here comes the Skyline van taking its place. Oh man, nice hit there. And the Z-Rod is removed from the track, but it doesn't end up being a bad thing. Gonna be pretty hard to knock him upside down from that position, but it's not out of the realm of possibility. Chunky's coming down next with a big hit. Chunky slams into the back of that Skyline but the Skyline refuses to go anywhere, just doesn't move. And that stubbornness is definitely doing a good thing for Wolby's Wreckers, keeping them in this match. Here comes Backdraft again for the Bonsai Boys. Backdraft, a nice hit there, moves Evil Weevil off the track, but not much else going on. We got another line of cars locked into place. That seems to be happening a lot in this match. The challenge here for the competitors is to stay locked in this line of cars, because once you get booted out of that line, then things become a little bit more dangerous. Here comes Mario Sands Glider. Mario attacks the back of Backdraft, but can't do anything. Backdraft gets knocked off the track, but Mario spins around and goes sideways, pointing back in the other direction. He's definitely sideways, but he's still on the track, so he's going to take another hit, and he could get righted pretty easily from this position. Cliprod's going to give him a hit. Cliprod punts Mario off the track, and Mario bonks his head on the ground. But we all know that Mario likes to use his head as a weapon and he makes a great recovery because of that bounce. And that is gonna keep the red shells going. Here comes the Plymouth Satellite now for the records. Big hit, but nobody's moving. Although the whole line bounces back off the safety rail a little ways back down the track and that could cause some things to loosen up before this round is over. Final vehicle for this round is gonna be Crunch. Crunch does exactly that. It crunches the Plymouth Satellite up into the back of Cliprod and agonizingly slowly he goes over, back over his head, upside down. And that's gonna be our elimination for this round. And that means we're gonna have to go into a fifth round and unbelievably all five teams are still in this match. Taking a look at the aftermath, there they are. Two teams left with two and three teams with one. All five of these teams are tough. None of them wanting to go. They all have some great cars. I'm gonna be sorry to see two of these teams get eliminated here today. Here comes the clip ride now for the big shots. Two left for the big shots. They must be feeling pretty big at the moment as the clip rod slides into place up at the front of the track and gets ready to take a hit and it's gonna be from crunch for the crash crunch a nasty hit and look at the recovery of clip rod bouncing off of evil weevil flipping over evil weevil upside down but clip rod not at all agile car great move right there and now crunch in the middle of the track gotta say i'm pretty impressed by how sugar crash has been doing in this match better showing than in their first qualifier but they're not out of the woods yet here comes backdraft for the bonsai boys 
solid hit there and a lot of bouncing now. We've got cars spaced out all along the track. Crunch careens forward, bounces back, and Backdraft does indeed draft backwards. That could potentially be a vulnerable position to be in when he takes a hit from Mario, who's coming down next for the Red Shells. Mario careens off the track, off of Backdraft, flips upside down, look at that, skids over on his head. Oh, he was so close, so very close to riding himself and surviving for another round, but he couldn't quite do it. And that unbelievably is gonna end the Red Shell's run at this qualifier. This team at first looked undefeatable and now they are gone. These other vehicles have proven themselves to be a match. And here comes the skyline. The Skyline plows into the back of Backdraft and they all line up solidly on the track. If Backdraft gets eliminated, the Bonsai Boys are out. Z-Rod now for the big shots. Z-Rod can't get anything happening. That line of cars is too tight and Z-Rod backs off a little bit down the track. There's one car left to go down the track. Are we gonna find another elimination in this round or will Mario be the only one? Here comes Chunky. Chunky slams into the Z-Rod and look at that. What an amazing recovery. That car flips around three or four times, hits the crates and lands it perfectly on the right hand side. All that flipping around and look at the grace with which Z-Rod recovers from that hit. And we are going to round six, folks. Only Mario was eliminated in that round. Taking a look at the aftermath. Red shells are out. Bonsai Boys and Wolvie's records are the most threatened right now, but Big Shots and Sugar Crash could easily get eliminated. Anything can happen in the Junkyard Joust. Here comes the Z-Rod starting us off again in round six. The first two qualifiers only went two rounds apiece, and now this qualifier is going six. You just never know what you're gonna get. There are some great cars on these teams, and they are tough to eliminate. Sugar Crash is gonna opt to send down Chunky and try to take out the Z-Rod. Will it work? Chunky pops Z-Rod up in the air and does it! A lot of flipping around, just like last round, but Z-Rod cannot make the recovery. Flips over, hits the track, and goes upside down. Just a menacing hit there from Chunky, and I did not expect that we were gonna see the Z-Rod upside down. I am impressed by that hit from Chunky. Backdraft now. Backdraft smacks into the back of Chunky, and Chunky's not going anywhere at all. We're gonna get that line of cars again, I suspect. Well, these wreckers are pinning all their hopes on the Skyline van. Skyline van locks it into place on the track. There are three cars backed up. Are we gonna see another elimination this round? Is another team gonna get pushed out of this qualifier and end it? Big Shot's last hope right here is Clip Rod. Big hit from Clip Rod and a bounce backwards off the back of the Skyline. And that's gonna put the Clip Rod in a vulnerable position back down the track with nothing in front of it, could get easily thrown off the track if he takes a good hit. And good hits are Crunch's specialty. Let's see what Crunch can do here. Crunch slams the clip rod, knocks two cars off the track. The Nissan Skyline makes an amazing recovery and oh no, clip rod does not. Turns upside down off the back of backdraft and that is it, the big shots. They had two cars left. This is unbelievable. Those cars seemed unstoppable, and yet somehow this round, they've both been eliminated. An unexpected turn of events for a team we thought was gonna make it out of this qualifier, and you've got your three finalists after an unexpected and chaotic round, six rounds. Congrats to the Crash, the Wreckers, and the boys. They're moving on to the main event. And there you have it, folks, your survivors, all four of them for this particular qualifier. And what a crazy matchup it was. A lot of twists and turns in this one. I had no idea who's gonna come out on top. So far, there are nine teams qualified for the main event. We've got plenty more teams to come. Should be a wild ride. Don't forget to like the video or leave a comment.
The Sun Runners are a team that's been around since the beginning of Junkyard Joust. In season one, they made it to the finals, but unfortunately, all of their team was eliminated in the first round. They came back in season two with a different team and did considerably better. But one after the other, they all eventually fell prey to Creature from the Black Lagoon, though they did manage to make it to round four of the finals. Today, the Sunrunners are back and they are gunning for number one. Hi everybody, welcome to Junkyard Jest. I am Aaron Yanda, and as you can see, there's the Sunrunners as well as four new teams that are gonna compete today to be in the Junkyard Jest main event. Let's head into the garage and take a closer look at our team. Glitzkrieg is a flashy looking team with a bunch of different types of vehicles, starting with the Gazella GT, sponsored by Judy Collins, the Gas Monkey, the VW T2 Pickup, the Muscle Speeder, and the Fast Bed Hauler, sponsored by Sloss Automotive Sachet and Buffet. This thing's got a bit of a ramp on the back. Here's a team of fast moving cars with racing stripes, the Blue Line Specials, featuring the Ford Shelby Cobra Concept, sponsored by Deluxe Flame, the 65 Mustang Fastback, the Jaguar Lightweight E-Type, the Viper, sponsored by Sid from Cybertron, and the 65 Mustang GT, sponsored by Regal Radio. Sunrunners got their brand new lineup, including a couple of potential undercutters, sponsored by Priceax Private Parts. First up is the interestingly designed Happy Zap, sponsored by Swedenborg's Smorgasbord. Then we've got Buzz Off, sponsored by Jedi. Next up is What42, sponsored by Chome. Off Track, sponsored by Wayland Enterprises International and Power Pistons. Magic Kingdom is a Disney-themed team with a lot of smaller vehicles and one massive vehicle. That vehicle being the MCI Bus 180 grams, sponsored by Liz's Wizard Arts and Witchcrafts. Mike Wazowski, sponsored by Ellis Wurtenberger. Pongo, sponsored by Mr. Stratholm. Dory. And Stitch, sponsored by Steven and Kath. Next up is the lightest team to ever grace the track, Nerfed. All these cars weigh nine grams, and yes, they are made out of Nerf material. First up is the Squish Coop, sponsored by Wolfel Fiber Art. Next up, X Sponge, sponsored by Stump's Tree Farm. Sasquash, sponsored by Hendrika's Heavy Hauling. Mean Squeeze, sponsored by Winnebago Trauma Clinic. And Lil Blast, sponsored by Emo Dingo. The rules are simple, survive. Every car has to drive down the track, smash into the rest of the cars, and if they end up upside down or sideways at the end of a round, they are eliminated. Any cars that are right side up at the end of the round move on to the next round. In the qualifier, the match ends when two teams have lost all their cars and the remaining three teams move on. Let's get this party started with the Jaguar Lightweight E-Type for the Blue Line Special. It's 43 grams, heaviest car on their team. And there's your running order, randomly determined based on the roll of a die. Fast Bed Hauler is going to take to the track next for Glitz Krieg. This thing has got a ramp, and I do believe they're putting that ramp down. And it didn't make an ounce of difference. The truck just flips over on its face and turns upside down. Well, if you're going to have a ramp truck, that is not what you want to see happen uh, on its first run down the track. That's a rough start for Glitz Creek, and that ramp is not going to do anything. What 4 2 is going to take to the track for the Sunrunners? Probably finish off that fast bed hauler. Solid hit there and a big toss. The fast bed hauler goes flying off into the crates. Makes a half-hearted attempt at recovery, but a little too top-heavy there. And the Jaguar is in danger here, curbside. First up for nerfed, it's Sasquash. Nine grams, as all the cars are on this team. And a nice gentle tap. Not much you can do when you're nine grams. I think the point of this team is to survive by being light and agile. It remains to be seen whether that's a viable strategy or a devastating mistake. First up for the Magic Kingdom, it's gonna be Stitch. He looks friendly enough, but don't forget he's a murderous alien. And a fairly gentle tap on the back of Sasquatch. And we got a nice line of cars going here. Nobody particularly aggressive yet. In fact, the only vehicle that uh, got eliminated sort of took itself out. And we're back around to the blue line specials. Gonna send down Viper. Viper, a nice hit there, and that did some damage too. Stitch is on his back. Sasquatch off the track. Sasquatch making actually a nice recovery, and that's kind of one of the things I was talking about with those nerf cars. Their best strategy here is just gonna be to get off the track as quickly as possible, and they've done that with their first car. Not so good for Stitch though, although he's still on the track, so there is still a chance of a recovery right there. Now up for Glitzkrieg, it's Gas Monkey. 
Gas Monkey slams into the back of Viper. Viper goes tumbling off the track. Stitch looks like he's gonna make a recovery, but then he just flops back over on his head. And Gas Monkey, unfortunately, setting an unhealthy precedent for the Glitzkrieg team of taking themselves out as soon as they go down the track. That's just not a positive thing for their team. Next up for the Sunrunners, it's off track. Off track, a nice hit, but not anywhere to go, and does a lot of bouncing off of his own teammate. What for two, able to survive that hit, and off track now is curbside, which could be a little dangerous. Right now we got four cars down, and four cars still going in this round. Well, the Sunrunners probably don't have to worry about this hit. It's Lil Blast from Nerfed. Indeed, that was a Lil Blast. Didn't do anything, and that car, oh boy, it's back off the track now. I have a feeling it's gonna get knocked around pretty good on this next hit. Next up for Magic Kingdom, it's Pongo. Got a nice low front bumper on that thing. Pongo sends Lil Blast all the way down the field. There was sort of a bounce and then another bounce, and he goes flying upside down, not recovering on that one. So the nerfed strategy did not work out there, and now Pongo has knocked off the off-track truck, his name being highly appropriate right now, but uh, he is still right side up. Here goes the Ford Shelby Cobra for the Blue Line Specials. The Ford Shelby squeezes What42 off the track. And look at What42's recovery. What seemed like it was just going to be an upside down flop turned into an amazing recovery. Perfect form right there. That is the exact kind of recovery you want to see with the vehicles on your team. Now up for Glitz Creek, it's the VWT2 pickup. The VWT2 annihilates that Ford Shelby. Ford Shelby was prone, it was an easy takedown, and that VW's got a nice low front and back. Could be a big help for this Glitzkrieg team. It's the first vehicle on the team that hasn't just taken itself out. Sunrunner's gonna send down their undercutter Buzz Off right now. Let's see if Buzz Off can get under some cars. Buzz Off does manage to get under that VW despite that low back bumper, but the VW makes a nice recovery. And now Buzz Off settles back down into the track. Good thing for Buzz Off. That's going to be a little bit safer. Maybe get pushed under Pongo on this next hit. Actually, I take that back. The next hit's going to be Squish Coop. So there's not going to be anything happening on the track. Squish Coop, exactly what I expected. Didn't do much. Actually managed to get a little bit of action on Buzz Off, but not enough to do anything. And the next hit's going to be fun because Squish Coop is going to get squished. Looks like it'll be Dory for the Magic Kingdom who's going to be doing the squishing on this hit. Appropriate that a fish is going to squish. Ooh, Buzz Off gets pushed upside down by that Nerf car getting caught up in the spoiler. So Nerf proving that they do have some offensive capability there. Buzz Off definitely in danger on the track. Now up, it's the 65 Mustang Fastback. And the Mustang sends that Nerf car flying all the way across the field. Dory gets pushed off the track and sideways. And that was a great hit right there. Potentially two eliminations. Quality stuff from the Mustang Fastback. Muscle Speeder now for Glitzkrieg. Let's see if this thing can survive its initial hit. And the Muscle Speeder gets a pretty good hit there and actually ends up saving Buzz Off, potentially, as Buzz Off comes back down on the track. An amazing recovery. And the Sunrunners are going to send down Happy Zap. And Happy Zap zaps Muscle Speeder off the track, skittering across the top of all those cars, comes to a stop upside down. Another loss for Glitzkrieg, most likely, and a good hit by Happy Zap. Here comes Mean Squeeze for Nerfed. And a nice light tap on the back of Happy Zap by Mean Squeeze. Mean Squeeze goes back down the track. That's going to be trouble for him on this next hit. Let's see if he can put some of those light, agile survival skills into action. Here comes Mike Wazowski for the Magic Kingdom. Mike Wazowski gets under Mean Squeeze, and Mean Squeeze makes a great recovery. A lot of flying all over the field, but manages to come to rest on his tires, and that's what you want. That's going to be another vehicle that makes a recovery for Nerf. They're looking not too bad right now, and Mike Wazowski is under Happy Zap right now. So this next hit is going to be interesting for the 65 Mustang GT. A lot of opportunity here. 
And the Mustang gets some good action on the track. Happy Zap goes flying off and makes a recovery. Mike Wazowski sideways, and the Mustang's fellow Mustang is pointed up in the air. Could be trouble. Now the Gazella GT has an opportunity here to finish a couple of those cars that are down on the track. And a great hit there. It looks like one of the Mustangs might be out. The other Mustang makes a pretty good recovery, and Mike Wazowski actually returns to upright on the track, but is still in peril. Next up for the Sunrunners, it's Power Pistons. This car's got some undercutting ability, and it's nice and low to the track. And it makes a pretty good hit on the Gazella GT, pushes it up. Now we've got about three cars that are in danger here being pushed up off the track, but there's not a whole lot of wiggle room either, so they might be safe. We shall see. They'll certainly be safe from the light bounce of X-Sponge on this next run. X-Sponge does a little push of power pistons under the other cars. Doesn't do any damage, but uh, gets things evened out a little bit. And now we've got more cars on the track than before. Oh boy, things are about to get interesting. The MCI bus is gonna hit the track, 180 grams. And it does exactly what you'd expect that bus to do. We've got at least six, maybe seven cars that go hurtling off the track. Several casualties. We've got a Nerf car upside down. Mike Wazowski is upside down. Oh, man. There was a couple good recoveries in there, too. And now it's just that bus in the original Jaguar that went down at the beginning of the round left on the track. What a massive hit. And Magic Kingdom saved the best for last. That was the final car of this round. And this might be a record for casualties in a qualifier. 15 of these cars have been eliminated in round one. The good news for these teams though, no teams were fully eliminated in this round. Let's go to our aftermath. Blue Line Specials and Glitz Creek lost most of their team. Magic Kingdom lost three, Nerf lost three, and Sunrunners looking pretty with only one car lost power pistons. Sunrunners are going to start us off in round two with Happy Zap. They've got to be happy with what happened in that first round. Power Pistons probably only eliminated because that bus came down right after Power Pistons did. So they might have had a better survival rate if they hadn't got massacred by that giant thing. Magic Kingdom wisely choosing to send Pongo down and not the MCI bus. Be a little early for that bus and it might have trouble with the bounce back off the safety rail. Considering how many cars it plowed through before, Pongo and Happy Zap are both lined up on the track now. A lot of skepticism about this nerf team before the match, but right now they are doing better than two of the other teams. So that says something about the possibilities of this nerf team as Sasquatch takes his place on the track. Blue Line Special's only remaining car in this match, the Jaguar Lightweight E-Type. Ironically, the heaviest car on the team and a great hit there, but Sasquatch makes a crazy recovery and lands it perfectly. That was amazing, and now that car's off the track and pretty safe. So the strategy of getting in and out quick is working right now for the Nerf team. Glitzkrieg had an abysmal first round. Here comes the VW, their lone survivor. And the VW smacks into the back of that Jaguar and locks it in on the track. All these cars still locked in. And the last two on the track got to survive or their teams are done. Sunrunners going with their undercutter right now. Going to try to cause these teams to get eliminated. Buzz Off gets under the VW but can't get him off the track. VW's bumper absorbed most of the impact and saved him from getting pushed off the track. But right now he is not in a good position. But as it turns out, no one is in a good position right now. Here comes the MCI bus. And most of the cars go flying off the track. The VW gets hurled upside down and cannot land it. Buzz off lands it. Happy Zap is out. And the Jaguar makes a recovery. Pongo stays on the track somehow. A pretty devastating hit by that bus. It looks like Glitzkrieg is out. And it looks like Sunrunners have lost an additional vehicle. Mean Squeeze for Nerfed now. Mean Squeeze bounces off the back of that bus a long way back down the track. That's gonna make him an easy target on this next run. I think 142 is gonna take Mean Squeeze on a little ride here. 
And a nice hit. Mean Squeeze managed to stay on the track all the way down, but then gets double bounced off the track. And look at that recovery. Mean Squeeze vacates the track completely and just drives all the way over to the left side of the field to complete and utter safety. And the final car of round two is going to be off track for the Sunrunner. He's going to have to take a hit on his own teammate. He's done it before and he does it again. Off track, bounces off and makes a nice recovery. And that is going to end the round. The Sunrunner is still looking pretty good here with one additional loss. Let's take a look at our aftermath. Only two cars eliminated that round. One of them was pretty important though. Glitzkrieg is out of this qualifier. And Sunrunners have been reduced down to three, which is going to give these other teams a little bit more of an opportunity. Sunrunners starting off round three with off track. Now the question on a lot of people's minds posed here at the beginning of this event was, are the Sunrunners champion caliber material again this season? And right now it looks like they're not too shabby. That was kind of a weak hit actually by off track. It takes him off the track, which might be good. Nothing else, the Sunrunners have consistently made it to the final match in Junkyard Joust each season, so we'll see if this team is able to keep up their tradition. Mean Squeeze now for nerf. Ooh, Mean Squeeze clips the side of Off Track and goes upside down. Still on the track. Off Track, though, actually, that worked out nicely. Nice and safe over on the side, taking a play out of the nerfed playbook. And now we're going to find out if Mean Squeeze gets a recovery opportunity here when Pongo takes to the track for Magic Kingdom. Heavy hit by Pongo, and Mean Squeeze goes flying all over the place. A lot of bouncing, a lot of flipping, a little bounce and a recovery. A great job by Mean Squeeze right there, showing that this nerfed team has tenacity. They are not as easy to eliminate as everyone maybe thought they would be. Blue Line Special sending down the Jaguar again. Got to stay in this match. Nice hit there by the Jaguar, makes Pongo go curbside. Jaguar pushed a little bit of the way down the track that could set the Jaguar up for a nasty hit here, especially since the Sunrunners are going in for the kill, sending down Buzz Off to undercut that Jaguar. And Buzz Off slides underneath the Jaguar, and the Jaguar, look at that recovery. A smooth move there, just backs right off the track, stays upright. And that is probably going to take the blue line specialist to the next round, assuming there is one. Here comes Sasquatch for nerfed. Sasquatch hits the spoiler on Buzz Off. That's been a problem for them before, but this time, so far, not an issue for Sasquatch. What could be an issue for Sasquatch? It's the MCI bus coming down the track yet again. Big hit coming. And cars go flying all over the place. This time, the bus manages to get all the competitors off the track, except for Evil Weevil, of course. And look at that buzz off and Sasquatch making a recovery after going up pretty high in the air. Pongo, his own teammate, eliminated upside down. The MCI bus takes out his own teammate, and now that bus is curbside. And that is going to be a top heavy bus. Here comes What for Two. Can he take out the bus? A nice hit, but the bus manages barely to cling to the edge of the track and stay on. That was a close one. Sunrunners here sensing an opportunity to take out this big guy. But that was the last car of the round, and so Magic Kingdom are going to stay in it despite sustaining the only loss of the round in Pongo. So seven cars left as we head into round four. And the MCI bus showing it has a weakness. Can that weakness be exploited? Starting us off, it's going to be what 4-2 for the Sunrunners. One thing to think about here as we take a look at the running order, it looks like Magic Kingdom is going to be going down last in this round in the run order. That means any of these cars that go down ahead of it are going to have to survive a massive wallop. We might be looking at some serious carnage here. Sasquatch up next for nerfed. I get the distinct feeling we probably won't be seeing another round in this match, but anything is possible. We saw a lot of recoveries the last time that bus did its business on the track, so we'll see if that happens again. Sasquatch down the track a little ways. Going to be an easy hit here for the Jaguar. 
Jaguar tries to take out Sasquatch, and again, a lot of flipping and a lot of rotating in the air, and Sasquatch lands it again. That is showing some serious durability. Uh, durability makes sense. They are a team made out of Nerf material, and that was a great recovery, avoiding the next vehicle that's coming down, the MCI bus. I feel kind of bad for the two cars that remain on the track right now. And the bus clobbers the Jaguar and what for two. The Jaguar goes flying all over the place and makes a recovery. And what for two is upside down under the bus. Now that bus is in a seriously unfortunate position. Just the lightest tap could probably send it over the edge to its doom. And for the moment, the Jaguar is still alive. Here comes Buzz Off to try to finish off that bus. And Buzz Off hits the bus. It teeters and topples over and is done. The Magic Kingdom are not going to get that thing back up on its feet. And they are certainly out of this match. Unless one of these other teams also gets eliminated in this round. And then we'd have to go to the old point system to determine who is the survivor. So this match isn't over yet. We still got a couple cars coming down this round. Let's see what happens. Mean Squeeze is up now for nerd. Mean Squeeze, a nice hit on Buzz Off for a 9-gram car. Actually locks Buzz Off into the track and helps him out a little bit. And now Mean Squeeze is locked into the track, I guess. Although a nerfed car never really locked too well into the track. And here comes the final car of this round to mix things up. It's off track. Off track sends Mean Squeeze upside down and pushes the Jaguar over. Down there at the end of the track, just a little flip and the Jaguar is over. Buzz Off is out. Off track takes out his own teammate, but also two other vehicles. And now Blue Line Specials and Magic Kingdom are theoretically out of this match. But three of these teams have to move on to the main event. Let's take a quick look at our aftermath. Nerfed and the Sunrunners both lost one, but Magic Kingdom and Blue Line Specials both lost their only remaining vehicle. So the way that we break the tie is we look at the number of cars a team had left every round and they get points based on that. The number of points they got for each car they had left is actually the round number itself. Ultimately, what it comes down to is Magic Kingdom had more cars alive longer in the match, and they are going to move on with nine survival points over the Blue Line Special 6. Congrats to our three winning teams. There were a lot of twists and turns in that match. We've got five more qualifiers left before the main Junkyard Joust event. Here are your qualifying teams so far. A lot of interesting teams have made it into the Junkyard Joust this season so far, and a lot more interesting ones to come. We're halfway through the qualifiers for Junkyard Joust Season 3. Hi, everybody. It's Aaron Yonda. We've got five new teams ready to battle it out. Let's head into the garage and see who we've got. Up first is a team of cars with huge rear engines, the Combustion King, sponsored by Elder Ground, with Hellraiser, the Datsun 128X, Tire Fryer, Sixie Beast, and Tanzara. Next up is a team of vintage roadsters called Amaranthin. First up is the Auburn 852, sponsored by Sloth's Automotive Sachet and Buffet. Cruella DeVille, sponsored by Sean and Patrick Hogan. The 31 Doozy, sponsored by Wayland Enterprises International. Mercedes 540K, sponsored by Sid from Cybertron. This thing has seen a lot of action. Custom Cadillac Fleetwood, sponsored by Raygal Radio. Ramp Stamp, now this team is designed solely to take out ramped vehicles. You might remember Tractor Digger from Season 2, sponsored by Ellis Wurtenberger. Ground Grinder, sponsored by Hey Hey's Hatchback Hanger. Wheel Loader, sponsored by Chome. Highway Maintenance Truck, sponsored by Hendrika's Heavy Hauling. And Load Lifter, sponsored by Brendan Walsh. The Devastation Wagons are back. They appeared in Season 1 of Junkyard Joust, and they've got a brand new lineup featuring the Brady Bunch Car, the Mercury Sable Wagon, sponsored by Liz's Wizard Arts and Witchcrafts. The Volvo 850 Estate, sponsored by Swedenborg Smorgasbord. Volvo P220 Amazon Estate, sponsored by Wolf of Fiber Art. The 67 VW 1600 Squareback, sponsored by Tim the Bear Neal. And the 76 Buick Estate Wagon, sponsored by Hey Steve Productions. And next up, a team of motorcycles. Well, they certainly must be thrill seekers to enter the junkyard joust. 
featuring the Polaris Slingshot, sponsored by TJG. The Woozy, sponsored by Stumps Tree Farm. Scorch and Scooter, sponsored by Judy Collins. Fright Bike, sponsored by Winnebago Trauma Clinic. And Pit Cruiser, sponsored by Emo Dingo. The rules are simple. Survive. Every car has to drive down the track, smash into the rest of the cars, and if they end up upside down or sideways at the end of a round, they are eliminated. Any cars that are right side up at the end of the round move on to the next round. In the qualifier, the match ends when two teams have lost all their cars, and the remaining three teams move on. Let's joust! Up first for the Vicious Cycles, it's Woozy. A motorcycle team is kind of radical, but check out the back of Woozy. That is a bit of a ramp right there, and that could be a problem for these cars if they can't get Woozy off the track. It's pretty heavy for a motorcycle. Nice to see the Devastation Wagons back in action, this time with the Volvo P220 Amazon Estate. And that Volvo goes right out of action and takes out the driver of that motorcycle at the same time. They go tumbling and turning, and it does not end well for that Volvo. Looks like the driver is right next to it, but the cycle stayed on the track, and that ramp was rather effective, I'd say, an elimination already on the field. And now it's Ramp Stamp's chance to try out what their team was created for, which is to take out ramp vehicles. And a little push there from the front of the highway maintenance truck almost gets that motorcycle off the track, but can't quite do it. Might be enough though to neutralize its effectiveness. Combustion Kings are gonna send down Tanzara first. Tanzara showing off what's under the hood, so to speak. And look at this, highway maintenance gets tossed off the back of the ramp. The ramp that he was supposed to take out doesn't quite manage to do it. Now Tanzara is perched on the edge. So even though that motorcycle is sideways, it's still causing a lot of trouble. And that's not something you see with normal ramp cars. Interesting how this is going so far. Now Amaranthan's gonna take a shot with the Auburn 852. Ooh, this thing's got a nice low bumper, could be good. And a nice wallop to the back of Tanzara, pushes Tanzara off the back of Woozy and almost goes over, but manages to settle before flipping. And now that Auburn 852 is curbside, but it's definitely starting to look like that ramp has been nearly completely neutralized. We'll see. Up next for the Vicious Cycles, it's the Polaris Slingshot. This is, I guess, a motorcycle. Polaris Slingshot takes out the Auburn 852 smacks it twice and knocks it straight upside down. A great hit there from that slingshot. Woozy still causing trouble for all of these vehicles. At 75 grams, the biggest of the new Devastation Wagons, it's the 76 Buick Estate Wagon. And the Buick just cruises on through both of those motorcycles, one of them getting flipped upside down, the Woozy getting pushed off completely and also upside down. A rough hit for the Vicious Cycles, that Buick just took out two of their team. They have nobody left right side up on the field right now. It's sweet revenge for the Devastation Wagons and the loss of that Volvo. Here comes Ground Grinder for Ramp Stamp. Ground Grinder knocks Tanzara off the track and finishes him off sideways. Just a solid punch off the track and that's gonna end that car for this round most likely. Ground Grinder is now curbside, which is definitely not a good position to be in. Let's see what happens on this next run. This is one of the reasons the Combustion Kings are called that. Tire Fryer, 53 grams, most of it engine. Man, listen to that thing roar down the track and just knock out Ground Grinder. But look at this, Ground Grinder makes a really sketchy recovery. It was just barely managing to flip back upright. Close one there for the ramp stamps. And now Tire Fryer is sitting curbside. Amaranthan choosing to send down Cruella DeVille. Ooh, Cruella DeVille tries to take advantage of Tire Fryer being curbside, but Tire Fryer is not having it. Manages to make a pretty smooth recovery, and Cruella DeVille now has gone off the edge and is in peril right there. That is not a stable position. Vicious Cycles trying to get back into this match there, sending down Pit Cruiser. 
pit cruiser almost goes off the back of the wagon but manages to stay on the track now it's tough to say for sure but there could be a bit of a ramp created on the back of pit cruiser gonna be hard to hold it steady though with that big front tire going probably up on the back of the wagon on the next hit and now the wagons are gonna send down the 67 vw 1600 square back and the square back gets a good slam on the back of pit cruiser pushes him up just like i thought might happen on the back of that buick and now he's in big trouble this motorcycle team an interesting and courageous kind of idea but i don't know motorcycles they just not really known for staying upright too well next up for ramp stamp it's load lifter and a nice hit there from load lifter puts the square back curbside and manages to knock off that cycle but pit cruiser actually manages to roll over and survive he's going to be the first one of the team to manage to do that at least so far Vicious Cycle's got a chance of holding on for another round. Time for the Combustion Kings to... Wait a minute. What is that noise? It looks like some sort of shuttlecraft is landing over underneath the track. And it looks like we have a couple of special guests here. Winnebago's going over to greet them. If I'm not mistaken, that is Jordy LaForge and Deanna Troy. And uh, Hellraiser's up next. Are they arranging it? Oh, looks like they're arranging for Jordy to go down the track. And Hellraiser, looks like Deanna's staying behind. Uh, I wonder how she feels about Jordy doing this. And Jordy LaForge beams into the Hellraiser for the Combustion Kings. I hope he knows how to drive this thing. And Jordy LaForge in the Hellraiser knock load lifter completely off the track. Nice hit there. Load lifter just flips right over and cannot quite make a recovery. Jordy actually almost came out of his seat. But unlike Tim the Toolman, he manages to stay in the car. Lucky for him. And he is going to now have to get ready for a big hit from behind. Here comes a car that has seen some some action over the years the mercedes 540k for amaranthin the mercedes plows into the back of hellraiser and jordy manages to stay in again but hellraiser is perched precariously this could go south real quick Speaking of Tim the Toolman, he is on Fright Bike for the Vicious Cycles. Now, it wouldn't surprise me if Tim actually put this team up to entering Gen Care Joust in the first place. Fright Bike slams into the back of that Mercedes, and of course, Tim flops off onto his face. Jordy also comes free of Hellraiser, but lands pretty solidly. Does a little flip and lands on his butt. Tim flips over, as usual, on his face. Not a comfortable position to be in. I think Jordy LaForge handled this with a lot more grace. Looks like he's having a lot of fun. I bet Troy is a little worried about him right now, though. That's not exactly a safe place to be. Here comes the Volvo 850 Estate for Devastation Wagons. The Volvo slams Fright Bike off the track. Fright Bike almost rights himself, but then tips off of his own teammate and is nearly sideways. And now that Volvo is pretty well locked in on the track, but unfortunately the square back is still upside down in front of him. Now the ramp stamps are going to send down wheel loader. This thing is pretty heavy, 64 grams. It's got a big shovel in front. And it flips that Volvo upside down instantly. Amazing hit right there. Just takes down that Volvo, scoops it up in the air, and flips it. That was a great hit. And now it looks like he's getting ready to scoop that Mercedes. Here comes another big engine for Combustion Kings. It's Sixy Beast. The beast takes down the loader. That thing goes flying up and over. There's still a chance it could recover from that. But that was a nice hit. And Sixy Beast is now curbside. Let's see if the 31 Doozy can take advantage of that for Amaranthin. The Doozy plows into the back of Sixy Beast, but Sixy Beast does a great spin move and recovers. Lands on all six of those tires, nice and safe. And that loader starts to tip over a little bit more. Don't know if you noticed, but Sixy Beast just barely skidded over Jordy and avoided decapitating him right there. And we're into the final five vehicles of the round. Scorching Scooter for the Cycles. Scorching Scooter doesn't do anything. Just sort of bounces off the back of the doozy and manages to stay upright which i guess is a good thing this motorcycle team struggles with that <laughs> devastation wagon sending down the brady bunch mercury sable wagon and the sable knocks that motorcycle right off the track goodbye done no chance of a recovery there just a nice efficient hit and that car locks it onto the track good shot for the devastation wagons
You might remember Tractor Digger from Industrial Accidents in Season 2. This thing was able to stop the ramp on its own team by just going right under it, slowing down just like this, and plopping under the ramp. And in this case, there's no ramp to take out, but he still slows down and stops right in the middle of the track. Preparing to strike on this next run, Brady Bunch better watch their back. Next up for Combustion Kings, it's the Datsun 128X. The Datsun slams into the tractor digger and knocks it off the track. A nice high hit. Speedy car, that Datsun. And now Brady Bunch is threatened by the same vehicle. A little bit of an undercutting action going on there. Did not expect that from that Datsun, but it worked out great. Final car of the round is going to be the custom Cadillac Fleetwood for Amaranthin. Good hit there, and the Brady Bunch car is eliminated. Barely doesn't make that recovery. And that is going to end round one of this qualifier. Taking a look at the wreckage on the field, and there is a lot of it. 14 vehicles in total eliminated this round. There's Jordy. He's looking good. Just totally sitting there enjoying himself. Let's take a look at the aftermath. 14 eliminations, almost as many eliminations as the previous qualifier, and Amaranthin and the Combustion Kings are looking great right now. Every other team lost four and has one left. That does not bode well for their chances as we head into round two. Amaranthin's gonna start us off with the custom Fleetwood. They still have four left. I think there's a pretty good chance they're gonna make it out of this qualifier. A couple of veteran cars on this team. I think they honestly have a great chance to make it all the way to the final this season. Keep your eye on this team. Combustion Kings also rocked it this round. Four left, 60 Beast going down first. Could get some undercutter action here. And 60 Beast does just that. Takes it to the Fleetwood. The Fleetwood goes flying and lands it. Oh man, that was a nice pivot and a good landing. Wow, wow, that was incredible. And still not safe, but that was a really impressive recovery. Just kind of graceful. Now on to the Vicious Cycles. They've just got Pit Cruiser left. I think this team could go down in history as a memorable team, but I don't think they're getting out of this qualifier alive. Pit Cruiser jumps up on the back of 60 Beast. I think that might actually create sort of a ramp situation, but I'm not sure that Pit Cruiser can hold that position. Devastation Wagons a little devastated themselves in that first round, but now they got the big one. Bam! That is the end of the Vicious Cycles. A leap and a dive, and Pit Cruiser goes upside down unlikely to recover from that and the buick now is a little precarious might be able to escape but yep there you go pit cruiser is done and the vicious cycles are out that buick's got to stay alive for the devastation wagons to stay in this match if ground grinder can take out that buick ramp stamp got a chance to make it out of this qualifier and a great hit, but the Buick makes it, somehow recovers, goes upside down, and then tumbles over right side up, just rolls down the Cadillac and makes a recovery and keeps the Devastation Wagons in this match just by the skin of their teeth. And now it's a ground grinder who has to survive a hit from the Mercedes 540K, and this thing is powerful. Ground Grinder gets smacked upside the back end and pushed over upside down along with 60 Beast who also got pretty beat up on that one is also now upside down. The Mercedes just potentially ended this match and took out two vehicles, one of which if it doesn't make a recovery and despite Troy's warnings, Jordy has decided to go down with Hellraiser again. He really must be enjoying this. Hellraiser and Jordy push into the back of the Mercedes and I think that was actually sort of a strategic move because too much motion and they would have pushed Ground Grinder back upright again. This way they keep him sideways and stop him from making a recovery. I mean, he's the chief engineer of a giant starship. You'd think that he would be able to come up with a pretty good strategy in Junkyard Joust. Amaranthin coming down now with Cruella de Vil. Ooh, Jordy, watch out. Cruella de Vil slams into the back of Hellraiser. Cruella not known for her kindnesses, and Jordy goes tumbling out of the car. Hopefully they got some medical supplies in that shuttlecraft that they came in. And Hellraiser could be in trouble here curbside at the moment with Cruella de Vil poised for attack. Combustion King sending down the Datsun 128X next. 
And the Dotson cannot do anything with Cruella, but Cruella finishes off Hellraiser. Hellraiser floats off the track, lands upside down. I guess it's probably lucky that Jordy wasn't in it this time. And the match continues. It's basically just between Amaranthan and Combustion Kings at this point. 31 dudes he's gonna take to the track next. The doozy takes advantage of the sloped back of Cruella DeVille and knocks the Dotson off upside down. Parallelously close to Jordy, kind of nudges him in the back, but uh, luckily he avoided any further calamity. That's going to be another elimination for the Combustion Kings. They've just lost two cars now. I think they only have uh, one left. No, they have none left. Unbelievable. Combustion Kings falling apart at the seams here. Only Tire Fryer left in this match. Tire Fryer's got to stay in this. And Tire Fryer does barely manage to stay in the match. Goes curbside, but nobody else is coming down. So Combustion Kings are safe. And we've got our three teams that are gonna be advancing. Skycam taking a look at the wreckage and Amaranthan, like I said, keep an eye on them. They didn't lose a single car this time. And look at the devastation created. And there's Troy taking a look at Jordy LaForge. I think he's gonna be okay. They've got some pretty high tech medical supplies in that thing. I get the feeling that Jordy's gonna come back for more. Maybe he'll even be able to convince Troy to take a run down the hill sometime. Taking a look at the aftermath, there it is, Amaranthan with four left, Combustion Kings just hung on with one, losing an unbelievable three vehicles in that round, and Devastation Wagons barely hung on two. Now for that Buick, it would be a different story. Amaranthan, Combustion Kings, and Devastation Wagons have all qualified for the main event. There's a bit of a one-sided match, only went two rounds, but these teams are going to take what they learn from this qualifier and use it in the main event. Here's all the teams that have qualified so far. We are halfway through the qualifiers. There's four left. Three returning teams and two brand new ones battle for the right to be in the Junkyard Joust. Hi everybody, it's Aaron Yonda. Welcome to the Junkyard Joust. You've seen three of these teams before. One of them has been to the finals, Crimson Crashers, back in season one. These are some interesting teams. This is going to be a very interesting match. Let's go to the garage. Dead and gone, and the Hot Rod Hearse are back. The Hot Rod Hearse wrecked in season one, but he's back with a brand new team sponsored by Boldamooch. And the return of the Hot Rod Hearse is brought to you by Regal Radio. We've also got the Elvira Macabre Mobile sponsored by Sloss Automotive Buffet and Sachet. The 57 Bel Air, 111 grams, sponsored by Swedenborg Smorgasbord. Next up is the 55 Chevy Nomad sponsored by Mr. Stratholm. And Jack Skellington sponsored by Wolf of Fiber Art. The Crimson Crashers didn't make it to the finals in Season 2, so they are back with a completely new team. Featuring Animal, sponsored by Judy Collins. The 67 Ford GT40 Mark IV, sponsored by Deluxe Flame. The Porsche 930, sponsored by Wayland Enterprises International. Praetorian Guard, sponsored by Sid from Cybertron. And Fleet Flyer with Secret Weapon, Porsche 962 in the back, sponsored by Regal Radio. It's a new team, but the Ecto-1 is back with its very own team, the Stream Crossers. Featuring the Ecto-1, sponsored by Ellis Wurtenberger. Terror Dog, sponsored by Jedi. Battle Spec, sponsored by Chome. Phantasm, sponsored by Hendrika's Heavy Hauling. And Slimer, sponsored by Liz's Wizard Arts and Witchcrafts. Hot Pursuit never made it out of their qualifier. They are back now to try it again with a brand new lineup. Sponsored by Hal's International Ham Enforcement. Featuring the Ford Crown Victoria, sponsored by Hey Hey's Hatchback Hanger. A 2016 BMW M2, sponsored by No Shenanigans. Nissan Fairlady Z, sponsored by Mr. Bobo. The 85 Chevrolet Camaro, sponsored by Stump's Tree Farm. And the VW Golf Mark 7, sponsored by Tim the Bear Neal. Big Blue is a team of appropriately big blue trucks. Starting us off, it's the Erickenstein Rod, sponsored by Swedenborg Smorgasbord. Mig Rig, sponsored by Ellie's Hop Shop. Bumper Thumper, 83 Chevy Silverado, sponsored by Prysax Private Parts. And Turbine Time, sponsored by Emo Dingo. The rules are simple, survive. Every car has to drive down the track, smash into the rest of the cars, and if they end up upside down or sideways at the end of a round, they are eliminated. Any cars that are right side up at the end of the round move on to the next round. In the qualifier, the match ends when two teams have lost all their cars and the remaining three teams move on. 
And we're off to the races, or the crashes, I guess we should say, since the Crimson Crashers are starting us off with the Porsche 930. Running order is up, up in the left-hand corner there. And now I've been told that this car actually has been around for a long time. And the front tires didn't work very well anymore, but it's still a competitor. If the car can get down the track, well, it can be in the junkyard just. We've got a lot of big vehicles in this match, some undercutters and some heavyweights. This is going to be a really interesting qualifier. 55 Chevy Nomad's up for dead and gone. The Chevy Nomad gives a little boost to the Porsche. Can't quite get him off the track. Gets him up curbside and gets a little hood action there. And gets ready to take a hit from Big Blue, who have decided to send down Bumper Thumper first. And Jordy LaForge is going to ride down in the back. He sure does like this. And Jordy goes tumbling out of the back of the truck. Not a big surprise there. He wasn't buckled in or anything. And he rolls and rolls. I think he's probably out of danger, hopefully. Interesting to note that when Bumper Thumper smashed into the Nomad, the uh, back of the truck suddenly had a dent in it. I, I don't know what happened there, but... Uh, that's, that's gonna be there for a while, I suspect. And the stream crossers are gonna send down Slimer first. Slimer, a big hit on the back of Bumper Thumper, and unfortunately does not go well for Slimer. He's not able to go through Bumper Thumper. He goes, bounces off, and tips over immediately. Big Blue said in their pre-match interview that they uh, were not afraid of any ghost, and I guess maybe that's why. Hot Pursuit is up now with an unusual police vehicle here, Nissan Fairlady Z. And the Nissan collides with the back of Bumper Thumper and locks into place. Nobody's getting moved on that one, although the hood of the Nomad is now up. The Diabolical Crimson Crashers have Fleet Flyer containing the secret weapon of the Porsche 962. Bam, and that was a big hit because that was 181 grams of weight and a lot of action there. The Nomad gets tossed upside down and Bumper Thumper gets tossed upside down in kind of a very slow, steady destruction. And it may not have been enough of an impact to get that secret weapon to deploy out the back. Now, there's new rules for secret weapons, but I'll get into that later. And right after that already huge truck, here comes the 57 Bel Air, 111 grams for dead and gone. Massive hit, almost gets the secret weapon out of the back of that truck. And look at that, that truck is tilting. The flyer is in trouble right here. That was such a heavy hit, he's up curbside. A Little bit more jostling and that thing might go over. Up next for Big Blue, it's the 83 Chevy Silverado. This is a pretty heavy truck at 69 grams. Another heavy hit and not a lot of stuff happening on the track right now. Big vehicles, heavy vehicles, not a lot of movement except for that secret weapon getting poked back into the back of the truck. Otherwise, pretty much the same as before. Here comes Battle Spec for the Stream Crossers. I believe this is used to entrap ghosts, especially the fast moving ones. And a nice hit there from Battle Spec gets the Silverado off the track almost. Can't quite tip him over though, a little too heavy. And the Silverado is eh, probably still in danger in that situation. Hot Pursuit's gonna send down their heaviest vehicle, the Ford Crown Victoria, try to stir up some trouble. And the Ford is not able to take out the Chevy. He pushes Battle Spec up on the back of the big Bel Air. That is a risky position for both of them right now. Looks like that Chevy's probably going to be safe. Next up for the Crashers, it's another Ford. This time the Ford GT40. This thing's got some undercutting ability. And not able to make use of it. Gets the Ford Crown Victoria off the track. But nice recovery there by the Victoria. And now that Ford is up on the back of Battle Spec. And then even more risky position than the Ford Crown Victoria. Up now it's dead and gone, the Elvira Macabre Mobile and Baby Cookie is back. Decided to hop into this convertible and take a run. Cookie slams the GT40 Airborne, gets some good height and unfortunately lands upside down over by the Fleet Flyer. Battlespec makes a recovery and somehow Cookie stayed in the convertible this time. Let's see if she's able to do that when the next vehicle comes down. Here comes Big Blue with the Erickenstein Rod. The rod does indeed knock Cookie up in the air. Tumble, 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 and Cookie lands on her head. That can't be good. But the Macabre Mobile managed to stay on the track, so that's a good thing for Dead and Gone. Now it's gonna be Terror Dog for the Stream Crossers. 
Terror Dog attempts to terrorize the Erickenstein rod and does a pretty good job of it. Pushes it up and partially off the track. That could be trouble for the Erickenstein rod. Next up for Hot Pursuit, it's going to be the 85 Chevrolet Camaro. The Camaro rear ends Terror Dogs and sends the Erickenstein rod flying. Nice recovery there by the rod, manages to pull it out and go upright. And now the Camaro eh, might be in danger. Next up, it's probably the most undercutting vehicle in this match, Animal for the Crimson Crash. Animal goes nuts on the back of Terror Dog and sends the Camaro off the track. And Animal also manages to get Elvira off. Hot Rod Hearst is back and ready to take the plunge, 95 grand. Big hit there and a lot of undercutting, and that was fairly devastating, I would say. We got two cars upside down. Terror Dog and Elvira both got probably eliminated in that one. And there's Baby Cookie lying next to the Hot Rod Hearse, whose hood is stuck open on the back of Animal. And will you look at this? Deanna Troy has decided she's going to make a run down the track. Maybe thinking that lying down is going to be a little bit safer than trying to sit in the vehicle. I think that's a good move. The MIG rig bounces off the back of Hot Rod Hearse and Deanna goes flying down the track and unfortunately gets run down by the vehicle that she came down in. Oh no, oh that's not good. And she's still on the track. This just isn't gonna end well, folks. I uh, applaud Deanna for taking the run down the track, but whew, boy. All right, well, here comes Ecto-1 for the stream crossers. Look out, Deanna. And the Ecto-1 mauls Deanna Troy. She is pushed underneath the vehicle, swallowed up basically, can't even see her at all. I think she's under the Ecto-1 because it looks a little bit higher off the ground. Poof, boy, I hope they got some good equipment in that shuttlecraft. She is going to need it after this. Deanna Troy flattened like a pancake by the Ecto-1. Next up, it's going to be VW Golf Mark 7 for Hot Pursuit. The Golf can't get anywhere with this line of heavy vehicles. Almost tips over and goes off the track, but manages to stay on, but it's still a perilous spot to be in. These vehicles do not want to move right now. Here comes a pretty heavy vehicle, the Praetorian Guard, 59 grams for the Crashers. Praetorian can't get anything to happen either. A tiny bit of movement, but almost nothing. Cars are locked on the track solid. And somewhere underneath them, Deanna Troy. Here comes a potential solution. It's Jack Skellington for Dead and Gone. Un undercutter right here. And a decent amount of undercutting to start with. Jack gets underneath Praetorian Guard, pops it off the track almost, but not quite complete. Definitely going to start clearing some room on the track now that we've got turbine time for Big Blue coming down. Turbine track nails the back of Jack Skellington like a hammer and a nail underneath that golf and does get a little bit of action. Praetorian Guard is finished off and it looks like the track clearing will continue with Phantasm for the Stream Crossers. Phantasm does it right. Look at that. Two cars removed from the track and both of them probably eliminated the Ecto. Surprisingly, flipped over. This thing was really hard to eliminate in the previous matches it was in and now suddenly it's just done. This is very bad news for the Stream Crossers. That was their juggernaut car. And up now it's the 2016 BMW M2. The M2 continues the trend here. The undercutting keeps going. Right now, MIG rig is threatened, but luckily for MIG rig, that was the last car of this round. So it's not gonna be any more undercutting. Taking a look at the wreckage on the field, we are going to lose nine vehicles this time around. Not too shabby. Previous qualifiers have been far more devastating. I think it has something to do with the size and weight of these vehicles. Big question here, where did Deanna Troy end up? And it looks like Skycam Founder, she is all the way underneath the Hot Rod Hearse. Oh my, Jack Skellington pushing her all the way up there along the track. Taking a look at the aftermath, Stream Crossers are down three. Crimson and Dead and Gone are down two. And Big Blue and Hot Pursuit looking pretty good right now with only one loss apiece.
Well, the med bay is full, as you can see, but luckily, Tim the Toolman, who didn't go down the track for some reason in this round, he's gonna help everybody out. I hope he knows how to use that uh, futuristic technology. Round two is now in effect. We're gonna start off with the BMW for Hot Pursuit. Running order is up for this round, and you know, I'm actually seeing that Tim the Toolman has shifted positions in that shuttlecraft. Let's take a look at what's going on. Well, that's odd. It seems like after helping everybody out with injuries, he's now moved to the pilot seat of this shuttlecraft. Oh boy, I hope he's not trying to start that thing up. This could be bad, folks. Last thing you want is Tim the Toolman messing around with space technology. Turbine time now for Big Blue. Turbine time locks it in behind the BMW. Nice solid hit. That line might not stay solid for long though. Jack Skellington's gonna hit the road for dead and gone. And a great undercut there, but look at Turbine Time managed to adeptly respond and land up in the front sideways. That's not a great spot to be, but a nice recovery from a nasty hit from Jack Skellington. And the Crimson Crashers are gonna send down the big one, Fleet Flyer, with that secret weapon. That secret weapon yet to deploy in this match. And again, it fails. It seems like that truck's not getting enough of a pushback from the vehicles in front of it, so the secret weapon's not getting deployed. But it does a lot of damage anyway, although all the cars involved managed to recover from that hit. Here comes Phantasm for the Stream Crossers. Phantasm, a nice pop to the back of the flyer, but can't get anything to happen. But maybe that's a good thing. You don't want that secret weapon to deploy. That would be a nasty ramp situation. Here comes the Victoria for Hot Pursuit. Ooh, a nice hit from the Victoria, and Phantasm goes flying, but look at that great recovery by Phantasm. A little bouncing, but manages to land it, and that is gonna be important to keep this team in the match. The MIG rig is back, and oh, wow. I kinda can't believe it, but uh, apparently Troy has decided to go down in the back again, despite what happened last time. Oh, man. Not a much better result than the last round. Troy is flung into the junkyard on the top of a couple of the cars. Honestly, a pretty good landing by Troy, even though it couldn't have felt very good. Hopefully Tim will get over there and give her some help. Amazingly brave thing that she did going down that track again. I think she's enjoying herself, despite the fact that she was run over by five or six vehicles last round. And it looks like Troy made a great decision getting off the track. 57 Bel Air's coming down now. Massive hit and the MIG rig is tossed upside down. Looks like Troy won't have to go down again. Pushes the Victoria up into the back of the flyer, but nothing going on there. That was a great hit. And the Crimson Crashers are gonna send down Animal looking to try to eliminate that Bel Air. Definitely a car that's gonna be hard to get rid of. And nope, that did not work at all. Animal not able to get underneath the low back of that Bel Air. And now Animal is curbside. That could be trouble. Let's see if Battle Spec can take Animal by surprise. Hmm, a solid hit, but Animal manages to take it and is just pushed slightly off the track. Not eliminated yet, but not out of danger. The Nissan Fair Lady Z is coming down next. The Nissan pushes Animal the rest of the way off the track and locks in behind Battle Spec. Good line of cars going, just like last time. Not a lot of elimination so far in this round. Looks like just MIG rig so far. Up next is gonna be the Chevy Silverado for the blue. And with a bang, the Silverado takes the Fair Lady from behind. Can't quite get the Fair Lady off the track, but it is curbside and in danger. Especially since the next car going down is the Hot Rod Hearse. The Hearse does some heavy damage on the track. Battle Spec is upside down, still on the track, and the Nissan Fair Lady upside down and probably eliminated. That was a devastating hit. Dead and gone, gotta be happy with what they got going on here with these big vehicles. They are doing some big damage. Crimson Crash is gonna send down the Porsche 930, hoping to get a little undercutter action even with this thing, I think. The Porsche sneaks underneath the Hot Rod Hearse. It was highly successful. That thing is definitely in trouble right now. The Porsche wedged underneath there in a great position. Let's see if the Chevy Camaro can knock that thing off. And a nice hit by the Camaro, but somehow the Hot Rod Hearse manages to keep its bearings and not get flipped over. Still not in a great position, but that was the important thing. If that Camaro was a little bit heavier, I think we would have seen a different result. 
Hey, Rickenstein Rod is going to try to finish the job here. And there, Rickenstein Rod, not even interested in going after the Hot Rod Hearse here, just knocks the Camaro flying off the track. And a great two-wheeled landing by that Camaro ran for a little while on two wheels. That was a that was a stunt. And it was a great way to end round two with only three eliminations. Taking a look at Skycam, you can see which ones they are. Looking at the results, Big Blue lost one, Crimson and Dead and Gone did not lose another vehicle, Hot Pursuit lost one, and Stream Crossers lost another one. They are in trouble. Starting things out in round three, it's going to be the Fleet Flyer for Crimson Crashers. Let's see if that secret weapon deploys. And it does! Finally, the secret weapon comes out the back of the Fleet Flyer. That Porsche is now in position. This is going to be an interesting round. Now, the rule is, because that Porsche is now separated from the vehicle, it's considered a part of that vehicle, and that will be removed at the end of this round. So any vehicles that come into Junkyard Joust with a secret weapon will only get to use it for one round. Camaro had a good recovery last round, but this is a whole new thing. There is a ramp down at the bottom of the track. And the Camaro cannot handle it this time. Another spectacular stunt, the thing flipping and twirling through the air, but the Camaro cannot quite land it. And the ramp in front of that Porsche is doing its job. What an amazing jump. Dead and Gone are not afraid. They're sending down the Bel Air. What is gonna happen here? Ooh, the Bel Air has a low bumper and manages to knock the Porsche off the track. Unbelievable. I thought for sure that thing was gonna take a dive and go flying off that Porsche and get eliminated, but look at this. Just knocks it off the track decisively. Ooh, boy, Dead and Gone just threw down right there with that. They are not afraid of ramps, it looks like to me. Here comes their Rickenstein rod. And the rod pushes the Bel Air up on the back of the ramp of the Fleet Flyer, but that vehicle's not going anywhere. Here comes the Stream Crosser's last gasp. It's Phantasm. A solid hit from Phantasm, and Phantasm does the most important thing, which is stays on the track and safe, at least for the moment. But the Crimson Crashers want to put the nail in the coffin here. Animal going to try to take out Phantasm and end the Stream Crossers. Can't do it. Stream Crossers got a pretty good car with Phantasm. Phantasm just lofts off the track and drives to safety. All these vehicles got to be pretty happy that the Bel Air took out the threat of that ramp. Here comes the Victoria. The Victoria, nice hit just annihilates the Air Rickenstein rod and pushes Animal off the track. Great job by the Victoria and Big Blue might have just sustained another loss right there. And here comes even more trouble from Dead and Gone, Jack Skellington. Jack manages to get the Victoria off the track but can't knock it upside down. A great hit there and also Jack not able to go underneath his own teammate. I think that might be by design. The heavy Chevy Silverado up next. The Silverado pile drives Jack Skellington into the Bel Air, and the Bel Air now wedged just above the flatbed of the Fleet Flyer. And the Porsche is up next for the Crimson Crashers. The Porsche can't get any action under that Chevy and just locks it into the track nice and easy. Now it's time for the BMW M2. The BMW also can't get anything to happen. Maybe starts to get that Porsche to go under the Silverado. That could be a problem for Big Blue. They need that truck in this match. And here comes a big hit from Hot Rod Hearse. The Hearse does indeed end the Silverado upside down and pushes the other two cars nearly off the track. The Porsche is off and the BMW is on the way. A devastating hit. Turbine time is up next. Now, I'm imagining a scenario for Dead and Gone in the regular Junkyard Joust where they managed to create a situation where Jack Skellington has a line of cars in front of him and they send down one of their big vehicles and just carve up the competition. I think Dead and Gone is a team to keep your eyes on, folks. That was the final car of round three. We have three more eliminations. Let's take a look at the aftermath. The story of that round is gonna be Big Blue. Started out so well, had four left after round one. Now they are down to one. Crimson, Dead and Gone are leading the pack. Hot Pursuit down to two, and the Stream Crossers still in it. And I'm hearing some action over by the shuttlecraft. Yeah, it looks like Tim has figured out how to close the ship. I don't know if he's figured out how to fly it. Hopefully not. 
Well, it's time to start round four. Looks like Crimson's gonna use the Fleet Flyer again. Even though they have no secret weapon, they still have a little bit of a ramp on the back of that thing. Could be useful. Running order is up. All the teams are still in this. Look at that thing flopping around in the back of that truck. And it looks like it did get in position. It's not gonna be much of a ramp unless you wanna go into the back of the truck, but we'll see what happens. Dead and gone, sending down the Bel Air, showing absolutely no fear with this thing. I think they know they got a winner. And a nice hit, and it goes right into the back of the Fleet Flyer. Just lodges itself in there, sticks. And I think that's a sound strategy. That Bel Air's not going anywhere unless that Fleet Flyer does. These two teams, I think they're going to make it through this qualifier. Hot Pursuit trying to stay in the game with two left. Here comes the Victoria. Victoria, nice big hit on the back of the Bel Air, but there's nothing to do there except just lock yourself in position, and that's what the Victoria's done. Stream Crosser's got one left. It's the Phantasm. Phantasm gets almost massacred, just bounces off the back of the Victoria, goes up on the other two vehicles, and then makes a great recovery, and that's gonna keep this Stream Crosser's team in the match. Great acrobatics right there and a great recovery. Big Blue on their final vehicle, Turbine Time, gotta stay in this match. Turbine Time, a nice solid hit on the back of the Victoria and locks it in the track. Not as safe as Phantasm, but it'll do for now. Crimson Crashers looking to finish off Big Blue right now with Animal. And a big hit from Animal, and it does the trick. Turbine Time tossed off the track sideways. Unlikely that he's going to get back on his feet. That might be it for Big Blue. Savage hit by the Crashers there. And here comes the Hot Rod Hearse. Hot Rod Hearse piles into the back of Animal, but Animal's not moving. Nobody's moving. That's a pretty solid line. It bends and it flexes, but nobody's moving. And here comes the BMW for Hot Pursuit. BMW, nice hit, manages to get some action on the track. Nobody eliminated, but definitely got a couple in peril right there, Animal and Victoria. Crasher's gonna send down the Turbo Porsche. Porsche gets a nice hit and manages to loosen up the cars a little bit more. Some bouncing, but no eliminations there. Right now, it's just looking bad for Big Blue, and that's about it. Here comes Jack Skellington to cause some trouble. Jack gets under that Porsche, but look at that recovery by the Porsche. Gets tossed up in the air, flips around on the back, and lands it flawless. That was a great recovery. You can see why the Crimson Crashers chose that car for their team. And that was the last hit of the round. We're just going to have one elimination this time, but it's a big one. Big Blue is out of the match. I think I just heard a spaceship powering up. Oh, yep. Tim's got it going, and I, I don't know where he's going. Hopefully over to rescue Troy, maybe? Maybe that's what he was trying to do this whole time. Looks like the Hot Rod Hearse is going to start us off in round five. Feels a little bit like Dead and Gone and the Crimson Crashers have their own match going on here, and the other teams are just sort of pests to be <laughs> removed from the track so that they can have their own big battle. As Animal heads down the track, and wow, that was a close one for the Hot Rod Hearse. Again, an amazing recovery. Hot Rod Hearst done this a couple times now and manages to keep himself alive just by flipping over to the side of the track, but not upside down. This Victoria has been a solid entry for Hot Pursuit in this match, and it's doing a great job keeping them in the game. And it does it again. Actually knocks Animal off the track. Can't get Animal over, but gets him off the track and finishes the Hot Rod Hearse's removal from the track. Here comes Phantasm again. Phantasm seems to be a survivor. And a big hit from Phantasm, but what happened there? Phantasm hits the back of the Victoria and just flips over and goes upside down up at the front of the track. There's almost no chance of recovering from that position. That was a bad move by Phantasm. So much for survival. That could be it for the stream crossers right there. Jack Skellington coming down next. Jack Skellington, wow, a nasty hit on the back of that Victoria and just sends it into the crates and upside down and then backs down the track, just looking cool as can be. Not a great position for Jack. Porsche might be able to take advantage of this. And the Porsche is not able to do much, just a little pushing. Pushes Jack all the way back down the track and Phantasm gets a chance at recovery but can't really do it because of that safety rail. And Jack bounces back and parks right next to the Porsche. Hot Pursuit, this is their last vehicle in the match right now, the BMW. 
BMW gets a good hit and stays alive, and that's what they need. Jack almost gets tossed off the track, but not quite. And we got a couple of big vehicles coming down the track for the final few. 57 Bel Air now. Massive hit by the Bel Air, but the BMW manages to pull it out and save his team's life right there. Because of that, it's looking good for Hot Pursuit. There is still another big hit to come, though. Here comes the Fleet Flyer. And a pretty solid hit right there, but it doesn't do anything. Amazingly, these cars all stay locked onto the track. And that was the final car of this round. You can see the two cars eliminated in this round. And as you can see from the aftermath, there are no stream crossers. There is only Zool. Hot Pursuit, Dead and Gone, and Crimson Crashers have survived this qualifier. Congrats to the Crimson Crashers, Dead and Gone, and Hot Pursuit. They have qualified for the main event. They are moving on with this illustrious group of teams that have already qualified. There goes Tim in that shuttlecraft. Look out, Tim. Oh, no, he ran into the crate, and the shuttlecraft goes flying over in the junkyard, and LaForge and Cookie are thrown from the vehicle. I feel kind of funny. Oh. Today, five teams are going to compete to make it to the main event, and one of the teams is made of waffles. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Junkyard Just. I'm Aaron Yonda. We've got five brand new teams competing today. Let's head into the garage and see what we've got. First up is this retro team sent in by Regal Radio, Space Invaders, featuring Space Cop, Cannonade, Spacer Racer, Turbo Wedge, and Bubble Gunner. Next up is Strange Coach, a team of all strange looking coaches, appropriately enough. Featuring this old vehicle called Stage Fright. The Vampire Van, sponsored by Sean and Patrick Hogan. Dragon Dragon, appears to be a dragon in the back of that thing. Boot Hill Express, sponsored by Sid from Cybertron. And the Tijuana Taxi, the Indigo Ice Picks. This is a team with undercutting speed and some weight. Featuring Blue Shark, sponsored by Judy Collins. Power Rocket, sponsored by Swedenborg's Smorgasbord. Let's Go, sponsored by Chome. Hydroplane, sponsored by Hendrika's Heavy Hauling. GT Hunter, sponsored by Brendan Walsh. Next up is the Rod Warriors. This is an agile looking team. Featuring the Enforcer, sponsored by Wayland Enterprises International. Two Jets, sponsored by Liz's Wizard Arts and Witchcrafts. Lakester, sponsored by TJG. Rip Rod, sponsored by Sloss Automotive Sachet and Buffet and Slider, sponsored by Hey Steve Productions. And finally, it's the Wafflers. Yes, they are entirely composed of waffles. You might be wondering how exactly this ridiculous team came about. Well, let me tell you the story real quick. My pal Amory posted this on my Facebook wall way back in March as a joke. But I took it completely seriously. There was no way I wasn't gonna try to make this a real thing. So I bought the waffle maker and I bought some waffle mix. And after many failed attempts, I managed to make a team of waffle vehicles. But they couldn't just go down the track in their pure waffle form, they'd just break apart. So I bought some lacquer to harden them up a little bit, and I experimented with putting them on a chassis, or even trying to stick wheels in there to see if that would work. But nothing really worked, so they are going down the track as is. The Wafflers are Blintz, sponsored by Willful Fiber Art. Hotcake, sponsored by Stump's Tree Farm. Craper, sponsored by Winnebago Trauma Clinic. Ridiculous, sponsored by Emo Dingo. And Flapjacket, sponsored by Ellis Wurtenberger. By the way, I also wanted to mention that in case you didn't realize it, all of the sponsors of these vehicles and teams are patrons, and they sponsor the cars through Patreon. So if you're curious about this, check out the Junkyard Joust Patreon page. The rules are simple, survive. Every car has to drive down the track, smash into the rest of the cars, and if they end up upside down or sideways at the end of a round, they are eliminated. Any cars that are right side up at the end of the round move on to the next round. In the qualifier, the match ends when two teams have lost all their cars and the remaining three teams move on. Starting us off for the Space Invaders, it's going to be Space Cop, an appropriately named car for this team. Going to keep those invaders at bay, and Space Cop takes his place on the track, slots in nicely. If you remember last episode, there was some trouble with that shuttle, and Tim kind of crashed it over there in the junkyard. Looks like Troy is over there trying to fish it out with that tractor. I don't know if that's going to work. It looks pretty stuck in there. Meanwhile, Jordy LaForge is back in a car and ready to go. Let's go for the Indigo Ice Picks. 
Ooh, Jordy was not belted in well enough, and he goes flying out of Let's Go and goes tumbling all the way down Space Cop and lands right in front of Space Cop in between this Cop and Evil Weevil. That's definitely not a great place to be, but we'll see what happens. Looks like Tim is back in action, too. He's going to ride the Boot Hill Express for Strange Coach. That does not look safe. And there's a huge explosion of cars down at the end of the track. Tim goes flying. Jordy goes flying. They actually land pretty safe, but Space Cop and the Boot Hill Express are both done. That big hit toasted both of them, and Let's Go managed to survive that hit. Good recovery. First up for the Rod Warriors, it's Two Jets. Two Jets slams into Evil Weevil and bounces back a little, bounce back from that safety rail. And now Two Jets is about halfway down the track. Now the Wafflers got a chance to show what they're made of. Gridiculous is first up for them, 11 grams. Gridiculous gives Two Jets a light tap on the back. Not a whole lot of offensive power this team, but we've seen it with the Nerf team. They might be able to survive just on the lightness alone. We've made it once around the roster, and now Space Invader's gonna send down their second car, Space Racer. Space Racer hits Ridiculous and pushes Ridiculous all the way up to the front of the track along with two jets and makes a nice tidy little line of vehicles up there. The Ice Picks are sending down Power Rocket next. Power Rocket shows off his power. Those cars all go flying. Space Racer gets hurled upside down. Gridiculous survives. And I don't know if you noticed, but Gridiculous, I think, lost a little couple of chunks right there. Yeah, there are chunks of Gridiculous all over the track. This could be a concern for this team. And uh, Two Jets also upside down on that hit. Strange Coach is up now, and they're sending down Dragon Dragon. And Baby Cookie decided to hop in the car. Cookie falls out of Dragon Dragon before even making it down the track. She must not have been holding on. She just tumbles right out of the car, lands over by the fences. Dragon Dragon, meanwhile, pushes Power Rocket a little bit sideways and manages to lock it in on the track. Cookie better hang on tighter next time. Oh, I'm in the weeds. Up now for the Rod Warriors, it's Rip Rod. Rip Rod smashes into the back of Dragon Dragon, pushes Power Rocket off. Power Rocket looks probably good right there. And now Rip Rod is locked in. Here comes another Waffler, it's Flapjack. 11 grams for this one as well. Flapjack can't quite slide all the way down to the end of the track, but you know, that's a, a safe move. Only problem is gonna be whoever comes down next and are they gonna clobber Flapjack? Oh yeah, Space Invaders are sending down Cannonade. There is some good clobbering potential right here. And indeed it was clobber in time. Flapjack gets flipped and I think that pancake is done. Yeah, that does not look good right there. Upside down, Cannonade doing good and Rip Rod gets pushed curbside and is also in some trouble here. Ice Picks are gonna send down Hydroplane next. This thing probably has some good undercutting ability. Hydroplane slides underneath the two cars at the back. Cannonade is in danger and Rip Rod is off the track looking pretty safe. Vampire Van's up now for Strange Coach, 45 grams. Big hit on the back of Hydroplane. Hydroplane ends up up towards the front and Dragon Dragon is pushed off and it looks like Cannonade, yep, Cannonade is upside down and done. Nice hit by the Vampire Van, too bad he flipped over himself. Rod Warriors are gonna send down Lakester. This is an interesting vehicle. Lakester collides with Vampire Van and goes hurtling off the track and oof, couldn't quite make a recovery. It looks like something on the top of that car kind of flopped off and actually prevented Lakester from recovering and Vampire Van still upside down. Next up for the Wafflers, it's Craper. This is the lightest car ever to grace the track. Craper almost gets all the way down. That's impressive for these Waffler cars. I guess you uh, have to lower your expectations for this team a little bit, but um, that was a good sliding arrival. Turbo Wedge is coming down next. This is a heavy car and it's an undercutter. Look out, Craper. Craper, wow, did you see that recovery? Unexpected, the car flips over land somehow. Turbo Wedge not able to do that much damage here. Hydroplane slides off to a recovery and actually Vampire Van now is nearly right side up. So maybe the opposite of what Turbo Wedge wanted to do here. GT Hunter up now for the Indigo Ice Picks. 
GT Hunter slams the back of Turbo Edge and knocks that car completely off the track and upside down. Right now, Space Invaders, from what I'm seeing on the field, have no cars in a survival position, which is really bad news for their team. A lot of Strange Coach cars actually tipped over right now, too. Stage Fright is next for their team. Stage Fright, a nice hit on the back of GT Hunter. Some good action, but GT Hunter makes a nice recovery, turns around and faces Stage Fright unafraid. Here's a cool looking car for the Rod Warriors, Enforcer. Enforcer slams the back of Stage Fright, only manages to succeed in getting GT Hunter off the track. Not much more going on right there, except Vampire Van is not looking good for survival. Here comes Hot Cake for the Wafflers, a whole 12 grams on this one. Hot Cake slides to a gentle stop right behind the Enforcer. Well, I think this Wafflers team know they have to protect their vehicles. They'd probably be a lot worse off at high speeds. They know their cars aren't durable and they are taking pains to protect themselves. Bubble Gunner's back in a different color for the Space Invaders. Ooh, a nasty hit there on the back of Hot Cake, and you can see Waffle Bits flying all over the place. Can't quite finish Hot Cake off or the Enforcer. Stagecoach in danger. That was a devastating hit from Bubble Gunner, and there are more pieces of Waffle all over the track. Hot Cake's probably happy to get off the track. Here comes Blue Shark for the Ice Picks. 57 grams, heavy vehicle. Blue Shark, not worried about stage fright, knocks that car completely upside down. Another nasty loss for that team, and Bubble Gunner still hanging on here. Strange Coach with their final entry in this round, Tijuana Taxi. The Tijuana Taxi smacks into the back of Blue Shark, and Bubble Gunner is in trouble right now. If that car doesn't get flipped upright, Space Invaders are probably out of this match. Slider's up now for the Rod Warriors. Front of this car looks kind of dangerous. Slider tries to slide underneath the Tijuana Taxi, but can't quite make it. Maybe Tijuana a little bit too heavy. Maybe Blue Shark prevented it. So it looks like no damage on that hit. Here comes the final car of the round. The big one for the Wafflers, if you can call any of their cars big. Blintz, 13 grams. Blint slides to a nice easy stop right behind Slider. That's going to guarantee the Wafflers move on to the next round. Let's go to Skycam and see what we can see. It looks like Vampire Van somehow made a recovery. I'm seeing another Waffle car still alive. And it looks like Deanna Troy is taking a break from trying to get that shuttlecraft unstuck to go rescue Baby Cookie with her tractor. Baby Cookie's pretty tough. I think she's fine. Taking a look at the aftermath, it's confirmed Space Invaders are out. It was a team that looked like they'd be good, somehow all eliminated in that first round. Strange Coach is down three, Rod Warriors and the Wafflers both lost two, and the Ice Picks didn't lose a single vehicle. Little update on the shuttlecraft situation. Troy's still over there with the tractor, but she's called in some help. It's a green Chevy Suburban, and maybe it'll have the power to pull that thing out. Up first for the Ice Picks, it's going to be Hydroplane. Ice Picks still reveling in the fact that they didn't lose a single vehicle. One team is already eliminated. Ice Picks are almost certainly going to make it to the main event. Nothing is sure for these other three teams. They've got to survive this round to make it. Here comes Slider. Slider massacres Hydroplane, knocks it completely upside down and off the track, and then gets almost off the track himself. Not quite all the way, though. The Wafflers are going to start out with Blintz this time around, see how this thing can perform. Blintz slides almost all the way up to the front of the track. I mean, what more do you expect from a bus made of waffles? Here comes the Tijuana Taxi for Strange Coach. The taxi slams hard into the back of Blintz. Blintz goes flying upside down, bits flying everywhere, and Tijuana Taxi is sideways. A little bit too much force, some serious flipping there by that taxi, and now they are both done. We've got three eliminations in round two. Slider, the only one left standing right now. Ice Picks are sending down the GT Hunter. GT Hunter's gonna smash into Evil Weevil. GT Hunter replaces Evil Weevil at the front of the track. A nice gentle removal and finishes off the Tijuana Taxi. Nice of the Ice Picks to take it easy on Evil Weevil. They're doing fine in this match. They don't have to be super aggressive. Here comes Enforcer for the Warriors. And an aggressive hit from Enforcer knocks GT Hunter over the safety rail upside down. Somehow GT Hunter getting back on the track after being out on the field and the Enforcer slides back to about midway. Impressive move by the Enforcer right there. The Wafflers probably amazed that they made it through around one, sending down Ridiculous. They gotta stay alive here. 
And Ridiculous slams into the back of the Enforcer, or not really slams, but sort of nudges the Enforcer forward a little bit. Both of those cars better get ready to take a big hit from the Vampire Van. Ridiculous gets chucked off the track, but somehow stays alive, and the Enforcer not even bothered by the Vampire Van. Luckily, most of that hit was absorbed by Gridiculous. You can see more bits of Gridiculous flying all over the track. Hopefully, there'll be enough left of these cars after this is over to compete in the main event. Another heavy vehicle coming down for the Ice Picks. It's Blue Shark. Blue Shark, a nice hit, but doesn't manage to get anything to happen. Vampire Van gets thrust up into the air, but makes a nice landing, grabs onto the side of the track, and survives. Enforcer goes up to the front. Rip Rod's gonna try to mix things up down there. And Rip Rod punches the back of Blue Shark. Bad news for Vampire Van, can't land on his feet, flips over. He's made a recovery before, but this looks less likely this time. Strange Coach doesn't get one of those vehicles back up again somehow. They are out of this match. The irony being, of course, the Wafflers got one guaranteed to survive this round, and here comes Craper. Craper gets tossed up curbside, can't even manage to stay on the track. I don't think that's gonna be a good place for Craper to be. Jordy's recovered and back in Let's Go and ready to devour some waffle. Let's Go chomps on Craper, sending him off the track and upside down. Almost makes a recovery, but can't quite manage it. Jordy does a little jump, but manages to stay in his seat this time. He doesn't go tumbling out. He's pretty good at that. Unfortunately, Power Rocket's coming down for the Ice Picks. Jordy might have a problem here. Power Rocket boosts Jordy and Let's Go up into the air. Jordy falls out, manages to eject before Let's Go lands on him, but Let's Go, great landing. That car seems to have a good balance and the rip ride now thrown off and upside down. That was the final car of round two and it looks like we've got our three teams that are moving on. Unbelievably, one of them made of waffles. Jordy's definitely gonna need some help recovering, and it doesn't look like Troy's had any luck getting that shuttle unstuck yet. A lot of effort, and it moves, but it just kinda gets stuck harder in the junkyard. Quick look at the aftermath. Ice Pigs lost a couple, but they're still in great shape. Rod Warriors down to two, and the Wafflers survive and go on to the main event with their one remaining vehicle. The Wafflers, the Rod Warriors, and the Indigo Ice Picks are moving on to the main event. Congrats, teams. Here are your survivors, and it looks like Troy got another vehicle now, working on getting that shuttlecraft out of there. We'll see if they can pry it loose or not. Congrats to our winners. They will join these illustrious teams for the main event. Coming soon, just got a couple qualifiers left. And yep, I hear the revving of engines. It sounds like that Oscar Mayer monster truck. Oh, it's going up on the cars, trying to, what, push? Maybe push the shuttlecraft out of there? Oh, it's not going well, and the giant wiener falls on top of Troy, crushing her and the tractor. Well, good effort by Troy there. Maybe someone should tell her about the crane. Welcome to the eighth qualifier of season three of Junkyard Joust. Hi everybody, I'm Aaron Yanda. We've got some spectacular teams for you tonight. Check these out, there are some fun ones. Let's head into the garage and see what we've got. Here's a team that's gonna take you to the underworld, but at least you'll be able to see it's a glow to hell. Featuring Warp Speeder, sponsored by Deluxe Flame. Skull Crusher, sponsored by Sean and Patrick Hogan. Duck and Roll, sponsored by Woeful Fiber Art. The Linster Prototype, sponsored by Emo Dingo. And Ollie Rocket, sponsored by Nay. Hi, Javi. And here we've got an unusual team, Alice in Thunderland, sponsored by Sid from Cybertron. These vehicles are all custom sculpted. First up, it's the Undergrounder, 83 grams. The Waster, the Caterpillar, the Pollinator, and the Hunter. And here's a menacing looking team, Fierce Lee Dragon, with the 57 Roadster, sponsored by Chome. High Roller, sponsored by Swedenborg's Smorgasbord. Cove Light, sponsored by Judy Collins. Sweet 16, sponsored by Liz's Wizards Arts and Witchcraft. And Bad Moon, sponsored by Emo Dingo. Mind Control is back with an almost entirely new lineup of vehicles. Their first car is Minecart, sponsored by Wayland Enterprises International. Iron Golem, sponsored by Hendrika's Heavy Hauling. 
Ocelot, sponsored by Hey Hayes Hatchback Hanger. Redstone Monstrosity, sponsored by Sloth Automotive Sachet and Buffet. And returning this season, Spider, sponsored by Jedi. Stranger Danger, I'd stay away from these vans if I was you. First up is this Ford Bedford van, sponsored by Raygol Radio. And the Ford Econoline van, also sponsored by Raygol Radio. The MBK van, sponsored by Stump's Tree Farm. Custom 77 Dodge van, sponsored by Mr. Stratholm. And the Ford Supervan 2, sponsored by Ellis Wurtenberger. I wanted to let you know about a couple ways that you can make watching Junkyard Joust even more fun than it already is. Number one, if you become a car sponsor, you'll have a vested interest in watching the episode and finding out what happens to your sponsored car. You can root for it on the sidelines, and you can even bet on who you think is going to win if you join our Discord. It's just betting for fun. There's no real money exchange, but it is a lot of fun. Links for all this in the description. The rules are simple, survive. Every car has to drive down the track, smash into the rest of the cars, and if they end up upside down or sideways at the end of a round, they are eliminated. Any cars that are right side up at the end of the round move on to the next round. In the qualifier, the match ends when two teams have lost all their cars and the remaining three teams move on. First up, it's a familiar face. It's Spider from Mind Control with that fold down back. Spider did pretty well for Mind Control last season. They decided to bring him back, and they got four additional new vehicles for the team. Should be interesting to see how they fare in this match. There is going to be some serious competition in the main event this season, so we'll see what happens. Blow to Hell is going to send down the Ollie Rocket first for their team. This is a flashy-looking team full of fast cars, and Ollie Rocket smacks the back of Spider. Tries to fold that back up, but can't manage it, even with the pointed front end. Only succeeds in pushing Spider a little bit more down the track. Here's a highly unusual team, Alice in Thunderland, and they are going to send down the Caterpillar, very unlike any team we've seen, and BAM! Ollie Rocket gets smacked, flips over numerous times, goes over the top of Spider and upside down, and that's going to be our first casualty tonight, unless Ollie Rocket somehow gets flipped right side up again. Caterpillar, a heavy vehicle, might have something to do with that massive Caterpillar on top of it. Another kind of odd team, Stranger Danger with the Ford Econo line van. This thing's kind of heavy too. And a slam into the back of Caterpillar, but Caterpillar is not going anywhere. Almost tips off the edge, but manages to hold it on the track. We got a nice line of cars now. First up for this team, Fierce Lead Dragon. It's going to be Sweet 16. Sweet 16 assassinates the Econoline van. Flips him upside down, and the van takes a bad bounce and goes over. That van is probably done. Could get tipped back up, but it's fairly unlikely. Nice hit there by Sweet 16. And look who's back. That's right. It's Baby Cookie, and she's going to take a ride down the track in this minecart for mind control. <laughs> the minecart smacks into the back of Sweet 16. Can't get anything happening. Almost gets under Caterpillar, but that thing's too heavy. And Baby Cookie manages to stay in the minecart. Could this be the perfect vehicle for Cookie to be a passenger in? So far, so good. And here we've got another rider for Glow to Hell. It's Warp Speeder and Jordy LaForge. So appropriate to be riding in Warp Speeder. And Jordy hits warp speed and goes flying out of the car over and over and over. And did you see that landing? He landed right on his butt. And he, I think he's probably okay. Troy is stationed nearby for any sort of medical help that's needed. Cookie stays in the minecart. Great hit there. Jordy having some fun with warp speed. Here comes another big bruiser for Alice in Thunderland. Undergrounder, 83 grams. And Undergrounder smashes into the line of cars and puts three of them off the track. Cookie in the minecart makes a recovery. Warp Speeder makes a recovery. And not so good for Sweet 16, who is flipped over. Wow, that was a big hit. And now Undergrounder and Caterpillar are dominating the track. Only Spider left down there for any other team. Except for the danger, it's going to be the MBK van. 68 grams on this one. MBK Van smashes Caterpillar off the track and look at the recovery of Caterpillar balancing on her feeler and then flipping over and landing upright. That was a great recovery right there. Not so good for the undergrounder. Fiercely Dragons got Cove Light ready to go. 
Cope like collides with MKB, but can't get much to happen. Everybody just kind of sits on the track. Too many heavy vehicles. And now Cove Light is locked in. Actually, it's the MBK van. It's confusing because it says HKS on the side, but it's the MBK van. And next up for mind control, the Ocelot. Could be some undercutter potential here. Ocelot does indeed take Cove Light off the track, but Cove Light makes a pretty good flip and a recovery. Nice and stable. Good hit by Ocelot. Low to hell's next entrance gonna be duck and roll. Duck and roll hurls Ocelot off the track, indeed rolling the car several times, bounces off a of cove light and manages to land it. Great recovery there, and now the duck is locked in. We had a spider for the mind control team, got one for Allison Thunderland too, the hunter. Looks to me a lot like a spider perched atop an old citation, and that spider actually slows itself down with its own legs and a nice gentle tap trying to keep stable, I guess, and not take any risks here. Very cautious spider. Danger's got the Ford Supervan 2 now, 62 grams, pretty heavy. The Supervan manages to actually eliminate potentially his own teammate, flips over the MBK van sideways on the track just from the power and the force and uh, doesn't really do much else, just locks it in on the track. Here's kind of a fierce looking car for Fiercely Dragon High Roller. I Roller tries to lift the super van off the track, gets him up a little bit. I got a feeling though that he's gonna be able to finish the job depending on the next car that's coming down. A little chunk of something flew off the super van there. I think it was the super van. Anyway, somebody lost something. Oh yeah, here comes a big hit. The redstone monstrosity going down for mind control. The monstrosity finishes off the super van and starts to push the high roller underneath the hunter. That was a nice big hit. That thing straddles the track just wide enough to stay on there, but it doesn't look that secure. It could get knocked off, I think. Let's see what Skull Crusher can do for the hell. Skull Crusher can't get under the monstrosity, but pushes the high roller farther under the hunter. Hunter definitely in peril right now, sticky predicament. Let's see if the hunter can get any help from his teammate, the waster. Man, look at this thing. The waster does exactly that. He wastes the redstone monstrosity, pushes the skull underneath him, and unfortunately also ends the hunter. Hunter flips over, could get flipped back upright again. There's a lot of heavy vehicles in this qualifier, and here's another one for the danger, the custom 77 Dodge van, 61 grams. The van takes the waster out, just hits him off the track. A deft maneuver, and waster can't quite make a recovery. High roller pushed off the track, but he's right side up. And the waster almost turns it over, but can't quite do it. Another fierce looking car for the Fiercely Dragon Team, 57 Roadster. The Roadster plows into the back of that van, but can't get anything to move. Too many heavy vehicles, even the ones that are tipped over, no one's able to get them off the track, so we're backing it down. And look who else is back. It's Tim. He's going down in the back of the Iron Golem. I think he's not even trying to be safe here. Nope, he just flips all over and lands on a bunch of the cars. Ow, ooh, ooh, yeah. Yep, that did not look pleasant. I think he's going to be visiting the shuttle. Luckily, he's right next to the shuttle, so uh, maybe Troy can begin treatment immediately. Nothing else going on there. Actually, she's a little close to the action right here, but I guess she wants to be ready for this exact occasion. Iron Golem's going to take a hit from the Linster prototype for Glow to Hell, surprisingly like 27 grams. Linster prototype rocks the Iron Golem, but actually manages to knock that Roadster off the track upside down. Iron Golem is leaning up against the Roadster. It could go either way, depending on what happens on the next run. And it's gonna be Thunderland. They're gonna send down the Pollinator. The Pollinator, a nice, gentle slide into the line of cars. That van is starting to get moved up a little bit. Iron Golem looking pretty safe right now, and everybody's locked in. Two vehicles left in this round. Here comes the Ford Bedford van. The Bedford van stirs things up a little bit on the track. It doesn't get anything decisive to happen, and now that Bedford van is curbside, this next run should be interesting. A lot of cars in precarious positions right now. And it's gonna be a fast-moving car, fairly heavy. Bad Moon, 53 grams for the Dragon. 
Bad Moon takes out the Bedford van, knocks it upside down on top of the pollinator. Almost took out the Dodge van, the other Stranger Danger vehicle there, but not enough to quite flip it over enough to count as out. Quick scan of the field is going to reveal 11 vehicles eliminated in this round. That's a pretty good number. Let's take a look at the aftermath. And look at this. Stranger Danger barely hanging on by that one vehicle that was almost eliminated, the custom Dodge van. Alice in Thunderland lost three. Fiercely Dragon lost two. Glow to Hell doing great. And Mind Control also doing great with only one loss apiece. And it's time for round two. Jordy recovering nicely over in the shuttle with Troy and, uh, well, Tim's not over there. That's a little concerning. Oh boy, if he didn't get uh, fixed up, I hope he's not going down again. Here comes the prototype. And there is your running order for this round. Prototype's gonna line up on the track. Glow to Hell and Mind Control coming out of that round looking pretty good. Only three teams can move on tonight. Those other teams gotta focus on taking out some of these leaders if they wanna make it. Iron Golem up now for Mind Control. Iron Golem forks the Linster prototype off the track. Double hit there, and the Linster prototype, a great recovery. That car's got some good agility. Those prongs made sure the prototype was off the track, but couldn't flip him upside down. Now up for Fierce Lead Dragon, it's gonna be Bad Moon. Solid smack from Bad Moon, and Iron Golem is done. Flips over off of Evil Weevil, cannot turn it back, and that's the end of that. That vehicle more of an offensive vehicle than a defensive vehicle, and now it's done. Up now for Alice in Thunderland, the delightful Pollinator. The Pollinator takes Bad Moon off the track, but then just flipped sideways. Got caught up on the wing there on the side of Bad Moon and just flipped over. I think that flower and the bee are a little top heavy. Doesn't bode well for the Thunderland. And the final remaining car for Stranger Danger, the Custom 77 Dodge Van. This thing's gotta stay alive to keep their team in it. Bam, that was a nice hit. Knocks the Pollinator flying, and the Pollinator pushed over sideways down by the end of the crate. Not exactly the type of behavior they were looking for from that car. Here comes Skull Crusher, gonna try to end the Stranger Danger. Skull Crusher almost gets under the van and bounces back. The van pushing it, landing on top and pushing it backwards down the track, making that vehicle a little bit vulnerable now. Probably Mind Control's fastest car with a little undercutting ability. Here comes the Ocelot. Ocelot gets a big push but cannot do anything to Skull Crusher. We just got a line of cars now on the track. A good safe hit from the Ocelot. Fiercely Dragon's gonna try to stir things up with Cove Light. Cove Light smacks into the back of Ocelot again, not able to get anyone moving down there. And now we've got four cars lined up on the track. Oh, and now we find out what happened to Tim. I don't know what he's doing hanging out on the feelers of the Caterpillar. Oh man, Tim goes flying off the edge. Cove Light pushing under Ocelot, Ocelot pushing under Skull Crusher, finally getting Skull Crusher off the track. And Tim takes another spill, double flip, lands on his back. That was a bit of a dopey move by Tim, climbing on the Caterpillar like that. I don't know what he hoped to achieve. I, I think he needs a little medical attention from Troy. Warp Speeder's up now for Glow to Hell. Warp Speeder tries to take out the Caterpillar, but the Caterpillar's not moving. Just a gentle nudge forward, a little precarious, but looking good for the moment, and Warp Speeder backs down the track a ways. Now it's time for Spider for Mind Control. Spider slams the Warp Speeder, and Caterpillar forced off the track and sideways. Warp Speeder recovers, and the back of Spider goes up. Warp Speeder now nearly crushing Tim. They should really pull him out of there. The big news here, though, Caterpillar is sideways. That's another elimination for Alice in Thunderland. As the High Roller prepares to go down the track, that team might be out of this unless that Caterpillar can somehow make a recovery. Spider gets bonked, and now Stranger Danger in their own kind of danger as that van is just perched on the edge of the track. One little push, and that thing could go over, and that would be two teams out of this round. This could all be over if they eliminate that van. There's two vehicles left in this round. Let's see if they can manage it. Duck and Roll's gonna take a shot. Duck and Roll does an amazing takedown on High Roller. 
just carves him off the track, pushes him off upside down, and he is done. And the custom Dodge van continues to hang on. Let's see if Baby Cookie in the minecart can wreak any havoc. Big hit by the minecart, but it's not enough to cause any damage. Custom Dodge Van manages to stay alive, and we are gonna go on to round three. There are still four teams in this. Four vehicles eliminated in this round, as you can see from Skycam, and it's all bad news for Alice in Thunderland. Let's head into the aftermath. Alice in Thunderland is out, fiercely dragging down to two. Glow to Hell still has four. Mind Control down to three, and Stranger Danger somehow still in this with one. It looks like Jordy had to force Tim into the shuttle to get some medical attention. I don't know why Tim's being so resistant today. Anyway, we're gonna start out round three, duck and roll for Glow to Hell. Glow gotta be feeling good about their performance so far in this qualifier. They got four left. You can see Jordy and Troy in the background still trying to deal with a rambunctious Tim the Tool Man. I don't know what's gotten into him. Maybe he's gone down the track just one too many times. Speaking of going down the track, here is Baby Cookie in the minecart. Cookie managing to stay in this thing last round and does it again this round. A nice little tap to the back of Duck and Roll there. And now Cookie is locked onto the track inside the minecart. Should be a pretty solid hit here from Bad Moon for Dragon. Bad Moon, a nasty slam. The minecart flipped over on top of Baby Cookie. Duck and Roll makes a nice maneuver there and recovers, though not in a safe position right now. Stranger Danger still hanging on with the custom 77 Dodge Van. Here it goes again. The Dodge Van piles into the back of Bad Moon, pushes the minecart up. Is that minecart gonna make a recovery? Cookie is still hanging out in the minecart, just grabbing the insides. It'll be interesting to see what the Linster prototype does here. Nice slam by the prototype there. Doesn't make much happen except the minecart goes upside down again. Baby Cookie being pushed into Bad Moon. Luckily there's some room in that cart. I think she's trying to climb up in there. Ocelot now for mind control. Ocelot gets underneath the Linster prototype, but the prototype is not having it. Not phased by that hit at all. And Ocelot now is curbside. Prototype makes a great spinning recovery. Kovalite's been getting some great takedowns in this match so far. Let's see if he can do it again. And a nasty hit right there, and Ocelot goes up in the air, lands right, but then flips over and can't control the impact. And that is gonna put Ocelot out of this match. And with the minecart upside down right now, things are not looking good for mind control. Next up, it's gonna be Skull Crusher. Skull Crusher attempts to take Kovlite out, but can't do it. Kovlite makes a great recovery. Not even a chance of getting flipped over in that situation. And Mind Control still in trouble right here. Need to make something happen. Spider's got to stay alive. Spider flips over, but look at this. Minecart is knocked off the track and back right side up. Spider may have intended to try to make something happen, and it worked. Baby Cookie right side up in minecart. Duck and roll off the track, still good, but now Spider is in trouble. Will it be worth the sacrifice? Here comes Warp Speeder for Glow to Hell. Warp Speeder knocks Spider off the track now, and Spider makes an incredible recovery. Warp Speeder not so good. Just flips upside down, gets clipped uh, by his own vehicle, Skull Crusher there. And Warp Speeder was the final car of round three, so Warp Speeder is out. Taking a look at the field here, Minecraft playing some funny games, and they are really working out. It looked like they might not make it through the round, but somehow they've got two left. Taking a look at the aftermath, Fiercely Dragon still at two, Glow to Hell loses one, Mind Control loses one, but stays in the match, and Stranger Danger still in the match with that van. And apparently there's been some trouble over at the shuttle. Tim's a little out of control right now. They are tussling with him, trying to stop him from messing with the controls, as you can hear. I don't know what Tim thinks he's doing, but you don't want to mess around with uh, spaceship controls like that, especially if you don't know what you're doing. The Linster prototype takes to the field in the meantime. Things have evened out a little bit more in this match, but we've still got four teams left. One team's got to get eliminated before the thing's over. And we'll keep going until it is. Next up for Fiercely Dragon, it's gonna be Kovlad again. 
Cove Light annihilates the Linster prototype. The Linster prototype, man, that thing has been making some great recoveries, but not this time. Just gets tossed up in the air and pushed over against the crates. That may have interfered with its ability to make a recovery. If it doesn't flip back over, it's done. Here comes Spider for Mind Control, a near miss last time, but somehow stayed alive. And this time, Spider flops into place with the back down, nicely locked onto the track. Cove Light staying in position as well. Here comes the danger again with the 77 Dodge Van. The Dodge Van knocks the back of Spider up, not interested in what's going on there. Nice low bumper on that van. So many close calls, but somehow that thing is staying in it. Duck and Roll had a good round last round. Let's see if it happens again. And the duck smacks into the back of the custom Dodge van and everybody's locked in place. We got four cars. I got a feeling something's gonna happen here. These two remaining cars for Fiercely Dragon are nice cars. You do not wanna be in front of them when they come down. Bad Moon pops duck and roll up in the air and the duck cannot make a recovery. Dances around a little bit, but can't do it. That could be it for duck and roll with the loss of Linster. Glow to hell are not looking good this round. Here comes Cookie, still strapped into that minecart, nice and safe. The minecart smacks into the back of Bad Moon. Not much happening there. Cookie bobbles around a little bit. And now everybody's locked on the track again. We're already down to the final car of this round. It's gonna be Skullcrusher. Skullcrusher's gotta be careful here. Skullcrusher can't get anything to happen. That van gets put up on top of Bad Moon, but it's not enough to take him off the track. And Glow to Hell are coming out of this round not feeling very excited about what happened. Both the Linster Prototype and Duck and Roll, the only vehicles eliminated in this round in the aftermath the lead has changed fiercely. Dragon and Mind Control are now in the lead with two cars apiece. Glow to Hell, only one left, down with Stranger Danger. There's some weird sounds coming from the shuttlecraft right now. Oh, uh-oh, that does not sound good. I don't know what's going on in there, but I know Tim was out of his mind. I hope nothing serious has happened. Well, here we go with round five. We still have four teams in this match, unbelievably. And it's been a bit of a turnaround. Glow to Hell, who looked so promising at the beginning, is now in danger of being eliminated. Stranger danger, speaking of danger, they've only had one left this entire time and they're still in this. Here comes the minecart. The minecart slides into place. Evil Weevil tossed up into the safety area. It's pretty cool that our middleweight champion still does the buffering duty here for the Junkyard Joust after all the glory that Evil Weevil has been getting hasn't let fame go to his head. And here comes the custom dodge again. The dodge slams into the back of the minecart, but nobody's moving here. Cookie gets bonked around a little bit, but you know, she can handle that. She's a tough little baby. Skull Crusher up now, more like Skull Pressure. A lot of pressure on this vehicle. Skull Crusher knocks into the back of the Custom Dodge van, but goes curbside. That is a perilous position to be in right now. That is not what Glow to Hell want to see. And bad news, Cove Light's coming down for Fiercely Dragon. We've seen what this car can do. Cove Light takes down Skull Crusher. Skull Crusher is tossed upside down off the track. If that car stays like that, it's done. This match could be over for Glow to Hell. Final car of the round for Mind Control. It's Spider. Let's see what happens. Spider plows into the back of Cove Light. Almost gets the van off the track, but it doesn't happen. The Dodge remains on the track and Skull Crusher does not. What an insane turnaround. Glow to hell have gone to hell and they are done. Checking out the aftermath. Fiercely Dragon Mind Control got two left and Stranger Danger had that one van that made it all the way through this qualifier. All three of those teams are gonna move on to the main event. Here are your winners after a hard-fought match with a lot of drama, an unexpected turnaround. Here's all the teams that have qualified for the main event. Oh, now hold on a second. Tim is gone, and it looks like he may have transported somehow using the technology of the shuttle. We don't know where he is, and I wonder what's gonna happen when he comes back.
The final three teams that are going to make it into this year's Junkyard Joust main event are going to be determined right now. Welcome to Junkyard Joust, everybody. I'm Aaron Yanda, and we might have very well saved the best for last tonight, and I'm expecting some pretty fierce competition tonight in the ninth qualifier. Let's see what we got. First up is this team of old school cars, Wizard Apocalypse, featuring Saturn Seeker, Formula Special, Shark Shifter, Pipe and Hot, sponsored by Tim the Bear Neal, and Evil Eye, sponsored by Woeful Fiber Art. It's even got a Wisconsin license plate on there. Thunderlord, this is a team of superheroes led by Thor, of course. Starting off with Captain America, sponsored by Illuminati Public Relations. Spider Machine, sponsored by Chome. Captain America Bus, sponsored by Sean and Patrick Hogan. Iron Man, sponsored by Brendan Walsh. And Thor, sponsored by Sid from Cybertron. And here's a slick looking team, Supernova. Quick shout out to all the patrons who helped me name teams this season like this one. Thanks everybody. First up for Supernova, the Cheetah, sponsored by Hasty Productions. The 1970 Ford Escort RS 1600, sponsored by Swedenborg Smorgasbord. 64 Chevy Nova Station Wagon, sponsored by Priceax Private Parts. The Shelby Cobra 427 SC, sponsored by Liz's Wizard Arts and Witchcrafts. And the Pro Stock Firebird, sponsored by Emo Dingo. Don't make this team angry, it's Sting Operation. This team is actually fronted by Evil Weevil's sister. He couldn't give up his track duties, so he brought in his sister with the team to compete. With Dragon Tail, sponsored by Wayland Enterprises International. Scorpedo, sponsored by Ellie's Hop Shop. And of course, Evil Weevil Sister, sponsored by TJG. Super Stinger, sponsored by Sloth Automotive Sachet and Buffet. And Bee Sting, sponsored by Judy Collins. Stay out of this team's way or you might get caught in the bloodlight. Featuring the Mercedes-Benz 300 SEL 6.8 AMG, sponsored by Raygal Radio. Slide Kick, sponsored by Winnebago Trauma Clinic. Roger Dodger, sponsored by Stumps Tree Farm. The Scion XB, sponsored by Hendrika's Heavy Hauling. And the VWT1 Panel Bus, sponsored by Ellis Wurtenberger. I wanted to let you know about a couple ways that you can make watching Junkyard Joust even more fun than it already is. Number one, if you become a car sponsor, you'll have a vested interest in watching the episode and finding out what happens to your sponsored car. You can root for it on the sidelines, and you can even bet on who you think is going to win if you join our Discord. It's just betting for fun. There's no real money exchange. And a quick note to everybody who is a patron and supports this show, I'm going to be doing some special car giveaways in the near future. I've been picking up some sweet collector cars here and there and I want to give them to you guys as a reward for supporting this show and I also want to give one out to the person who wins the betting on the main event this season over on our discord if you're not a patron yet there's no better time than now head on over to patreon.com slash junkyard joust and thanks links for all this in the description the rules are simple survive every car has to drive down the track smash into the rest of the cars and if they end up upside down or sideways at the end of a round they are eliminated Eliminated. Any cars that are right side up at the end of the round move on to the next round. In the qualifier, the match ends when two teams have lost all their cars and the remaining three teams move on. All right, let's jump right in and get our wheels wet in joust. 64 Chevy Nova's going down first for Supernova. Running order of the teams in the upper left. I'm excited about these teams. There are some interesting competitors here tonight and whoever wins is really going to make the main event something special. First up for the Thunderlords, it's gonna be Iron Man. Iron Man slams into the Chevy Nova and can't get him off the track, so he backs away a little bit, slots into the track nicely. Sting Operations gonna send down Evil Weevil's sister. Evil Weevil already down there on the track, being track buffer right now, and Evil Weevil's sister annihilates Iron Man, takes Iron Man completely out. Iron Man flips and flips again and is done. Not even a chance. And you've got the Chevy Nova surrounded by Weevils right now. Mercedes-Benz is going to be the first one to hit the track for Bloodlight. The Mercedes-Benz slams Evil Weevil's sister over into the crates. Just sends her flying all the way across the field. And it looks like she is straight upside down over there. That is a rough thing to have to see. Evil Weevil sitting up front just seeing his sister get launched into the crates. 
First up for the Wizard Apocalypse is going to be Formula Special. Now, Evil Weevil said that he would remain impartial. We'll see if he's able to keep doing that despite what just happened. He might want some revenge, but he's he's not supposed to do that. He's supposed to remain impartial. He may have evil in his name, but he's a pretty upstanding Weevil. And Formula Special, not doing anything too special there. Can't quite get under the Mercedes and hangs off the edge of the track. Baby Cookie is back and hops into the Shelby Cobra for Supernova. Ah! And the Shelby knocks two cars off the track. Formula Special manages to stay upright. And the Mercedes-Benz manages to flop over right side up. Baby Cookie is skittered across the ground. I think she's just fine. She's not going to be able to get any help from Troy this time. Because Troy and Jordy have both left to search for Tim, who disappeared in the last episode. So Baby Cookie is the only one going down in cars today. Here's a classic looking vehicle, Captain America. I think this is a, an old fuel truck. Captain America knocks out the Shelby. A nice decisive hit and the Shelby flips upside down and is done. And Captain America, that thing is locked on the track. It's not looking like a vehicle that I, is gonna be easy for anybody to get off of the track. And a green Scorpedo's up next for Sting Operation. Scorpedo slams into the back of Captain America and cannot get anything to happen there. Formula slides off the edge of the track and all is calm. Second vehicle to hit the track for Bloodlight is going to be the VW T1 panel bus. Look at how low the bumper is on this thing. Panel bus slides underneath Scorpedo. How did it get under Scorpedo and, and parts broke off? Was that from Scorpedo or the, the T1 bus? Let's take a look at Super Slow Mo. It actually looks like maybe that was off the back of Captain America. I think Scorpedo carved a couple chunks out of the back of Captain America. Now up for Wizard Apocalypse, it's gonna be Saturn Seeker. Saturn Seeker puts the Scorpedo on its back, flips it over Captain America. Nice little move there, and Scorpedo gets knocked senseless. And the first three cars on the track right now are going to be tough to move. Speaking of moving, this thing knows how to move. It's a 1970 Ford Escort. It's all souped up for Supernova. The Escort wallops the back of Saturn Seeker, but nobody's moving. Nice recovery there by Saturn Seeker, and the cars are still locked into the track. Up next for the Thunderlords, it's Spider Machine. This is actually a Spider-Man vehicle. Spider Machine assassinates that Ford Escort, smacks it up and pushes it off the track upside down. And now it's curbside actually, which could be bad. It's also starting to go under Saturn Seeker. So this ought to be interesting. Now up for Sting Operation, Dragon Tail. Dragon Tail tries to take out the Spider Machine, but Spider Machine makes an amazing recovery, a spin and a pivot and lands it. Not so much the same for Saturn Seeker, a little top heavy and can't quite hold on to stay upright. Some great action caused by Dragon Tail on that hit. Now here comes the Scion XB for Bloodlight. The Scion slides in behind Dragon Tail, doesn't cause any damage, but everybody is nicely packed up on the front of the track. Just in time for Wizard Apocalypse to send down Pipe and Hot. Pipe and Hot can't get any action, just loses his license plate. His license plate comes peeling off the back of the vehicle, just pops right off onto the track. Don't really need a license plate for Junkyard Joust. The only police you ever see around here are the uh, ones that are competing in the Joust, so not much to worry about. And Supernova have elected to send down Pro Stock Firebird. This thing's got some undercutting ability. Ooh, a nasty hit there from the Firebird, and Pipe and Hot is no longer hot. He's ice cold upside down. Great takedown there by the Firebird. Another Captain America vehicle for the Thunderlords. This thing is 102 grams, the Captain America bus. And it does some damage. The Scion is pushed over and topples. Firebird sitting on the side, safe for the moment. Super Stinger's gonna cause some trouble down there, I bet, for a sting operation. Super Stinger just gets the Firebird squeezed out and off the track safely. Taking a look at Skycam, you can see there's that license plate that came off of the now defunct Piping Hot. Here comes an interesting car for Bloodlight Slide Kick. This car looks a little like the Rev Rod to me. Let's see what it can do. Slide Kick tries to knock Super Stinger out. Flips him over, didn't even notice that when he did the first hit, and Super Stinger makes a great recovery, lands it, great stuff. Cool car for Wizard Apocalypse, now Shark Shifter. 
Bam! Slidekick is lofted off the track. Shark Shift did a great job, but Slidekick's looking pretty interesting right there. Pretty good recovery. I don't know if it's Rev Rod worthy, but it wasn't bad. Now up for Supernova, the Cheetah. Cheetah whomps the back of Shark Shifter, and look at this, another license plate goes loose. Pops off the back of Shark Shifter. I think they're gonna have to come up with some stronger screws to keep these things attached, or maybe just forget license plates completely. And here comes the Thunder Lord himself, Thor. Looks like he's got Mjolnir strapped to the front of his car. Ooh, the Cheetah is struck down by the power of Thor's mighty hammer. Cheetah goes tumbling over, and Slidekick looks fully recovered right there. Nice hit by Thor, and now Thor hovered over that detached license plate. Next up for Sting Operation, it's Bee Sting, and she's looking for some honey. And a nice hit by Bee Sting sends Shark Shifter off the track. Thor just turns around to face his opponent. Shark Shifter, I think maybe there's some lightning or something left over from Thor's hammer on the bottom of that thing. Man, that's bright. Another interesting car for Bloodlight, Roger Dodger. Roger Dodger knocks Thor off the track, but Thor, very agile, makes a nice recovery. It must be those wings. Beasting made it under Captain America's bus, though, and that thing is in trouble. Next up for the apocalypse, Evil Eye. Final car of round one. Evil Eye causes all kinds of things to happen. Roger Dodger tossed up in the air, makes a great recovery. I think the Scion just recovered. Captain America's bus flips over and is done. And Evil Eye, unfortunately, a great hit, but it ends with his own elimination. That's the end of the round. Taking a look at the wreckage. Not only 11 cars eliminated in this round, but also two license plates. 11 elims is about the average. Let's take a look at the aftermath. With the recovery of Scion, Bloodlight is looking good right now. No eliminations. Thunderlords are down two along with Sting Operation. Supernova is down three. And Wizard Apocalypse is down to one with four losses in that round. Here we go with round two. Bloodlight's going to start us off with the Scion. Lucky recovery last round. And this team is feeling pretty good about their situation right now but they can't afford to be cocky. We've seen some teams in these qualifiers have four left after round one and still get eliminated. Here comes Super Stinger. Ooh, Super Stinger causes Scion to bounce back off of his own car and flips upside down. And I hope I didn't jinx Bloodlight when I started talking about that, but uh, yeah, that on the Scion is definitively upside down right there. Here comes Thor again, gonna take that hammer to Super Stinger. Thor hurls himself under Super Stinger. There's a hit with the hammer, and then he dives underneath him, and Super Stinger is definitely in danger right there. Supernova is going to send down the Pro Stock Firebird. Firebird, nice hit, but they both make recoveries. Thor on the left and Super Stinger on the right. Great recoveries by both, despite getting undercut by the Firebird. The only remaining car of Wizard Apocalypse, Formula Special, gotta stay in this match. Formula Special, nice hit on the Firebird, snaps him off to the left, off the back of Evil Weevil, and then Formula locks into the track. Roger Dodger now for Bloodlight. Roger Dodger, big hit on the back of Formula Special, but not enough to get him off the track. Looks like it was enough to break something off, though. Wasn't the license plate this time. That is still solidly on there. Get ready for a deadly bee sting. Bee sting undercuts both vehicles on the track. Formula recovers. Roger Dodger does not. Almost makes it. So close, but can't quite topple over the right direction. Bee sting causing some good damage there. Captain America lost the bus, still got this big thing, 76 grams. And Captain America knocks Bee Sting and Evil Weevil both off the track, clears the way all the way up to the front. And now it's his track and his track alone. Here comes the Chevy Nova now, 56 grams. Let's see if he can do anything to Captain America. Chevy Nova just bounces harmlessly off the back of Captain America, can't move it. Bloodlight gonna go with the Volkswagen panel bus this time. Another thing that's difficult to get off the track. And a push into the Chevy Nova and all three of these heavy vehicles are locked into place. Nobody's budging. Dragon tail up now. Volkswagen pops that VW bus up in the air a little bit but can't get him off the track and now he's locked down there too. Here comes the spider machine. If anybody can get something going down there, it's gonna be this car. 
Spider Machine lofts Dragon Tail into the air, but Dragon Tail got those wings. He's used to being in the air. No problem on that recovery. Mercedes Benz is up next. 61 grams might be able to get something going on down there. Big hit, but Spider Machine is just knocked off the track. Again, a nice pivot and a recovery. Dragon Tail also making a great recovery right there. And now that Mercedes is curbside, so no damage on that hit. Bud Light had so many cars left, they gotta send down two in a row. Here comes Slide Kick. Ooh, Slide Kick takes out his own teammate. Mercedes toppled upside down. And Blood Light gotta be regretting the order that they sent those cars down in. Taking a look at Skycam, I've got bad news for Bloodlight. There were three eliminations in this round, and they were all Bloodlight. It's almost becoming a bit of a curse to have too many left after round one. None of the other teams lost any cars, and so we're going to round three. We're gonna start out round three with Captain America and this big old vehicle. If the Thunderlords make it to the main event, I'm gonna be really curious how this vehicle performs. With low bumpers on both ends, it's gonna be a nasty one to try to get off the track. Creature and Lamelt, take note. Another car that's been performing pretty well tonight, Dragon Tail. Dragon Tail makes a light bonk on the back of Captain America and slides backwards. And here comes the Chevy Nova again for Supernova. Chevy Nova slides into place. I saw a little action there. Captain America almost got undercut by Dragon Tail. That was a close one. But the Chevy couldn't provide quite enough force and speed to get underneath. And now here comes the VW again. VW can't get anything going. Dragon Tail buckles but won't break. And the Chevy Nova, same thing there. Nobody's moving. Wizard Apocalypse still got this one car. Formula Special gonna try to cause some trouble. Formula Special almost gets under, but can't keep it there. A little too bouncy in the shocks. And the Thunderlords are gonna try to take out Wizard Apocalypse right now with Spider Machine. Spider Machine pushes the formula up on top of the VW. It's a dangerous position to be in, but can't quite take him out. Looks like the undercutter of Spider Machine got wedged in between the license plate and the back of the car. Super Stinger now for a sting operation. Super Stinger tries to finish off Formula, but can't do it. Formula pops up, bounces off the top of that VW, and makes a nice bouncing recovery. Looks like Wizard Apocalypse are staying in this match. Pro Stock Firebird now for Supernova. This thing has been deadly so far this match. The Firebird cannot claim another victim. Super Stinger makes an incredible recovery. Flipped over multiple times and just bounces like it was not a problem. That is a quality recovery, and that car is an asset to that team. The slide kick proved valuable last round. Let's see if he can do it again. Little smack on the back of the Firebird tries to push it under Spider Machine, but can't do it. We got a long line of cars for this far into the match right now. It's time for Thor to bring the thunder. A quality bash from Thor gets underneath slide kick, but can't get him off the track. We got three cars ahead of Thor that are all in danger right here of being moved off the track. It's all going to be up to Beasting. Beasting's been doing some pretty good damage in this match. And Beasting sends slide kicks flying perfectly straight ahead down the track on top of Spider Machine. And that's the last car of the round. Slide Kick is not going to get a chance to recover from that, and I feel like he probably could have. More bad luck for Bloodlight. The only elimination, one of their cars again, they are just down to that Volkswagen. Right now, Thunderlords and Sting Operation are looking good. Supernova's got two, and Wizard Apocalypse and Bloodlight are now on equal footing with one vehicle up peace. We're gonna get right into round four with Dragon Tail for Sting Operation. Running order is up, Bloodlight going last this time. As Dragon Tail heads up to talk to Evil Weevil, maybe they're gonna have a little chat about what happened with Evil Weevil's sister. Let's see if Thor's hammer can do anything to Dragon Tail. Thor slams into the back of Dragon Tail, but Dragon Tail resists the hit and actually forces Thor off to the edge, curbside, and now Thor is in danger. That was a great rebuttal there from Dragon Tail. Firebird might have a chance to surprise Thor here. And the Firebird does exactly that, knocks both cars off the track, Thor sideways, Dragon Tail recovers, and look at this, the Firebird had to sacrifice itself to make that happen, got flipped over sideways. Still on the track though, the VW bus has a chance to finish that Firebird right now. And the VW actually helps the Firebird, lofts him off the left of the track, and he makes a recovery. 
So an unfortunate hit there by the VW, and the VW is now locked into place. Formula Special is going to take another shot. The Formula Special hits a wall, a big red wall, and flips upside down. Nasty. Wizard Apocalypse are in trouble. That is their only car in the match right now. If it doesn't get flipped back upright, they are done. Super Stinger's got a chance to decide the fate of Wizard Apocalypse right now. A stinging smash, and Super Stinger is flung off the right, upside down, off the back of that VW. Formula Special almost makes a complete recovery. The back of that VW has been devastating this round. Now Captain America's got to hit the back of that thing. Let's see what happens. Captain America, nice, solid punch, and locks it in, not going anywhere. We got two big, heavy vehicles up front now. We've seen this before. Here comes the Chevy Nova for Supernova. Chevy Nova, nice sliding hit, and everybody is locked up at the front. If we've learned one thing from this match, Bee Stings definitely hurt. Bee Stings starts to push the Nova off the back of Captain America, but can't quite follow through, and slowly but surely, the Chevy Nova recovers. Now Bee Stings gotta watch out. Here comes the Spider Machine. Spider Machine tries to take out Beasting, cannot do it, and that is the final car of this round. It looks like we've got two eliminations this time. Skycam showing us that Formula One somehow managed to stay alive. Thor is out underneath, and Super Stinger is done. Unbelievably, all five teams still in this. Thunderlords and Sting got two left apiece. Everybody else has one. Here we go, round five. Starting us off in what has been an epic qualifier, it's the Chevy Nova. Chevy Nova slotting nicely behind Evil Weevil, running order is up. And Thunderlord's gonna try to go Supernova to flame out right here with the Spider Machine. Spider Machine knocks that Nova for a loop, just tosses it off and flips it right over. A great job by Spider Machine, devastating hit. The Nova is out. And now Beasting's gonna try to throw a wrench in the works of Spider Machine. Beasting not able to make anything happen except get Evil Weevil off the track to safety. And now both those cars are locked up. Bloodlight's final entry in this match, the VW bus. I think something's gonna happen here. Bam! That bus knocks Beasting underneath Spider Machine. Spider Machine goes up and slowly but surely topples backwards. Still on the track, so a recovery is not out of the question. Five rounds in and Formula Special is still here. Formula Special splits all the cars apart. And will you look at that? Spider Machine makes the recovery and Beasting does as well. Good effort by the Special there, but it did not end in calamity. Firebird's gonna get another shot to take out Wizard Apocalypse here. Rock solid hit on the back of the Formula, but the takedown is prevented by the Special's low bumper. Let's see if the 76 grams of Captain America can do any damage. Captain America careens into the back of the Firebird and Formula Special sneaks off the track to safety, so no damage on that run. Final car of this round, Dragon Tail's gonna try to cause some more eliminations. Dragon Tail boots Captain America up underneath, but nobody's getting off the track and we are gonna go out of this round with just one elimination again. And still somehow, inexplicably, all five teams still in the match. Skycam showing us the damage. One by one, they're falling, but will it ever end? Now Supernova falls to one car. Sting and Thunder still got two. Everybody else is at one. Round six, that's not a round we get to very often in these qualifiers. Here comes Dragon Tail, first up for Sting Operation. Dragon Tail, same as last time, slots in, but not quite as close to Evil Weevil as last time, just a little bouncing back. Maybe they had a disagreement in the previous round. In any case, Captain America's coming down now to solve it. Captain America gets a nice solid hit, pushes everybody up to the front of the track, ready for action. Bloodlight's still in this with the VW, it's a hard thing to get off the track. BW gets a good hit on the back of Captain America. Dragon Tail gets knocked off, but as usual, Dragon Tail recovers. Supernova's got to keep the Prostock Firebird alive to stay in this match. Prostock Firebird locks it into place pretty nicely. Little danger on the edge there, but manages to stay on the track. Formula Special's going to take a crack at Prostock. 
Formula Special gets underneath the Prostock Firebird, and Prostock Firebird is upside down and off the track. A nasty hit there, and Wizard Apocalypse strikes a blow. We might have just lost our first team. Here comes Beasting. Beasting gets under the special, and special goes flying into the crates, but look at this, another recovery. That car just doesn't want to go. Tossed into the air, and what a great recovery. Beasting's a little far down the track. Spider Machine might have a shot at getting it right now. Spider Machine captures Beasting in his trap. Beasting flipped upside down off the track, and that was a nasty little hit from Spider Machine. Some good devastation in this round. We got two eliminations, a lot of flying cars, and one team is done. Aftermath shows it. Supernova is out of this competition. Thunderlords still have two left, and there are still four teams in this match, so we are going to round seven. Thunderlords are going to kick it off with Captain America in round seven. Whichever three teams make it out of this match, they are getting some great practice right now. When you go this many rounds, it's a good sign for all of these teams, and it's too bad that only three of them can move on. Bloodlight are second in the running order. Here they come with the BW Panel Bus. BW Panel Bus, what happened there? It went off the back of Captain America. Done that many, many times before. I don't know what was different. If you look close, it almost looks like Captain America bounces back a little bit just at the wrong time, and that VW is flipped. Tragedy on the track for Bloodlight. Dragon Tail up now. And boom! Captain America is on the rope. Somehow, Dragon Tail managed to get him up and over and almost off the track. That's the first time we've seen that happen to Captain America in this match. Great hit there by Dragon Tail. Formula Special's got a chance right now to take Sting Operation out of this match. And the special gets Dragon Tail up sideways on the edge of the track, and special is sideways. Oh my goodness, after very few eliminations in every round, now suddenly it is utter chaos. And the final car of this round, Spider Machine, is only going to add to the chaos. Here goes nothing. And bam, eliminations all round. Spider Machine does the trick, pivots like some sort of amazing dancer. And those two cars are done. The only team remaining on the track right now, unbelievably, it's the Thunderlords. They have devastated all that came before them. This has been an unusual qualifier to say the least. So the Thunderlords are moving on to the main event, but what are the other two teams that are moving on? Well, it's not Supernova, but the other three teams that remain have to go to the points board to see who had more cars left for more of the match. This means that Sting Operation is in with 42 total points and Bloodlight is in with 27 points. Wizard Apocalypse had too many eliminations early on and they are not going to move on, but I have a feeling they'll be back in some form in the near future. So after a wild match, these are your three teams that are going to move on to the main event. Main event coming very soon, and anybody hear that groaning sound? Something weird's going on out on the field. Wait a second, is that Tim? Driving a zombie monster truck? What is he doing? Looks like Tim is back from wherever he transported to in the last episode. Oh no, look at this. Tim is being chased by a horde of zombies. Oh, Tim, what have you done? Yes, that's a great idea, Tim. Run him over. Get him out of here. Oh, it's not working. Running him over is not working. Well, this is bad news, folks. We got the main event coming up very soon. I think we might have zombies on the field, unfortunately, while we're uh, doing that. Uh, everyone's going to have to take a couple extra safety precautions, but hopefully they won't interfere with the main event. In season two of Junkyard Joust, everyone feared Creature from the Black Lagoon, except for two cars, Lamelt and the Rev Rod. These two cars seem to have nine lives, but eventually Lamelt took out Rev Rod and only two remained. After multiple rounds and multiple insane recoveries, nobody was eliminated. The cars had to go no holds barred, and finally, Creature was able to take Lamelt down. Graveyard Smash walked away with the championship, but our top three teams from last season are back along with all the cars that qualified from the qualifiers to go at it again in the Junkyard Joust. Hi everybody, I'm Aaron Yanda and the first epic competition is ready to go. 10 teams are ready to compete. Only three will survive in this first heat of the Junkyard Joust main event. Let's take a look at our teams. 
First up is Amaranth, and this team survived their qualifier with four cars still remaining. They are gonna be a force to be reckoned with. Next up is Bloodlight. They proved they had staying power in an epic final qualifier. Heavy and boxy, the Devastation Wagons are difficult to get off the track. Long and with some serious undercutting power, Worthington Drabsters are a force to be reckoned with. This team is sponsored by the Worthington Library. Hot Pursuit is a team of fast, survivable vehicles. The Indigo Ice Picks are acrobats, and they have some undercutting ability. A team that almost nobody thought would make it out of the qualifiers nerfed the lightest team we've ever seen on the track. Propulsion's got a lot going for them with survivability, ramp, and undercutting. Rod Warriors are a team of light, agile cars. They see me Nolan placed third in last year's championship, and now they've got a new member, Jackhammer. If you support Junkyard Joust on our Patreon, there are a lot of rewards you can get, including a chance to sponsor cars, or you can just straight up sponsor a car, and I'm also going to be giving away prizes. Speaking of prizes, there will also be prizes for the winner of this season's betting that we have going on over in the Discord right now. It's all just for fun, link in the description. The rules are simple, survive. Every car has to drive down the track, smash into the rest of the cars, and if they end up upside down or sideways at the end of a round, they are eliminated. Any cars that are right side up at the end of the round move on to the next round. The match ends when only three teams have cars remaining in the competition. If you were watching last episode, you know there's one potential obstacle that the vehicles are also going to have to deal with this time, zombies. I don't know how he did it, but Tim the Toolman somehow opened a rift or something and brought zombies through to the track. Looks like he's doing his best to mop them up with that monster truck, but I'm not sure that's going to be enough. It's time to joust. Starting us off first is the Mongoose for Worthington Drabsters. Mongoose goes right underneath the track, Buffer, Evil Weevil, and just goes straight up to the front, bounces back. Looks like Mongoose is gonna be the track buffer now. You can see the order that the 10 teams are going down in, that order is randomly determined. Next up is the custom Cadillac Fleetwood, sponsored by Regal Radio. Custom Fleetwood piles into the cars and they begin to line up. First up for They See Me Rolling, sponsored by Stump's Tree Farm, it's Papa Wheelie. Nice hit there by Papa Wheelie. Almost topples off the left-hand side of the track, but manages to stick it. Next up for the Devastation Wagons is the Mercury Sable Wagon, sponsored by Liz's Wizard Arts and Witchcrafts. The Mercury Sable knocks Papa Wheelie off and just flips right over and is done. Papa Wheelie, nice recovery. A lot of people say that car is actually going down backwards, and they might be right, but it's been going down this way, so we're gonna stick with that. Uh-oh, looks like a zombie got on top of the Ford Crown Victoria for Hot Pursuit, sponsored by Hey Hey's Hatchback Hanger. And the zombie goes catapulting into the air as well as the Crown Ford Victoria. The Victoria is upside down up by the crates on top of that zombie. Hopefully that will take care of that problem, but unfortunately it also took care of the Victoria. First up for this unlikely team, Mean Squeeze for Nerfed, sponsored by Winnebago Trauma Clinic. Mean Squeeze leaps on top of the Fleetwood and just stays right there, parked. First up for Purpulsion, it's Pedal the Metal, sponsored by Deluxe Flame. And an eventful hit by Pedal to Metal there sends the Mean Squeeze flying over to the stone fence and he lands it and the custom Fleetwood not so much flipped upside down an aggressive hit there and Pedal to Metal actually loses a little bit of the top of its vehicle. Bloodlight's gonna send down the VWT1 panel bus sponsored by Ellis Wurtenberg. The panel bus takes it to the back of Pedal to Metal and tosses it overboard upside down, sending both bits flying. Panel bus is what got Bloodlight into the main event. Doing well so far. First up for the Rod Warriors, it's gonna be Two Jets, sponsored by Liz's Wizard Arts and Witchcrafts. Two Jets slams the back of that VW and can't get anywhere. Mongoose buckles a little bit, but stays steady. Oh boy, looks like a zombie has climbed into Let's Go for the Ice Picks, sponsored by Chome. And a slow hit there, not a whole lot happening. That zombie stays in the car somehow. Might take another hit to knock it out of there. These zombies are finding creative ways to escape Tim's wrath in that monster truck. Now up is the snake for Worthington Drapsters. The snake sends Let's Go and that zombie tumbling all over the place. Let's Go gets the better result, although barely managing to make a recovery. 
Zombie is toast, but Let's Go is teetering. Here comes Cruella DeVille for Amaranthin, sponsored by Sean and Patrick Hogan. Big hit from Cruella DeVille, knocks the skin off the snake and knocks it upside down too. No mercy there from Cruella at all. Next up for They See Me Rolling, it's Rising Heat, sponsored by Judy Collins. Rising Heat with that low front end cannot get under Cruella. Just a slight tap and a push and nothing really changed. Now coming down for Devastation Wagons, it's the Volvo 850 Estate, sponsored by Swedenborg Smorgasbord. Volvo gets a little action. Rising Heat is pushed off the track to safety. Two Jets is in danger. 85 Chevrolet Camaro now sponsored by Stump's Tree Farm. Camaro slams the back of that Volvo and uses it to push two jets off and upside down. And now the Camaro is in a little bit of danger. Not much danger because it's just Sasquatch coming down. Sponsored by Hendrika's Heavy Hauling. Sasquatch knocks the Camaro for a loop, but the Camaro makes a nice recovery. Not enough force there to knock him upside down. And now Sasquatch is locked in. Propulsion's gonna send down their ramped vehicle Too Cool, sponsored by Regal Radio. Nice slam from the big front end of Too Cool. Almost gets Sasquatch off the track. Almost loses his cool and gets off the track himself. But now it looks like that ramp is set up. First car to try out the ramp's gonna be Slide Kick, sponsored by Winnebago Trauma Clinic. Slide Kick goes sliding all the way almost to the crates and doesn't manage to land it. Bounces a bunch, goes upside down, and Sasquatch is also upside down. Couple of eliminations there, and now it's the Rod Warrior sending down Slider, sponsored by Hey Steve Productions. Slider does not take flight off the back of that ramp. Low front end manages to stop and almost pushes that Volvo off the track. That was a big hit. Next up is the GT Hunter, sponsored by Brendan Walsh. The Hunter slams into the back of Slider and unfortunately just rolls right over. Ice Pick's gotta be disappointed with that performance. Another long one for the Worthington Drabsters, the Fighting Irish. Fighting Irish knocks Slider off the track, flips GT Hunter over, but still upside down. Amarantha now with the 31 Doozy, sponsored by Whalen Enterprises International. The Doozy knocks the GT Hunter back upright and off the track. Maybe that was the GT Hunter's plan all along. If so, it was a good one. 77 Dodge Van now for They See Me Rolling. The Dodge slams into the back of the Doozy and Fighting Irish pushed off the track almost, not quite. Will that ramp come back into play though with Too Cool? Volvo P220 Amazon Estate sponsored by Wolfel Fiber Art. Big hit there, and it dislodges the fight in Irish, and Irish is pushed over sideways. Oof, another loss there for the Drabsters. 2016 BMW M2, sponsored by No Shenanigans. Good hit there by the BMW, manages to lock it in. Now it's time for a Lil Blast from Nerf, sponsored by Emo Dingo. That was a small blast indeed. Just a bounce and a knock all the way back. It's never really a good thing when your car gets put this far back on the track, makes you a target. Especially with an undercutter like this, Thunderstreak for Propulsion, sponsored by Sid from Cybertron. Utter devastation from Thunderstreak there. Lil Blast though somehow survives it and lands behind Thunderstreak on the track. BMW gets roasted and now the Volvo's coming off the track. Bloodlight gonna send down the Mercedes-Benz 300 SEL sponsored by Regal Radio. The Benz plows through half the cars on the track, tosses Thunderstreak off upside down. The Volvo survives and Lil Blast is definitely in danger right there. Big, big hit. Enforcer's up next, sponsored by Whalen Enterprises International. Enforcer does a light bonk on the back of the Mercedes and there's nowhere to go. Here comes Power Rocket, sponsored by Swedenborg Smorgasbord. Power Rocket knocks the Enforcer up and on top of the Dodge. Not a particularly safe place to be perched. We're back around to the Drabsters again. This time it's gonna be Flamin' Frank Pedregan's Fiat Coupe. Flamin' Frank knocks the Power Rocket off Almost right, Lil Squish, Sasquatch, I mean. It's a little hard to keep track of uh, the names of these nerfed cars, honestly. <laughs> Here comes a veteran car, the Mercedes 540K, sponsored by Sid from Cybertron. 
The Mercedes extinguishes Flaming Frank, puts it right upside down, knocks a piece off, and that's the end for that. And the other Mercedes on the track right now is perched precariously. Here comes the new entry for the Simi Roland Jackhammer. Let's see what he's got. Jackhammer slams into the back of the Mercedes, doesn't go off the back, which is good, and of course it slides a bit. Biggest entry on the Devastation Wagons Team 76 Buick Estate Wagon, sponsored by Hasty Productions. Smashes through a bunch of the cars, pushing them all around. I didn't see any definite eliminations there, but definitely some cars in danger right now from that big hit. Next up for Hot Pursuit, the Nissan Fair Lady Z, sponsored by Mr. Bobo. The Nissan punches the back of that wagon and knocks a couple cars, three cars in fact, definitively eliminated here, unless they somehow managed to roll over. That was a nasty hit. And here we've got the Squish car I was thinking of, Squish Coop, sponsored by Wolfel Fiber Art. Squish Coop, a nice gentle tap on the back of the Fair Lady. Next up it's Turbo Flame, sponsored by PriceX Private Parts. And Squish Coop goes flying into the air all the way down to the end of the crates. Can't even see if he landed right side up or not. That was a devastating hit. Flies all the way over to the fence and looking at the Skycam shot, makes an incredible recovery right over there by its own teammate. Next up, it's the Scion XB sponsored by Hendrika's Heavy Hauling. And that hit by the Scion causes a chain reaction, knocks the Mercedes off the track, but it is not out. Lakester now for the Rod Warriors, sponsored by TJG. Lakester slams into the Scion and then goes curbside. That doesn't always end well. Hydroplane is up for the Ice Pick, sponsored by Hendrika's Heavy Hauling. Hydroplane goes under the Lakester and Lakester gets tossed off to the side but manages to stay steady and make a recovery. And here comes the big one for the Drabsters, the Jocko Liner, 74 grams of undercutting power. Jocko flips the hydroplane all the way over all the cars, upside down, solid elimination there, and Turbo Flame gets boosted forward. Nine cars left in the round. Next up is gonna be Auburn 852, sponsored by Sloth Automotive Sachet and Buffet. Auburn gets a good hit on the Jocko Liner and continues to push the Jocko Liner under the cars, causing a lot of devastation, but it looks like most of the cars affected are still right side up here. Time for the now infamous Rev Rod to hit the track, sponsored by Judy Collins. Rev Rod gets the nice hit on the back of Auburn, puts him up on top of the Jocko Liner, and we just saw the Mercedes topple over, finally, sideways. Probably done. 67 VW 1600 Squareback, sponsored by Tim the Bear Neal. Squareback gets underneath Revrod, does a little pushing, and it looks like that Auburn might be in trouble there. VW Golf MK7, also sponsored by Tim the Bear Neal. The Golf goes flying upside down, kind of a comical hit there, but look at this. The Revrod was just pushed off the back of Jocko Liner and is upside down. Revrod, who was almost impossible to eliminate, currently upside down and maybe out of this competition. Unbelievable hit right there. X-Sponge now, sponsored by Stump's Tree Farm. X-Sponge, not much going on there. Actually kind of helps the square back just stay on the track better. Propulsion now with Tricera Truck, sponsored by Hendrika's Heavy Hauling. X Sponge is tossed off the track sideways, can't make a recovery like his compatriots, and Rev Rod still upside down. Roger Dodger's up for Bloodlight, sponsored by Stump's Tree Farm. The Dodger tries to knock Tricera Truck off the track, can't get him all the way up. Tricera Truck almost comes back down. Rip Rod up now, sponsored by Sloss Automotive Sachet and Buffet. Rip Rod slams Roger Dodger over several cars upside down. Aggressive hit there from Rip Rod. Final car of the round for the Ice Picks. It's Blue Shark, sponsored by Judy Collins. Blue Shark, a big hit there, but just knocks Rip Rod off over and right side up again. Tricera Truck just backs up and gets off the track, and it is not looking good for Rev Rod. There is no recovery there. This is unbelievable. This is quite the pileup going on. Taking a look at Skycam, there are going to be 22 eliminations in this round. That is a lot. Nearly half of the cars are out. Taking a look at the aftermath, Amaranthin and Devastation Wagon sitting pretty right now with only one loss apiece. 
Bloodlight and Hot Pursuit lost three each, and Ice Picks only lost two, which is not too bad. And the big story over here, Worthington Drabsters lost four. Only the Jocko liner left. All four of the other teams lost two each. And of course, Revrod was a loss for They See Me Rolling. The other team members are going to have to step up if they want to make it to the finals. Zombie update. Looks like we've got a couple on the track. I don't know exactly what they're doing, but uh, they aren't blocking the track. So I guess we're just going to go ahead and hopefully they'll just go away. Up first is Auburn 852 for Amaranthin. Running order is up. There you can see the randomized order of the cars. Teams are randomly arranged based on the number of vehicles they have left in competition. First up for the wagons is the Volvo 850 Estate. Good slam by the Volvo into the back of Auburn. Did go off the back of it. Evil Wheel gets tossed into the safety spot. They see me rolling, gotta tread carefully. Now they've lost their big one. Here comes the Dodge van. Snaps into place behind the Volvo. Auburn is curbside, or maybe just up on the safety rail. Probably gonna get propelled forward in the next hit. Rip Rod, only 30 grams of packs. A pretty good punch for the Rod Warriors. Big hit there, knocks the van askew. Little bit curbside, and uh, that's not a good position for the van. Nice hit. Propulsion gonna seize the moment, send down too cool. Try to get that ramp set up. And there it is, the ramp is set up. Great recovery by the Dodge van, a complete flip over. They see me rolling, are probably thinking we're gonna need more of that if we wanna stay in this match. GT Hunter had an amazing recovery last round. Let's see what they can do this time. And the Hunter takes the jump, but recovers. Nice jump there, bashes into the crates, uses them to his advantage and makes a recovery. Somehow these zombies remain unfazed by everything that's happening around them. Nerfed made it out of round one with three vehicles left. Here comes Sasquatch. And Sasquatch lightly takes the jump and doesn't take it well. It just slides upside down over by GT Hunter. Not a high likelihood of recovery over there. Chevy Camaro proved capable of taking a jump in the qualifiers. Let's see if they can do it here. And actually doesn't even take the jump. Pushes too cool off, somehow gets hooked on the back of the car. And now we've got three cars that are loose. This next hit could be a doozy. It's gonna be the VW panel bus for Bloodlight. Big hit here, 80 grams. Panel bus slams into the Camaro. Camaro goes off to the side, upside down. Too cool, makes a very cool recovery right there. Drives off. I think I know why Bloodlight sent down the panel bus. They knew Jocko Liner was coming down for the Drabster's only remaining car. They're hoping they get some protection. And not too good of protection there. Actually forces the van almost off the track. That thing is so heavy. Rip Rod is forced upside down. The T1 is in danger and Jocko Liner's coming apart. Amaranthan's got a chance to strike here with the Mercedes. The Mercedes sends Jocko Liner off the track. Jocko Liner rakes a recovery but loses part of his vehicle. Rip Rod is back on his feet and that VW is still on the edge. Here comes another Volvo for the Devastation Wagons. Volvo, good hit there, and look at that, the T1 is fine. Made her nice recovery. Now we got another Volvo up on the ropes here, pushed by his own teammate. We've seen some great moves from Papa Wheelie in the past. Let's see what happens this time. Papa Wheelie, big hit there. Can't get that Volvo upside down, and it slides off to almost safety. Slider now for Rod Warriors. Slider almost gets completely under Papa Wheelie, but somehow doesn't manage to force Papa Wheelie off the track. Up next for Propulsion, it's Tricera Truck. Tricera Truck shakes things up, and Papa Wheelie is sideways. No recovery at all right there. Slider makes a great recovery, though. 57 grams of Blue Shark coming down for the ice picks. Blue Shark pushes Tricera Truck and topples him. Sideways off the side, tries to take down that Volvo, but can't quite do it and slides backwards. Mean Squeeze now for Nerfed. Mean Squeeze gives a little nine gram bounce to Blue Shark and bounces back, not much to do there. Fair Lady now for Hot Pursuit, might make mince meat of Mean Squeeze. Fair Lady gets Mean Squeeze off the track, bounces off Blue Shark several times, and it's sideways right next to those zombies. They don't seem to notice. That's uh, another loss for Nerfed if they can't get that car out of there. Here comes the Scion XB. 
Scion boots the fair lady straight over a couple of the cars and upside down. That was a great takedown. And that car is probably out. Cruella de Vil now for Amaranthe. Straight shot into the back of Scion and nobody's moving right there. Cruella just locks it in. Square back next for the wagons. Squareback can't get any action either and just gets right behind Cruella next to those zombies. Rising Heat's up next for They See Me Rolling. Rising Heat tries to get under the Squareback and can't do it and also just locks it into place. The cars are getting backed up. Lakester gonna try to shake things up. Lakester can't get under Rising Heat and gets forced backwards way down the track. Often that's a vulnerable position, could be bad for Lakester. Turbo Flame's got an opportunity here. Turbo Flame gets the Lakester off the track, but doesn't end the Lakester. And Rising Heat is forced upside down, still on the track, so not over yet. Power Rocket for Ice Picks. This car's got some power and some undercutting. Ooh, powerful hit right there. Turbo Flame forced off the track. Rising Heat forced off, still upside down. And Lakester, okay on the right. The nerf team is in trouble. Squish Coop is their last hope. A light bounce into the back of Power Rocket, but Squish Coop is able to stay in position, so that's something. Final two cars of this round. Amaranth and 31 Doozy. 31 Doozy knocks Power Rocket and Squish Coop for a loop. Gets Power Rocket almost off the track, as well as Squish Coop. Squish Coop is getting the better of it at the moment. Final car of the round, the 76 Buick Estate, 75 grams of devastation. And a massive hit, and that is gonna end it for Nerfed as Squish Coop goes flopping all over the place upside down. Power Rocket is finished off. Just a huge hit there. Almost gets 31 Doozy off the track with that one, man. Taking a quick scan of the field, looks like we are down eight cars this round, and at least one zombie, Turbo Flame, maybe took out one of those. And it looks like we are gonna lose a couple of teams. Let's take a look at the aftermath. Hot Pursuit, not feeling so hot now. They are out of this competition. Ice Pigs are down an additional car. Bloodlight still got the two, and Amaranthan and Devastation Wagons are still at four. Unbelievable. And it's official, Nerfed is out of this competition as well. Worthington Drabster is still in this, and they see me rolling down to just the van. Propulsion and Rod Warrior still at three. Tim the Toolman started some sort of zombie apocalypse on the field, and now a zombie has hopped on Evil Weevil. Evil Weevil cannot be happy about that. Here comes the P220 Amazon for the Devastation Wagons. Running order up on the left. That zombie is annihilated immediately thanks to the Volvo for saving Evil Weevil right there. This is round three Devastation Wagons starting out with four vehicles in this round, as well as Amaranthan, who also have four. Cruella de Vil starting them off. Cruella immediately takes out one of the Devastation Wagons. That Volvo is upside down. Very unlikely it's gonna recover from that. Nasty hit from Cruella. Rod Warriors did pretty good in round one and two. They've got three left. Here comes Slider. Slider tries to punch Cruella off the track and can't get anywhere. And now Propulsion is going to send down Too Cool and try to set up the ramp. Big hit from Too Cool, but it doesn't dislodge anyone. And now they've got what they want. That ramp is set up. Too bad for Too Cool, though. Bloodlight is sending down the T1 panel bus. I don't think this thing's going off the jump. Nope, just a big meaty push right there and Too Cool is now curbside and in trouble. Up first for the Indigo Ice Picks is gonna be GT Hunter. They've got two cars left. GT Hunter pushes Too Cool off the track and Slider, Too Cool is upside down. Slider is sideways and still has a chance of recovery. We'll see what happens. GT Hunter bounces backwards. Final car for the Worthington Drabsters. The Jocko Liner can have some fun with the GT Hunter here, I think. And man, look at that. The GT Hunter flips upside down, which this car has done once before, gets on top and then flips over. That car is crafty. I think it likes being upside down on the track. They see me rolling stunned by the loss of Revrod and now they just have the Dodge Van. The Dodge Van makes a nice hit on the back of Jocko Liner. Tries to get under, but can't do it. That thing's got to stay alive. Heaviest car in the match right now, the Buick Estate from the Devastation Wagons. 
Buick Estate, a massive hit, pushes Jocko Liner off the Dodge van, under the Dodge flips over, and I saw something break off of the Jocko Liner. Taking a look at the slow-mo, yeah, a couple pieces got smashed off from that heavy hit, wow! Amaranth is gonna send down the Auburn next. The Auburn slams into the Buick and goes sideways. That car's so heavy, it forces the Auburn on its side. Dodge Van is still in danger here. Rip Rod's gonna try to shake things up for the Rod Warriors. Rip Rod slams into the Auburn, does the opposite of shakes things up, actually helps the Auburn recover. Next up, it's the Tricera truck for propulsion. Tricera truck slams a couple cars off the track. Rip Rod is sideways. The van is sideways and still on the track. A lot of action. Bloodlight sending down their second car, the Scion XB. Scion slams into the back of the pile, and now we've got some action. Auburn is upside down. Rip Rod is still sideways. The van is almost recovering. And here comes a car that's going to shake things up. It's Blue Shark for the Indigo Ice Picks. Blue Shark pushes through, and the van topples sideways. They See Me Rolling is probably out of this match, and more bad news. The Jocko Liner is upside down. Worthington Dragsters are almost certainly out of this match. We may have just lost two teams right there, folks. Volvo Estate for Devastation Wagons. Volvo slams into the back, not a whole lot happening. Rip Rod somehow made him a recovery on that last run. Time for the 31 doozy for Amaranthin. 31 doozy, a nice hit. Nothing going on, though. Rock solid line of cars. Here comes Lakester for the Warriors. Lakester, a nice hit there. Bounces off the back of 31 doozy and goes way down the track. That is not something you want to have happen. Turbo Flame could have an easy takedown right here. Turbo Flame slams into Lakester. Can't quite get him off the track. Lines it up. Let's see if Squareback can mess up that line of cars. Squareback pushes a little bit. Lakester is definitely in danger here. The top of Lakester's car is flipped open. We've seen the Mercedes shake things up before on the track. Got a feeling that's gonna happen again. The Mercedes knocks two cars off. Turbo Flame gets the best of it. Lakester is out. Tough loss for the Rod Warriors there. That was the last car of this round. We're going into round four, two teams less than before. Let's take a look at the aftermath. Amaranthin and Devastation Wagons each lost a car. They're getting down there. Bloodlight and Ice Picks didn't lose one. They both stayed at two. The big news is over here. They See Me Rolling is out. They had a little bit of bad luck with Revrod, their champion, and they're not going to be getting third place this year in the finals. Worthington Drabsters are also out. They made a good effort. Propulsion and Rod Warriors both stay at two. We've got six teams left as we head into round four. And the zombies have taken over the track. Evil Weevil nowhere to be seen, refusing to come onto the track. I guess we're gonna have to use zombies as the track buffer this time. Here comes the 31 dudes. He's gonna plow through these guys. 31 Doozy annihilates those zombies, most of them anyway. we still got one standing there by the edge of the track. Doozy almost comes off the track, but luckily doesn't and manages to take out those zombies. Thank you to the Doozy for doing that. Tim the Toolman really needs to get these zombies under control. This was all his fault. Second car for this round, the Volvo 850. The Volvo, a good hit on the Doozy, and the Doozy goes curbside after hitting that safety rail. Could be trouble. Here comes Turbo Flame. Turbo Flame slams into the Volvo and 31 Doozy bounces back but manages to stay stable and is doing pretty good. Here comes the T1 panel bus. I misspoke before. This is the heaviest vehicle on the track right now. Panel bus slides into place and pushes the Doozy off. The Volvo is now in trouble. Fresh off a miraculous recovery from last round, it's Rip Rod. Rip Rod punches the back of the T1 and the Volvo is tossed. It teeters and then falls on the doozy upside down. That could be an elimination for the wagons. GT Hunter now. GT Hunter pushes Rip Rod off the track and the zombie makes a swipe actually at the GT Hunter, but the car is way too fast for that zombie and it just falls over. Cruella DeVille now for Amaranthin. Cruella knocks that zombie off his feet on the ground and also knocks GT Hunter off the track, but GT is pretty good at these recoveries. And that takes care of the zombies for now. Squareback now for the wagons. 
Squareback lodges itself on the back of Cruella de Vil, but then goes curbside. This is a chance for Triceratruck to take advantage of that curbside wagon. Triceratruck bashes the wagon off the track, then goes flying off himself, but makes a good recovery. The Squareback is out. Devastation wagons have suddenly lost two cars. Bloodlight having good luck with the Cyan XB so far. Scion goes sideways off the back of Cruella de Vil. That is not a good thing. Turbo Flame goes up into the safety spot up front. Slider's gonna take a shot at the Scion. Powerful hit on the Scion, but look at this. Slider causes the Scion to go flipping through the air. It bounces into the crates and then topples back forward. What a recovery by the Scion. That could have ended badly. Amazing job. Blue Shark now for the Ice Picks. Blue Shark punishes Slider, knocks him in the back, and then flips him around. Couldn't even tell that happened, and Slider still somehow makes a recovery. And now here comes the Mercedes. Mercedes knocks Blue Shark off the track, but Blue Shark handles it wonderfully. And the two Amaranthan cars lined up back to back on the track, about to get a big hit from the final Devastation Wagon. The Buick's gotta be careful here. A massive hit from the Buick, but the line of cars holds. It was so solid it didn't even buckle, and that was the final car of round four. Taking a look at the actual devastation to the Devastation Wagons, they've lost two here. Nobody else lost a car. A team that was doing pretty well, and now they are down to just the one, the Buick. Nobody else lost any vehicles this round. We're going on to round five. And all is calm for the moment, although I do hear a loud truck roaring, maybe some, some honking. I don't know what's going on, but it's keeping the zombies off the field and attracted to whatever's making that noise. On with the joust. Amaranthans up first this round with the Mercedes. They've got three cars left. They're the current front runners of this match. Running order is up. Evil Weevil's back, free of the zombies. Gotta give Evil Weevil credit for continuing to work through a zombie apocalypse. Appreciate that. Triceratruck. Tricera truck a solid hit on the back of the Mercedes and a little bit of action there. Mercedes is curbside. This could be good. And when I say good, I mean good for the other teams. Blue Shark now for the ice picks. Blue Shark knocks Triceratruck off the back of Mercedes, which became a bit of a ramp there. And now Triceratruck is potentially out of this. Mercedes, however, is making sort of a recovery on top of Evil Weevil. Slider now. Slider lifts and removes Blue Shark off the track, but Blue Shark is not going over. Nice stability there. Here comes the panel bus. Panel bus slides into place behind Slider. Here comes a nice big hit from the Buick. Buick slams into the back of the T1, but the T1 is not moving, and neither is Slider. Triceratruck just sort of sinks more into elimination. The doozy next. Doozy smacks the back of the Buick, but can't get anything happening and goes curbside. Doozy's recovered from this position before. Let's see what happened when Turbo Flame makes the hit. Turbo Flame smacks the Doozy. The Doozy twists around and is fine. Turbo Flame almost completely turned around. GT Hunter's up now. GT Hunter pulls the classic trick, flips around after hitting the back of the Buick and goes upside down on the track. We've seen this before. We know what happens here. And Turbo Flame makes a great recovery. Let's see if the Rip Rod falls prey to the GT Hunter's tricks. Rip Rod smashes the GT Hunter in the back of the spoiler right there. And GT Hunter sideways now. Mm, that could be tough to recover from. Here comes the Scion. Scion smashes into the rip rod, sends it off the track, recovering. Look at the GT Hunter. That car likes to play dead, and then it always recovers after it gets knocked off the track. Unbelievable. Cruella DeVille's up now. Cruella's not getting any action on the track, and that is the final car of this round. We've just got one elimination, and it's for Propulsion. So round five ends with just one elimination. Propulsion and Devastation Wagons now each at one. And we are moving on to round six. Still no zombies on the field, thankfully. Cruella DeVille's gonna start us off now. Running order is up. Cruella has slotted into place. Rip Rod going second this time for the Rod Warriors. 
Riprod smacks off the back of Cruella and gets put sideways on the track. Opportunity for the T1 here. And the bus plows into the rip rod, but look at this. The rip rod goes flying over and over and over and, of course, makes a recovery. That car is looking pretty good right now. And here's the GT Hunter again. Let's see if he tries to play dead on the track. Indeed he does, but he doesn't manage to stay on the track. It's not playing dead if you're off the track and actually dead. A bad move by GT Hunter and not a whole lot of chance of recovery right here. Here comes the big one. The Buick slams into the back of the line of cars, but nobody's going anywhere. Turbo Flame now for propulsion. Turbo Flame can't get anything going. Bounces off of the back of the Buick. Here comes the Mercedes. The Mercedes knocks Turbo Flame off the track. A great hit. Turbo Flame tumbles and goes right side up. Great recovery there. GT Hunter. Oh, man, did you see that? GT Hunter almost made a recovery there, but couldn't quite do it. Slider's up now. Slider hits the Mercedes. Can't do a thing. The line of cars is too rough and tough. Scion's going to try to mess it up. Scion can't get any action either. This is a solid line of cars. If anyone can get some action, it's gonna be Blue Shark. Blue Shark almost gets the Scion off the track, flips him up, but can't quite get him to topple. Last car of the round is gonna be the 31 Doozy. Can the Doozy make something happen here? And that was a doozy of a hit. The Scion goes tumbling off the other side of the track. And that is going to end the Scion. Bloodlight is going to lose another car. That means we've got two more cars out of this match. No teams eliminated this round. Taking a look at the aftermath, Bloodlight and Ice Picks join all the other teams down at one car. Amaranth is still at three, and the Rod Warriors at two. Here we go, right away into round seven. Here comes the 31 doozy for Amaranthin. Amaranthin looking pretty solid right now. It's gonna be hard to eliminate all three of their cars if these teams wanna get them out of this match. Rod Warriors got two left, here comes Slider. Slider slams into the back of the doozy. Can't get anything going. Might need a little help from the Buick. Buick knocks the slider right off of the track, and the 31 Doozy is on the way, just teetering there. Here comes the T1 from Bloodlight, their final vehicle. T1 crashes into the Buick and forces the Doozy off the track. The Doozy flips upside down, and finally, Amaranthin looks like they might be losing a car here. It was starting to look like Amaranthin could do no wrong, but that's definitely going to be an elimination. Turbo Flame. Turbo Flame bounces off the T1 and goes back a little ways. Blue Shark's got three cars in front of him, a good opportunity to do some damage. And damage is what happens. Turbo Flame knocked off the track, recovers. Blue Shark knocks the T1 off the track almost all the way. It's teetering right there. This car from Bloodlight that didn't look like a vehicle that could get eliminated is now barely hanging on. And the Mercedes has a chance to take it out. Mercedes can't do it. Now Blue Shark is on the edge of the track. We've got two cars in danger. Even the Buick is up on its edge. This is a great opportunity for Rip Rod to cause massive damage. Rip Rod can't do it. Blue Shark recovers. The Buick comes off the track a little ways, but looks stable. The T1 looks very unstable. Final car of the round is Cruella DeVille. Can Cruella take out the T1? Cruella does it and more! Rip Rod goes flying upside down and doesn't make a recovery. That's two eliminated on that run. And that is gonna be the end of Bloodlight. Merciless hit there from Cruella, and we've got three cars eliminated in this round. All of a sudden, things are looking a lot more sparse. Bloodlight was hanging on at two for so long, but they are out of the match. Amaranthin still has two. Indigo Ice Picks down to one. And Devastation Wagon still at one. Propulsion and Rod Warriors also down to one. There's only one team with more than one car left. And we're rolling into round eight. This is insane. Eight rounds, and who knows when it's going to stop. We've still got five teams in this. And until that last round, eliminations had been pretty rare. Right now, everyone's gunning for Amaranthin, who still has two left. Blue Shark. 
Blue Shark knocks Cruella off the track. Not any other cars have really been able to do that. And they both go off, but Blue Shark is definitely in a safer position. Opportunity for the flame here. Turbo Flame massacres Cruella, and Cruella spins and flips and recovers. Impressive job right there. Slider is going to take a shot at Turbo Flame. Slider takes a shot but can't get anything going. Gets a little bit underneath, but nothing else. Now the Buick is the biggest car left on the track. And that was a massive hit. Two cars go flying. Turbo Flame does not recover. A car that looked like it could recover from anything teeters, but can't quite make it. And Slider makes a great recovery. We've got one elimination. This is already the final car of this round, the Mercedes. Mercedes almost gets the Buick off, but can't quite do it. Wow. So it looks like Turbo Flame is the sole elimination from this round, which means we've lost another team. And then there were four. If one more team gets eliminated, this match is over. Will round nine be the one? Amaranthin looking pretty good right now, Cruella. Cruella slots into place. And then here comes the Buick. Buick's got to be kind of careful here. The back of that car can be perilous. And the Buick knocks Cruella flying again, but we've seen it before. This car is very good at recovering. Doesn't even flip over, just lands it straight up. Slider's got a chance to take a shot at the Buick here. Slider smacks the Buick forward into Evil Weevil. Doesn't do anything else. Good hit. Blue Shark. Blue Shark slots into place. Doesn't do any damage. Unusual for Blue Shark. Now the Mercedes. Final car of the round already. The Mercedes makes a fatal error. Hits the back of Blue Shark and topples sideways. That is going to be an elimination for Amaranthin. Unbelievable. That was the only elimination that could have led to another round of this heat. Wow, four cars left, four teams. Amaranthin was doing really well, and now they are down to one car. A car that's been doing pretty great, but everybody's on an even keel right now. We are going into round 10. That sound we've been hearing off camera that's distracting the zombies becoming a little bit more frantic. And it looks like Tim the Tool Man has gotten stuck. He's been revving this monster truck to try to distract the zombies, doing a great job of it, but now his vehicle's overrun with zombies. It doesn't look good for Tim the Tool Man. Is there any way out of this for Tim? Will anyone save him? <laughs> Well, there's nothing we can do, so let's just continue the joust. This is a great distraction to keep those zombies off the field. Starting us off, it's going to be Blue Shark. Blue Shark sliding into place. Amaranth and Rod Warriors and Devastation Wagons are the order of this round. If any cars are eliminated at the end of this round, it's over. If multiple cars are eliminated, we are going to have to go to the points board to find out which of those teams will move on. Cruella knocks Blue Shark off. We've seen it before. Blue Shark has a way of getting knocked off the track in a really safe position. And Rod Warriors now got a chance to take a shot at Cruella. Slider smacks Cruella curbside. That could be bad. Cruella and Slider have to survive a big hit from the Buick right now. Final car of the round. And the Buick plows through both cars. Cruella is tossed upside down and Slider is tossed sideways. They are both out. This match is over, but which of those two teams is going to move on? An unbelievable upset right now. It looked like Amaranthin was invincible. Your two remaining cars are going to be Blue Shark and the Buick for the wagons. And Cruella and Slider both eliminated on that huge hit from the Buick. Well, this is definitely not what I would have predicted, but it's what happened. Taking a look at the points board, Amaranthin had more vehicles alive longer in the match, and they are going to move on. Don't give up yet if you're a Rod Warriors fan. One of our fourth place teams at the end of all three of these heats is going to get into the finals. It could be Rod Warriors. Top honors are going to the Indigo Ice Picks and the Devastation Wagons, but Amaranthin also moving on to the finals. We've got our first three teams. That was an epic competition, and I have a feeling that the next two heats are going to be crazy as well. 
Coming up next, the Emerald Undercurrent are gonna take to the track. They're back and they want the trophy. Who do you think's gonna make it in Heat 2? Leave a comment. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel. 10 teams and 50 cars are ready to battle it out in this dramatic competition. It's the Junkyard Joust. Hi everybody, I'm Aaron Yanda. We've got 10 really good teams and this is gonna be an amazing fight. Heat two is in effect. Here are your 10 teams. Let's take a look at our competitors. First up is this crafty and villainous team, Lokiverse, led by two versions of Loki. Dead and Gone's been looking pretty impressive this season, sponsored by Baldemouche. The Magic Kingdom, featuring a very large bus and a host of Disney characters. The Combustion Kings features a bunch of fast-moving vintage vehicles. This is Mind Control's second time in the main event, and they are ready to go farther this time. The Crimson Crashers have been around in various forms since the beginning, and they are back with an impressive team this time. Sting Operation has some agile vehicles, and they are fronted by Evil Weevil's sister. The Bonsai Boys are here, and they're ready to ride a wave of carnage. The Wafflers are a team of cars actually made of waffles. If you want the full story, there's a link to the video in the description. And finally, it's Emerald Undercurrent, sponsored by Rana Man. It's our second place champs from last season and they're back. They've got one new member of the team, the Gallant Eterna. The Undercurrent were so impressed with the Eterna's performance in season two, they decided to put this crazy wrecked car on the team. The rules are simple, survive. Every car has to drive down the track, smash into the rest of the cars, and if they end up upside down or sideways at the end of a round, they are eliminated. Any cars that are right side up at the end of the round move on to the next round. In the qualifier, the match ends when two teams have lost all their cars and the remaining three teams move on. If you missed it last heat, Tim was in trouble. Zombies were surrounding his truck. Now he's moved, but he's still surrounded by zombies. He needs help, and I think I know just who can help him in this predicament. It's Winnebago to the rescue. Ooh, a massive explosion of zombies all over the field, and unfortunately, Tim and his truck go flying. Tim somehow manages to stay in that monster truck, and uh, I think he's okay. Oh. I have no idea. Winnebago, decisive destruction right there. Zombies scattered all over the place. This will hopefully take care of the zombie problem, for the time being anyway. Should be safe now for Evil Weevil to take his place on the track. Evil Weevil provides a buffer between the first starting car and the end of the track. In this case, Ridiculous is going to be the first car, sponsored by Emo Dingo. Ridiculous slides into place, being made of waffles makes it a little hard to get all the way down to the end of the track, so Ridiculous is just going to be kind of a buffer for the next car, which is the Elvira Macabre Mobile, sponsored by Sloth's Automotive Sachet and Buffet. Elvira pushes all the cars down to the end of the track, and now we've got this event going in full swing. One of the two red skulls for Lokiverse is up first for them. Red Skull smashes into the back of Elvira. I heard, saw a chunk of something go flying. Could have been a waffle bit that was left on the track from when that waffle took a hit. Super Stinger's up first for the Sting Operation, sponsored by Sloth's Automotive Sachet and Buffet as well. Super Stinger takes out the first car of this match. Red Skull knocked on top of his skull, and Super Stinger is nicely locked in right there. And here comes Pongo the Dalmatian for Magic Kingdom, sponsored by Mr. Stratholm. Pongo slides underneath Super Stinger, but Super Stinger is too quick and gets right out of the way off the track into safety. The one and only Lamelt is up next for the undercurrent. Lamelt takes out Ridiculous with a little slide and a knock, and Ridiculous goes upside down. Lamelt's got that low back end, but the Iron Golem is putting down the forks and gonna give it a shot, try to loft him off the track. It does not work. Well, it did actually get Lamel off the track, but the Iron Golem then flips over all over the place and goes sideways. And uh, yeah, that didn't really help out Mind Control too much. Crimson Crashes with their all new lineup, starting off the Porsche 930. The Porsche slides underneath Pongo, starts to lift and will probably remove on the next hit. One of the better entries on the Bonsai Boys, it's Backdraft, sponsored by Regal Radio. Backdraft pops Pongo up to the front of the track by the crates. Pongo flips, looks like he's gonna be okay, and then he rolls over and plays dead. 
First up for the Combustion Kings, the Datsun 128X. The Datsun speeds into all the cars. The Elvira Mobile gets knocked up in the air, but makes a great landing. And the Porsche gets bounced around, but manages to stay upright. People were skeptical that a team of waffle vehicles would make it into the main event, but they sure did. Here comes Flapjack, sponsored by Ellis Wartenberger. And Flapjack just lands down right behind the Datsun and parks. Despite that light little tap, still lost a little chunk of waffle there. 55 Chevy Nomads up for dead and gone, sponsored by Mr. Stratholm. The Nomad knocks a chunk out of Flapjack, goes flying up into the air, actually multiple chunks, and uh, here's a slow motion look at the biggest chunk getting blown off right there. Nova took a little bite out of Flapjack, but Flapjack is still right side up, and that's all that matters. Here comes Loki for the Loki verse, sponsored by Liz's Wizard Arts and Witchcrafts. Ooh, massive damage there from Loki. That is a fast-moving vehicle. The Nomad is tossed upside down. Flapjack's upside down. Only Backdraft managed to survive that hit. Here comes Scorpedo for Sting Operation, sponsored by Ellie's Hop Shop. Scorpedo plonks pretty harmlessly into the back of Loki, but I'm seeing a lot of chunks of waffle flying everywhere. Dory's up now for Magic Kingdom. Dory smacks into Scorpedo, tries to push Scorpedo up, but can't manage to do it. Salt Shaker's up now for Emerald Undercurrent. Salt Shaker hits Dory off the track. Dory sent sideways, and um, it's iffy. Dory might be in a position that would count as still in, but it's unlikely. Now it's time for the Spider for Mind Control, sponsored by Jedi. Spider smashes into Scorpedo and Salt Shaker. Scorpedo gets the worst of it, and Loki is pushed off to the side. Up for the Crashers, it's the 674 GT40 Mark IV. The Mark IV can't get under the back of Spider and pops Salt Shaker up in the air. Salt Shaker makes a recovery. And now for the Bonsai Boys, it's Surfboarder, sponsored by Sid from Cybertron. Surfboarder pops the Ford up in the air. The Ford balances on the back of Spider like he's gonna stay there, but then falls over sideways. Sixy Beast up now for the Kings. Sixy Beast gets under Surfboarder, and Surfboarder's flipped upside down, thrown onto the back of Spider, and now Sixy Beast is curbside. And now here comes Hot Cake for the Wafflers, sponsored by Stump Tree Farm. Hotcake slides rather ineffectually into the back of Sexy Beast and then goes curbside itself. I don't think Hotcakes is going to be feeling good after this hit from the Hot Rod Hearse, sponsored by Raygull Radio. And there's waffles everywhere from that massive hit from the hearse. Somehow Hotcakes survives after losing a lot of the vehicle itself. Sexy Beast spins around and makes a recovery. And now it's time for the Bully Goat Red Skull, sponsored by Whalen Enterprises International. Bully Goat smacks into the back of the hearse, and we got a little bit of action, but nothing major. It looks like the Ford is for sure upside down, and Bully Goat is curbside. Beasting now for the operation, sponsored by Judy Collins. Beasting gets right under Red Skull, and Red Skull goes lofting into the air and is upside down over on top of Hotcakes. A nice hit there from Beasting. Next up, it's Mike Wazowski from Magic Kingdom, sponsored by Ellis Wardenberger. Wazowski gets under Beasting, and Beasting goes flying, but makes an amazing recovery. Not too bad at all right there. And Wazowski is curbside now. When you hear the sound of the buzzsaw, you know it's Berserk for the undercurrent. Berserk slices into Mike Wazowski, and Wazowski makes a crazy recovery, and Buzzerk now is upside down. Maybe his blade got caught up in the back of Wazowski. I don't know what happened there, but that did not work out. And Baby Cookie is back in the minecart for Mind Control, sponsored by Wayland Enterprises International. I gotta go. Solid hit from the minecart, and Buzzerk is just whomped over to the side upside down. Didn't know what hit him. Crimson sending down the Praetorian Guard now. The guard hits the back of the minecart, and it's just bounced back by it. Nothing going on right there. Bonsai Boys are sending down Bonsai Boys, appropriately enough, sponsored by Hendrico's Heavy Hauling. Bonsai Boys should have done a little work on this car. It doesn't really fit on the track. It's riding the rail, so uh, it doesn't do a whole lot of damage right there. Here comes Tire Fryer with that big engine in back. 
Ooh, nice hit there from Tire Fryer. Fast moving car and Bonsai Boy skim over the top of Baby Cookie in that mine cart and go upside down. Next up for the Wafflers, it's Craper, sponsored by Winnebago Trauma Clinic. Craper does nothing, just slides into place as most of these waffle cars do. They are not a very aggressive team. I think this car will probably make up for that with the undercutting ability. Jack Skellington, sponsored by Wolf of Fiber Art. Jack smacks the tire fryer, and look at that. Tire fryer recovers and flips over. Waffle chunks flying everywhere, not surprised about that. Oh, there are a lot of chunks coming off of that waffle car, wow. Ultron's up now, sponsored by Mr. Strathol. Ultron slams Jack Skellington over the back of Kraper and off the track. Jack Skellington's looking pretty safe right about now. Here comes Dragon Tail, sponsored by Whalen Enterprises International. And Ultron takes flight, is knocked skyward, and goes upside down. A nasty hit there from Dragon Tail also takes out Kraper. That's two cars removed from this match by that one. Get ready for the big hit MCI bus, sponsored by Liz's Wizard Arts and Witchcrafts. Utter destruction from the MCI bus. Three cars go flying all over the place. Somehow, Baby Cookie in the minecart makes a spinning and incredible recovery. Look at that thing go. And then it looks like the Praetorian may have survived, but Dragon Tail is out. Eye Candy's up now for the undercurrent. Ooh, Eye Candy bounces pretty harmlessly off the back of that bus and now is in a precarious position. Right for the pickin' for Ocelot from Mind Control, sponsored by Hey Hey's Hatchback Hanger. And that is exactly what happened. Ocelot picked Eye Candy up, threw him upside down, and now Ocelot is upside down on the track. As we've seen before, though, that's not always the end. Get ready for another big hit. The Fleet Flyer with the secret weapon Porsche in the back's coming down. Ocelot is tossed all over the place and somehow after all that makes a recovery and now the fleet flyer is leaning to the left. That is not what they wanted with that vehicle. It's supposed to be stable. Secret weapon does not deploy. 64 Oldsmobile Vista Cruiser is up next. The cruiser just bounces off the ramp on the fleet flyer and flips over, but does somehow manage to recover. Here comes Hellraiser now for the Combustion Kings. Hellraiser doesn't raise too much hell that time. Just pushes the Oldsmobile on top of some zombies and starts to drive into the back of the Fleet Flyer. Here comes the big one, if you can call it that, for the Wafflers, Blintz, sponsored by Wolf of Fiber Art. Blintz does nothing. Not a huge surprise, but it's about to get a huge surprise. Dead and Gone are sending down the 57 Bel Air, 111 grams, sponsored by Swedenborg Smorgasbord. Bam! Waffle Massacre right there. Waffles are sprayed all over the track, and uh, that vehicle does not survive. And somehow, the Bel Air starts to go under the Fleet Flyer. Under the Fleet Flyer and under Hellraiser. Chance to do some damage here for the Scupa de Fuego Loki, sponsored by Ellis Wurtenberger. And Loki can't do a whole lot there, just bounces off the back of that really heavy vehicle. Evil Weevil represent, it's Evil Weevil's sister, sponsored by TJG. Evil Weevil's sister pops Loki off the track. Loki makes a great recovery, and now Evil Weevil's in position. Next up for the Magic Kingdom, it's Stitch, sponsored by Steven and Kath. We just got engaged, actually. Congrats to both of you. Stitch assassinates Evil Weevil's sister, just goes right underneath and bounces Evil Weevil off the track. I'm still seeing waffles going all over the place. I think that's what they are. Actually, taking a closer look, I think that might have been chunks of Stitch's car coming off on Evil Weevil. So some damage going right there. Speaking of damage, it's the Gallant Eterna. Look at this thing. Gallant Eterna takes Stitch right down. After all that damage, doesn't matter. Stitch is done, and the Gallant is poised on the back of the Bel Air. Here comes a big vehicle for mind control. It's the Redstone Monstrosity, sponsored by Sloth's Automotive Sachet and Buffet. The Redstone Monstrosity goes flying off the back of the Gallant. The Gallant taking him down just by being stuck there on the track like that. Not doing the damage that mind control hoped. Here comes a nice undercutter for the Crimson Crashers, Animal. 
animal boots the Galant to turn her up and off Hellraiser, and the Galant refuses to go over and purchase there. This car is a veteran for a reason. It's been through this before, and it knows how to handle itself. Surf's up now for the Bonsai Boys, sponsored by Wolf of Fiber Art. Ooh, nowhere to go on that hit, and Surf's up, trips and falls over. Animal, meanwhile, is knocked upside down. Both of these cars are in peril. And our final car of the round is about to come down for the Combustion Kings, Tanzara. Tanzara takes a massive jump off of Animal. I don't even know how that worked, but rights surf up in the process and then lands with the back open right side up. What a great way to end round one with that amazing hit. We've got a mess of zombies and vehicles all over the field right now. 24 eliminations in total. That does not include the zombies. It looks like no teams have been eliminated yet. Let's take a look at the aftermath. Every team on this page has lost two except for the Combustion Kings who have lost no one. An amazing round for the Combustion Kings. They're gonna go into round two feeling good. Over here we've got some major eliminations. The Wafflers lost four, Loki and Sting lost three apiece, Mind Control lost two, and Magic Kingdom lost three. Combustion Kings will start us off. Not a single loss in this round. Dotson is gonna hit the road first. Running order is up, randomly determined, of course, as the Dotson slides into place. Dengon had a pretty good first round. They're sending down the Elvira Macabmobile. Elvira smashes into the back of the Dotson, knocks the trunk open, and almost manages to get that thing off the track. And surfs up now for Bonsai Boys. Surfs up, knocks that Dotson off the track. The Dotson makes an impressive pivot and recovers. Good job there. Combustion Kings continue to impress. Spider now for the control. And we've got a wipeout. Surfs up is off and sideways off the field. Unfortunately, Spider balances on the edge of the track and can't quite make it. If he doesn't make a recovery, that's a big loss for Mind Control. That is the one returning vehicle from Season 2 on their team. Porsche 930 now for the Crashers. That car's front tires don't look like they work too good. Probably would be even a faster car if those front tires worked, and it looks like Spider is even more in trouble now. Completely upside down as Porsche takes its position. Salt Shaker gonna try to mix things up. Salt Shaker takes the Porsche out, upside down on the track. Still a chance of recovery there, and bad news for my control, Spider is probably done. Here comes the quick moving Loki for Loki-verse. Loki speeds into Salt Shaker. Look at this. The Porsche makes a recovery from that hit and perches somehow on top of Spider. Just lands right on top of him. It's not a great position to be in, but it's right side up. Salt Shaker also right side up. And now Bee Sting is going to cause some trouble. Bee Sting annihilates Loki. Loki goes flying over, hits the crates, and bonks in the front of his car into the crates and can't recover. Nasty hit there from Bee Sting. Looks like she actually knocked a chunk of Loki off. And here comes Mike Wazowski for the Magic Kingdom. Wazowski slams into Bee Sting and flips over. Not off the track, so not all is lost. Bee Sting also knocked over and upside down over at the end of the track. The final remaining car for the Waffler is Hot Cake. This car needs to stay alive to give this team a chance. And it slides into place. Nothing dangerous about that move. Just getting buttered up for the next hit. Hellraiser now for the Combustion King's gonna hit that Waffle car. Hellraiser surprisingly doesn't raise that much hell. Kind of slides into position. And Wazowski looks like he's in trouble. Looks like also there was a lot of waffle flying all over the field. Not surprising. Slightly bigger hit coming down the track from the Hot Rod Hearst. 95 grams. Hot Rod Hearst, big hit. And oh no, Elvira Macabmobile gets flipped over. Hot Rod Hearst's own teammate. And look at the Porsche make that recovery from on top of Spider. That Porsche has had quite an adventure to get over to that side of the field. Here comes the Oldsmobile for Bonsai Boys. Oldsmobile smacks the hearse up, and it looks like the Hellraiser got flipped upside down. We might be seeing our first loss for Combustion Kings. Good hit by the Vista. Ocelot made an amazing recovery last round from Mind Control. 
Ocelot takes out the Oldsmobile, tosses it over the hearse upside down, and it is probably done right there, sideways with the surfboards on the ground. Victorian Guard now for the Crashers. Victorian Guard, a nice hit on the Ocelot, but that car refuses to get tossed upside down. And now uh, Praetorian Guard's going underneath the Hot Rod Earth. The Gallant Eterna made it out of round one with no problems. The Gallant pounds into the back of the Praetorian Guard and bounces a bunch on the back wheels, but doesn't manage to get any action. Here comes the second Loki for Loki-verse. Let's hope that this one has better luck. Pretty solid hit there from Loki, but it's still unable to get that Hot Rod Hearse up. And somehow Hot Cakes is still hanging on up there. Next up, it's gonna be the Super Stinger. Super Stinger gets a lot of action on the track, but can't get any eliminations. Loki manages to get out of the way, and the Gallant escapes. And boy, was it a good time to escape. Here comes the MCI bus. MCI bus sends a couple cars up into the air. Super Stinger, Hot Rod Hearse goes flying up in the air. I don't think I've ever seen that before, and that thing is sideways. Super Stinger is upside down, and the second Loki is also eliminated. And way up at the front there, Hot Cakes is not in a good position. Next up, it's Tire Fryer. A massive amount of damage just happened down on the track. Tire Fryer also gets damaged by hitting the back of that bus and flipping upside down. Combustion Kings are seeing another potential elimination right here. This bus is really causing some trouble. Another big car coming down the track, 111 grams of Bel Air. The Bel Air slams into the back of the bus, and that looks like it might be it for the Praetorian Guard. And look at this beasting just recovered up at the front of the pack. Did you see that? Here comes Backdraft now for the boys. Backdraft bounces somewhat harmlessly off the back of the Bel Air. Not a whole lot of action on that one, but we've been seeing plenty of action so far. Here comes Minecart. Minecart with Cookie in it makes a nice hit on Backdraft. Backdraft is curbside. And now another big hit for the Crimson Crashers. Fleet Flyer with the Porsche. And Fleet Flyer, they have decided not to release that secret weapon. According to the rules established earlier this season, if that secret weapon is deployed and separates from the vehicle, it is out at the end of the round. And I think that's why they're maybe waiting for a smarter moment than when Lamelt's coming down the track to release that secret weapon. Lamelt probably would have went right under it. Instead, Lamelt goes and drives into the back of the Fleet Flyer. And I'm getting the feeling there's some strategy employed here by Crimson Crashers, because look at what they've created around off the back of Lamelt. Let's find out if it's gonna work. Sixty Beast is up now for the Kings. Sixty Beast goes off the back of Lamelt, and what a ramp! And what a jump! Skids along the top of the bus, and I couldn't even see what happened, but it doesn't look good. I see a little bit Sixty Beast poking out there sideways. That is gonna be a casualty. This jump is bad, but only bad for the Combustion Kings because they had two cards left to go. Tanzara now. Tanzara launches off Lamelt, actually knocks Lamelt back. Tanzara flips and turns, and then right at the very end, can't quite make the recovery. Looked like he might have got a little hung up on the cab of Fleet Flyer. And Combustion Kings have been devastated in this round. We've been seeing a little bit of a curse this season with teams that do really well in the first round or two. They often end up in trouble later on in the match. Let's take a look at our aftermath. And yeah, Combustion Kings lost four cars in that round. Bonsai Boys are out. They lost everything. Crimson Dead and Gone lost one apiece, and Emerald lost none. And look at this. We are going to lose three teams in round two. Loki and the Wafflers are done. Mind Control hangs on with two. Sting Operation and Magic Kingdom down to one each. Just that bus for Magic Kingdom. Season 1 champion Lamelt's gonna start us off for Emerald Undercurrent. Lamelt having no mercy, ready to massacre some more cars. Running order is up for the remaining seven teams. Order. And Baby Cookie in the minecart's gonna test her metal against Lamelt for mind control. What's wrong with you? Cookie rams into the back of Lamelt and flips forward, somehow managing not to come out of the cart. The minecart's made some exceptional recovery so far in this match. 
Crimson Crasher's gonna send down the Porsche. They've just got two left. The Porsche slams into the minecart. The minecart locks it in behind Lamelt. That minecart may have neutralized Lamelt's back fin. Dead and Gone just has the two heaviest vehicles on their team left. Here comes the Hot Rod Hearse. Hot Rod Hearse forces the minecart and the Porsche over Lamelt and then gets hung up right on there. And on the next hit, I think the Hot Rod Hearse is going over Lamelt too, because it's the big one for Magic Kingdom. The MCI bus, the last vehicle they've got. They have to survive this. The bus heaves all its weight into the Hot Rod Hearse and pushes it up against the crates. The Porsche makes an amazing recovery, and Baby Cookie's just sitting there underneath the hearse, looking good. The bus is looking a little precarious, though, perched on the mount like that. Bee Sting's gonna take a shot at that bus. Let's see what happens. And a quick womp on the back of the bus pushes it up a little bit higher, but then bounces way back. Bee Sting is now sideways on the track. Combustion Kings had some good luck, some bad luck, and now they just got the Dotson left. Dotson's gotta stay alive. The Dotson tries to take Bee Sting out, and Bee Sting is not having it. Bouncing all over the place and making a great recovery, and the bus gets pushed up even farther. This won't end well, I suspect. Emerald Undercurrent is leading the event right now. Here comes Salt Shaker. Salt Shaker almost takes out the bus and the Dotson, but somehow neither of them are out. But they are both not in a good position right here. This could be bad for both of them. Ocelot's got a chance to do some damage here for mind control. Ocelot smacks into Salt Shaker. Salt Shaker bounces off the bus and recovers. The Dotson has been eliminated. The Combustion Kings have been put down. Crimson Crashers have been saving their secret weapon. Let's see if they release it this time. The Fleet Flyer slams into Ocelot and the bus. Ocelot's fine. The bus is not doing well. Slips and slides on Lamelt and is nearly sideways all the way. Here comes a big hit from the 57 Bel Air for Dead and Gone. 57 Bel Air slams the Fleet Flyer. No secret weapon to worry about at the moment. And now the Bel Air is curbside. Emerald Undercurrent's gonna send down their newest member, the Gallant Eterna. The Gallant tries to push the Bel Air, but there's something in the way. It's the Fleet Flyer. So nothing much happens on that hit. And that was the final car of round three. And it looks like we might have just lost two teams. That bus is looking pretty well sideways. And we've also lost the Dotson. Cookie's still hiding there underneath the hot rod hearse. Taking a look at the aftermath. Crimson, Dead and Gone, and Emerald all remain steady. Combustion is out. Magic Kingdom is out. Mind Control got two, and Sting Operation still got one. We've got five teams in this. Things are starting to heat up. If you've ever considered becoming a patron of Junkyard Joust, now is the time. I'm currently considering building a post-apocalyptic set. You can see I've got the background set up and I just need to make the track and the set. If I get nine new patrons and I'm up to 60 patrons by the end of January, I am going to start building this thing. And I'll start doing Junkyard Joust post-apocalypse with custom post-apocalypse cars. If you would like to bet for fun on the Junkyard Joust matches, check out the Junkyard Joust betting thread on our Discord. Whoever wins the betting is gonna get this exclusive Hot Wheels Collector Jeep, and I'm also giving away other prizes for second and third. The links for all this stuff is in the description of the video. Let's get back to the action. Lamel is going down first again for the undercurrent. No mercy. Lamel slips underneath Evil Weevil. Den Gone are showing no fear of Lamelt right here, sending down the 57 Bel Air. The Bel Air smacks into the back of Lamelt, knocks Evil Weevil off the track, and doesn't go off the back of Lamelt. Yet, anyway. A lot of big vehicles still left in this match. Fleet Flyer's up now. And Fleet Flyer has dispersed the secret weapon. It's the Porsche 962, and now we've got a ramp on the track. Cookie's ready to take it on in the minecart. You dumbass! Minecart doesn't go off the ramp, pushes it back into the truck, and then flips over forward. And the minecart is the perfect shape just to sort of sit there. I don't think it's gonna stay like that. Let's see what happens when Bee Sting hits the back of that minecart. 
Bee Sting boots Cookie off the track, and that minecart makes a great recovery. I think Cookie might have banged her head there, but she's fine. Ah. And we're back around the roster already for Salt Shaker. Salt Shaker knocks Bee Sting off the track, and Bee Sting is now safe. No elimination so far yet this round. Hot Rod Hearse. Hot Rod Hearst gets that first elimination. Salt Shaker goes flying off the track and just takes a bad bounce and is upside down. Secret Weapon almost comes back out, but it's on the hood of the Hot Rod Hearst. Here comes another Porsche, the 930. The Porsche pushes into the Hot Rod Hearst, but can't get much else going. Time for Ocelot. Ocelot a big hit and it knocks Porsche off. Almost knocks the hearse out, but nobody is eliminated. Final car of round four is gonna be the Gallant again. The Gallant piles into Ocelot and the Hot Rod hearse goes tumbling and takes a bad bounce off the minecart and goes sideways. The hearse got hung up on the corner of that minecart. Would have been fine, but the minecart just ended the hearse in combination with the Gallant. So it looks like we're gonna lose a couple cars this round, but we're still gonna have five teams in the mix. Let's take a look at the aftermath. Crimson still got two, Dead and Gone are down to just the Bel Air, and Emerald lost one and are down to two. Over here, Mind Control still have two, and Sting Operations still have one. Everything's getting a little bit more equal now. Here we go with round five. It's the Fleet Flyer up first. No more secret weapon in the back of that thing. Fleet Flyer deployed it, and so now it's considered out. Running order is up. Still got that ramp made out of the gate of the truck in the back. That could cause some problems. Lamelt doesn't get to go down first this time, going down after Fleet Flyer. Let's see how that changes things up. And Lamelt tries to drive into the back of the truck. Maybe a little big, and now look at what we got. That is potentially a devastating ramp right there. A ramp to nowhere. Cookie, as usual, is going to be brave and take the plunge. I am the devil! The minecart smashes into the back of the fleet flyer and stays on the track, balances on the back of that ramp, and now we're going to see some action when Beasting hits the track. Beasting pops Cookie and the minecart off the track, and it is basically right side up. Good recovery there. Beasting is going off to the left a little bit, looking a little vulnerable to me. Oh yeah, here comes the Bel Air. This is gonna mix things up seriously. Bel Air pops Beasting, flying into the air. Look at that thing go, and then somehow it manages to turn over upright after multiple hits and bounces. That was an amazing recovery. Porsche is up now. Porsche hits the back of the Bel Air. Can't really do a whole lot except bounce off. And here comes that Gallant again. The Gallant knocks the Porsche off the track, sits there and bounces a little bit and manages to force it over upside down and not enough force to get right side up again. That was a great hit by the Gallant. Final car of the round this time is gonna be the Ocelot. Ocelot tries to take down the Gallant, but look at that, the Gallant just flips over and is not having it. Almost writes the Porsche, but then actually puts it more upside down. Taking a look at Skycam, well, as you can see, just that Porsche is out. No teams eliminated yet again in this round. Taking a look at the aftermath, Crimson is down to one. Teams with two are just Emerald Undercurrent and Mind Control right now. As we head into round six. Unbelievable. Round six, we still got five teams left. Lamelt got luck of the draw. Emerald Undercurrent going first, and Lamelt takes his customary place underneath Evil Weevil. Minecart for mind control. Minecart knocked Evil Weevil off of Lamelt. Lamelt comes out from that hiding spot, and the minecart flips forward again. Worked out fine last time. Beasting. Beasting Sting hurls Cookie and the cart off the track, and look at that, after flipping all over the place, it lands flawlessly. That was an incredible recovery. Look at that thing just sort of skitter all over the place, and then land it. And I think the minecart got off the track just in time, because now it's a Bel Air. 
Bel Air knocks the back of Lamelt into Beasting. Beasting slides up to the front. That looks pretty safe up there. And now they are locked in. Fleet Flyer. Now we've got some seriously great competitors going against each other right now, and this is uh, this is just a joy to watch. I have to say, Fleet Flyer locks it into place. Galant's up now. None of these cars are willing to give an inch, and they are just fighting tooth and nail to stay alive. And it is wonderful to watch as the Galant drives into the back of Fleet Flyer. Well, there's probably no safer place than that as long as the Fleet Flyer stays on the track. I think the Fleet Flyer just got a new secret weapon as Skycam dips down and we see the Galant peeking out of there. Final car round six, the Ocelot. Ocelot slams into the back of Fleet Flyer, and we're gonna go out of this round with no eliminations. Like I said, these cars just refuse to go. The running order will change according to randomness next round. I suspect we'll have different results. Aftermath is gonna be the same as last time, so let's get to the action. Round seven, will it be lucky for someone? Maybe mind control, here goes the minecart. What up? Minecart locks it in behind Evil Weevil and the running order is up. Lamelt's up now for the undercurrent. Lamelt slides into the minecart, very gentle tap there. And here comes a not so gentle tap from the Bel Air. Bel Air smashes into the back of Lamelt, and the minecart gets pushed up in the air from the force, but manages to stay on the track. Fleet Flyer is going to try to cause some trouble. The force of the Fleet Flyer pushes Bel Air up and over the top of Cookie's head, and the Fleet Flyer has ended dead and gone. Right there, the Bel Air is upside down, and that thing's not coming back again. And Lamelt is again the cause of the ruination of another team. Dead and gone are out of this competition. Beasting. Beasting drives into the back of Fleet Flyer. Fleet Flyer goes up on Lamelt now. Beasting had enough force to push the Fleet Flyer up as it went inside. And now Fleet Flyer is in a precarious position. It's time for the Ocelot to take advantage of that. Ocelot slams into Beasting, but does not succeed in dislodging the Fleet Flyer. Ocelot actually almost got in trouble there, but managed to recover. And Beasting just backs out of Fleet Flyer. We've still got a car left for this round. It's the Galant Eterna. The Galant massacres itself. It hits the back of Beasting and then flips over and falls off the track upside down. An unfortunate bounce and couldn't get past Ocelot. And that means that we are going to lose one team and two cars. Emerald Undercurrent now down to one car. And you know who it is. It's Lamelt. Crimson at one, Emerald at one. Sting Operation at one, and Mind Control, who would have thought Mind Control still at two? Something about the magical luck of Cookie in that minecart. Here we go in round eight. Just four teams left as Cookie locks it in. Time for a Sting. Beast Sting bashes the minecart, but can't get it off the track. Fleet Flyer now. The Flyer smashes all the cars on the track, pushes two of them off. Evil Weevil stays on. Beasting and Minecart both recover. Interestingly, Fleet Flyer, they closed the gate on that thing, so no more ramp. I wonder if that's to prevent what happened last round. That was probably a strategic decision. Here comes Lamelt. And Lamelt can't really do much there. At least can't go in the back either, or underneath. And Ocelot's gonna round out round eight. Ocelot smashes into the back of Lamelt. Oh man, almost got Lamelt off the track there. That was a great hit by Ocelot, but couldn't quite finish it. Actually had a chance if someone else had come down to get Lamelt off the track. Might not have flipped over. Round eight aftermath. All these cars are still in it. We got four teams. We're going into round nine. And again, Mind Control's gonna send down the minecart to start us off. Yeah, exactly! Now, because there was no eliminations that round, we've had a couple of rounds like that, actually, the competitors have been told to increase their speed going down the hill so we can try to make something happen. Beasting now for Sting Operation. Beasting slams into place. It's not no holds barred, but the increased speeds should create some action. And if they don't, we can always go no holds barred and take Evil Weevil out of it. 
Lamelt now. Lamelt slips underneath Beasting, almost gets underneath the minecart with this increased speed. Beasting makes a great recovery right there. And now Fleet Flyer's got to go down at an increased speed. Watch out for the back of Lamelt. Ooh, what a punch! The minecart is punched right off the track, and Fleet Flyer does not go off the back of Lamelt. Amazing stop there, and the back flops open. Now we got a ramp. This could be trouble for Ocelot. And did you see that minecart recovery? That was amazing. Am I in the goddamn Matrix? Ocelot's got to be careful here. Ocelot was pretty careful there, went right into the back of Fleet Flyer, pushed Fleet Flyer forward, but couldn't take him out, and then backs right onto the track. Smooth move. We've got no eliminations yet. We're gonna have the vehicles increase their speed one more time, and if no eliminations happen, we'll be going no holds barred. I'll explain what no holds barred means if it becomes necessary. No need for an aftermath. Let's head straight into round 10. Here comes the minecart. Minecart handling that increased speed just fine. Pushes Evil Weevil all the way up to the front. And this is gonna be a big hit with the extra speed. Fleet Flyer knocks Evil Weevil off, but the minecart stays in. Useful to have that boxy shape right now. And the gate is up. Let's see if Lamel can do anything here. Lamelt pushes into the back of Fleet Flyer, but can't do anything even at the increased speed. That thing's too big. Here comes Beasting to give it a go. Beasting hits Lamelt and flies into the back of Fleet Flyer, but then recovers, although very perilous position right there. Any one of these cars gets eliminated right now, and we are done, unless it's one of the mind control vehicles. Speaking of that, here comes Ocelot. Ocelot hits the Beasting all the way over to the crates. A massive hit, and yet Beasting still recovers. That's an incredible recovery. And again, we're going to go out of this round with no eliminations. It's time for No Holds Barred, folks. The rules for No Holds Barred are as follows. The track buffer, Evil Weevil, is removed from the track. Cars will now go all the way up to the front and bounce off that safety rail, starting with minecart right now. Speeds have been increased. Cars can go down backwards if they want. Look at the minecart bounce all the way back to the middle of the track. This is a perilous place to be. Having no cars in front of you could mean you get thrown right off the track. Here comes Lamelt. See if we can make anything happen. Lamelt hits the minecart hard and it bounces forward and back, but that thing is just a great size for staying locked in on the track. So far, nobody's decided to go down the track backwards. I can kind of see why with the cars that we have right now. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Oh man, a huge hit from Fleet Flyer. Lamelt is thrown off the track and unfortunately Minecart gets flipped over. Takes a tumble over the safety rail and just goes upside down for the first time that we've ever seen that thing do that. Damn it. This could be very bad for Mind Control. Beasting now. Beasting does not change anything on the field. Just drives up into the back of the Fleet Flyer. And now Ocelot's got to be careful here, or at least try to right that minecart. Ocelot pushes Beasting into the back of Fleet Flyer, and that is going to end the round. Ocelot stays alive, so we are going into another round of No Holds Barred. There are still four teams left. All of them have one car apiece. Aftermath shows the truth of it. One for Crimson, one for Emerald. One for Mind Control, and one for Sting Operation. And things couldn't be more equal as we head into round 11. Lamelt coming to rest about three quarters of the way down the track. Beasting's gonna try to take Lamelt out right here. I wonder if it's possible. Beasting can't do it. Pushes Lamelt up to the front, and then, unfortunately for Beasting, drives up on the back of Lamelt. That is not a position you want to be in right here. You definitely don't want to be a bee in this situation, if you know what I'm saying. Ocelot for mind control. Ocelot smashes into the back of Beasting. Beasting, look at that recovery yet again. 
And now Ocelot is in not a great position. Ocelot has been going down last for a long time, and the minecart was doing most of the heavy lifting for the mine control team. Fleet Flyer now, this is gonna be a big one. Ooh, Fleet Flyer runs right over Ocelot. Ocelot smashes into the crates and it's so far away we can barely even see it. But Ocelot is upside down. Taking a look at Skycam, it's unbelievable. But Mind Control, who had two left, are now out of the match. Crimson, Emerald, and Sting Operation have survived and they are gonna go on to the finals. After surviving this long with that many cars though, I have a feeling Mind Control has a good shot at getting into the finals as our 10th entrant. Here are your winners, Emerald Undercurrent, Crimson Crashers, and Sting Operation. What a battle these vehicles fought. An amazing competition. Imagine what the finals are gonna be like. And there are your Heat 1 and Heat 2 winners. We just got Heat 3 left. Graveyard Smash are coming back to defend their title and defend it they will against some very strong teams. I think this next Heat is gonna be really interesting. 10 teams enter, but only three are gonna make it to the finals. Welcome to heat number three of the Junkyard Joust main event. Hi everybody, I'm Aaron Yonda. After this heat, we're gonna know all 10 teams that are making it to the finals. Tonight, Graveyard Smash returns. Last season's champions are gonna battle it out to try to get to the finals again. Let's take a look at our teams. Pink Push is back with an all new roster. Will this one be enough to get them to the finals? Legionary is here and they're ready to do battle. Lambo number five, of course, is a team of all Lamborghinis, fast and agile. Sugar Crash won the battle of the losers and got to add a couple new cars to their team and they are ready to face off. Wolvie's Wreckers are ready to carve through the competition. The Sunrunners have been around. They've made it to the finals every season, always with a brand new team. Let's see if they can do it this season. Fierce Lead Dragon is a sinister looking team with some versatile cars. Stranger Danger is a team of vans that are difficult to get off the track. In Thunderlord's Qualifier, they are the only team with any cars left standing at the end of the qualifier. Creature is back, and so is the ramp. Graveyard Smash, sponsored by Tony's Video Palace. The rules are simple, survive. Every car has to drive down the track, smash into the rest of the cars, and if they end up upside down or sideways at the end of a round, they are eliminated. Any cars that are right side up at the end of the round move on to the next round. In the qualifier, the match ends when two teams have lost all their cars, and the remaining three teams Teams move on. Tim looks pretty relaxed right now, considering that he is surrounded by zombies. Tim, of course, caused a zombie apocalypse at the beginning of the main event. Hopefully he can keep them away from the competitors. I don't know, that clown zombie looks pretty creepy. Well, Evil Weevil is at midpoint. Let's get this thing started. Graveyard Smash, it's no surprise, sending down Creature from the Black Lagoon. Let the carnage begin. It is ramp time. Running order is up, and here we go. Lambo number five is going to take the plunge first with the Aventador J, sponsored by Hey Hey's Hatchback Hanger. The Aventador somehow doesn't go off the ramp. Something on the front of that car was so low that it actually prevented it from going off the ramp. Well, that's interesting. Let's see if that works again when Fiercely Dragon sends down the 57 Roadster, sponsored by Liz's Wizard Arts and Witchcrafts. And it didn't matter. The Aventador is just toppled, sent flying off the track, upside down. That was a nasty hit. And now that Roadster is going off the back of Creature. So that's not a good position to be in. Baby Ruth for Sugar Crash, sponsored by Hey Hey's Hatchback Hanger again. This thing has a kind of low bumper, could help it. Nope, it didn't. And it went right off the back of Creature, flipped over, upside down, and is done. And look at that, the Roadster makes an impressive recovery. Thunderlords think that Iron Man might have what it takes to go off the back of Creature, sponsored by Brendan Walsh. And it does! Iron Man just hits the wall, bounces back, and looks like it's gonna go upside down, but with a little bounce, manages to right itself. That was an amazing recovery, and that was a good choice of a car to send down. Pink Push is gonna send down Diaper Dragger, sponsored by Mr. Stratholm, see if it can survive this jump. 
Diaper Dragger slams into the crates and just goes straight sideways and does not manage to make a recovery. It's not over yet, but it's probably unlikely that that thing's gonna come back. Legionary is gonna send down the Hammered Coop, sponsored by Deluxe Flame. This thing has a pretty low front. I don't know if it's low enough to get under Crete. What? What just happened? I have no idea. I, I still can't tell what just happened there. Creature has been flipped upside down by the impact with the Hammered Coop. It looks like Hammered Coop started to go under Creature, got snagged on the tire, and Creature has flipped upside down on the track. If Creature doesn't somehow get flipped over, we may have just witnessed history, folks. Here comes the 69 Nissan Skyline van for Wolvie's Wrecker, sponsored by Chemical Knight. The Nissan pushes the coop all the way under Creature and finishes the job. The backbone of Graveyard Smash, the whole reason that they survived and won last season, may have just been eliminated, folks. Wow, it's only the first round. Custom 77 Dodge Van, now sponsored by Mr. Strathholm. The custom van pushes Evil Weevil off the track and not much else going on right there. The cars are lining up. There's a line of red. It's a trail of blood that leads to Creature from the Black Lagoon. This is just unbelievable. Here comes Power Pistons for the Sunrunners, sponsored by Bentley's Brakes and Bumpers. Power Pistons powers into the back of that van and just stops and locks it in. Graveyard Smash, gotta be devastated by this. The mummy now is gonna go down. Mummy takes its place on the track, pops Power Pistons off. Power Pistons makes a very adept recovery. And now the Mummy, which doesn't work quite as well as Creature, but still has a bit of a ramp off the back, is gonna try to cause some trouble. Now Lambo number five is sending down Benino, sponsored by Ellie's Hop Shop. This thing has a low front. And yeah, it's not going underneath, but it's not going off the back as a ramp either. And it's kind of hung up on the edge now. Up next, it's gonna be High Roller, sponsored by Swedenborg's Smorgasbord. I roller smacks the Venino off the track. Venino goes upside down. That's gonna be a probable elimination for Lambo number five. They're not doing too good right now. Got two cars upside down. Next up for Sugar Crash, it is Crunch, sponsored by Brendan Wall. Crunch knocks the high roller all the way down towards the front by Iron Man, almost makes a recovery. I don't know if that car is going to go upside down or right side up, but there's definitely a chance of either. Up now for Thunderlord's Captain America, sponsored by Illuminati Public Relations. Captain America knocks Crunch curbside. Crunch is definitely not in a good position being like that. Sponsored by Ellis Wurtenberger, it's the Monte Carlo concept car. Heaviest car on the pink push, 61 grams. Big hit and it was enough to push Crunch off the track upside down and then sideways. And that is a big loss for Sugar Crash right there. Another big loss already in just the first round of this match. Legionnaire is gonna send down Dual Fueler, sponsored by Sean and Patrick Hogan. Dual Fueler's got a low front, but not low enough to get under that Monte Carlo. Almost dead, but couldn't quite manage it. Chrysler Atlantic now for Wolvie's Wreckers, sponsored by Mark the Music Lover. A light tap right there. This car's only 29 grams. Couldn't really do a whole lot, but it did manage to lock it in. The Danger now going to send down the MBK van, sponsored by Stump's Tree Farm. A heavy hit by the MBK van. The Chrysler Atlantic is thrown off the track, lands in the dirt upside down. Dual fueler sideways now. The Monte Carlo is also in jeopardy. Next up for the runners is What42, sponsored by Chome. What 4-2 causes some devastation with the help of that van. Monte Carlo and Dual Fueler are both tossed upside down. Graveyard Smash have another car that they're fond of, the Wolfman. This thing is very hard to get off the track. Wolfman slides into place and knocks that MBK van right off the track. After all the damage that thing did, now it is lying in the same place as all the cars it knocked around. Up now for Lambo, it's the Huracan LP622 Super Trofeo, sponsored by Jedi. The Huracan cannot do it, and it hits back of Wolfman and goes almost all the way off the track. It's gonna wish it had gone all the way off the track, because now it faces a big hit from Bad Moon, sponsored by Emo Dingo. 
bad moon <laughs> sends the hurricane completely out of the realm of possibility. Uh, that thing's gone. I, I don't even, I, I don't even know where it went. And we're gonna try to get a shot. It went over the fence and even knocked the fence over. That's what that fence is there for to prevent this kind of thing. That was such a savage hit by Bad Moon that now Wolfman is in trouble. Bad Moon underneath Wolfman. And here we've got a shot of Hurricane. Apparently it couldn't. It's upside down and out. Here comes Chunky for Sugar Crash, sponsored by Chome. This is gonna be an important hit for Graveyard. And Wolfman, wow, that was insane. Wolfman flips completely over. The van flips over and somehow makes a recovery. The unlikeliness of that is not lost on us. Thunderlord's now sending out Thor, sponsored by Sid from Cybertron. Thor slams into Chunky. We've got a Sunrunner's car on the ropes now too from that previous hit and Thor locks it in. It's time for a Pink Bullet sponsored by Judy Collins. Pink Bullet annihilates Thor and Thor takes out one of the zombies. Unfortunately, Thor's upside down, but actually managed to take out one of those zombies, so that's helping the cause there. Good job, Thor, a noble sacrifice. Legionary now with Double Vision, sponsored by Sid from Cybertron. Double Vision focuses in on Pink Bullet and slaps it off the track upside down. Unfortunately, also flips over itself and hooks on the track. That's gonna be trouble. And here comes Wolverine with those claws, sponsored by Sloth's Automotive Sachet and Buffet. Look out. Wolverine smacks Double Vision off the track and then goes upside down himself. Rough luck there for Wolvie. Ford Bedford Van now for the danger, sponsored by Rago Radio. The Bedford van hits a wall, can't go anywhere, and just flips over sideways after bouncing off the track. The line of cars on the track is so solid, it's starting to end vehicles just by not letting them forward. Let's see how off-track fares for the Sunrunners, sponsored by Wayland Enterprises International. Off-track slams into the van, pushes it upside down, goes up and makes a nice recovery, actually manages to almost get back on the track, but now he's curbside. Graveyard Smash sending out Bride of Frankenstein. Bride of Frankenstein finishes off the van and off track makes a great spinning recovery. Mercia Lago sponsored by Judy Collins for Lambo number five. Mercia Lago slams into Bride of Frankenstein. There's nowhere to go, so it just sits there. Next up, this thing looks like it has some undercutting ability. Cove Light sponsored by Judy Collins. Cove Light annihilates Murcielago. Murcielago gets flipped, but then recovers, lands over, and actually takes out a couple of zombies. Murcielago gets kind of close to Tim over there, but he doesn't seem bothered by it. The wall of cars now is actually getting higher than the wall of zombies. And here comes a big one for Sugar Crash. It's Hershey's Miniature, sponsored by Swedenborg's Smorgasbord. Hershey's cannot buckle the line. It buckles, I guess, but it does not break. And the cars are really starting to back up. Uh, I think Spider Machine will alleviate some of this backup for Thunderlord, sponsored by Chum. And even Spider Machine can't penetrate the line. There is no getting through here. Let's see if the 67 VW 1536, sponsored by Hasty Productions, can do anything. And it can't, it almost gets under Spider Machine, pops it up, but then goes back, and we're almost starting to get back up the hill now. Commuters up for Legionary, sponsored by Regal Radio. Can he break the line? Commuter cannot get, pushes the VW up almost under Spider Machine, but now we are back even a step farther. The Major Rat Wolverine's gonna give it a shot, sponsored by Tim the Bear Neal. Majorette Wolverine tears up some track on the way down, but doesn't really get much going. Spider Machine actually is in peril now. Next up for the danger is the 40 Conaline Van, sponsored by Regal Radio. And finally, we're getting some action. There you go, the commuter is flipped over. Wolverine's on the edge, it's dangerous. Good hit by the Conaline Van. Sunrunners are gonna send out Happy Zap, sponsored by Swedenborg's Smorgasbord. Happy Zap finishes off the commuter, or I guess it was already finished, finishes him off again, and Wolverine is definitely in trouble. Graveyard Smash picked up Dracula back in season two. Here it comes. 
Dracula slams into Happy Zap. Conaline Van slides and flips over, and Spider Machine makes a smooth dismount. Next up for Lambo number five, it's the Aventador LP700-4. Another one sponsored by Swedenborg's Smorgasbord. The Aventador has nowhere to go. The line of cars is solid again, and we are backing up the hill. Luckily, there's only a couple cars left in this round. The next one being Sweet 16 from Fiercely Dragon, sponsored by Chum. Sweet 16 manages to pop the Aventador off the track. The line of cars buckles with the trunk of the VW, but that's all. Big hit coming down from Raisinets now for Sugar Crash. 89 grams, sponsored by Whalen Enterprises International. And it was a big hit. VW has been eliminated. Forced off the track upside down, and Happy Zap makes a nice flip and a recovery on top of Dracula. That was pretty good. And now Thunderlords are sending down another big hit. 102 grams, Captain America bus, sponsored by Sean and Patrick Hogan. Captain America bus slams Raisinette forward. A couple more cars displaced. Nobody eliminated, although Happy Zap is definitely on the border. Not a decision I would want to have to make. Officials are going to have to decide whether that is out, if Happy Zap stays in that position. Next up for the Pink Push, it's Manga Tuner, sponsored by Whalen Enterprises International. Manga Tuner slams Sweet 16 off the track, but Sweet 16 is fine, and we are still backed up this track. Can Troy Soldier do anything to loosen this up? Sponsored by Brandon Walsh. Troy Soldier can't, and I do believe this is probably the farthest we've been backed up the track just about ever. The line of cars is tough. It's solid. 71 Plymouth Satellite, sponsored by Sean and Patrick Hogan. Going to give it a shot. And a little bit of loosening, but not much. It goes underneath Troy Soldier, and that's it. Here comes Ford Supervan 2, sponsored by Ellis Wartenberger. The super van heaves a 62 grams into those cars and Troy Soldier is tossed and backs right off the track. Manga Tuner is definitely in trouble in that position. We are really backing up this hill. Final car of round one, Sunrunners are sending out Buzz Off, sponsored by Jedi. Buzz Off can't do anything, but somehow manages to right Manga Tuner, and Manga Tuner gets out of there. Great recovery, and that finally is the end of round one. And what a round it was. Taking a look at the long line of destruction, 23 cars were eliminated in this round. That's nearly half the field, and of course, there is Creature, the big elimination for Graveyard Smash. Let's take a look at the aftermath. Silver lining for Graveyard Smash, they didn't lose any other vehicles. Bad news for Lambo number five and Pink Push, they are down to one each. Fiercely Dragon looking good, only lost one, and Legionary lost three. Most damage over here done to Stranger Danger and Wolvie's Wreckers, they each lost three. Sugar Crash lost two, and Sunrunners and Thunderlords looking pretty with one loss each. The cars have been reset, and the zombies that were eliminated also been removed from action. I hope somebody takes out that clown zombie. First up for the Thunderlords in round two, it's going to be Captain America. Running order is up. Thunderlords, I think, wanting to establish this car down at the end of the track with that rounded back, hoping that it'll cause some problems for other vehicles. Fiercely Dragon going to start us off with the Roadster again. The Roadster slams into the back of Captain America, can't get underneath, and just gonna have to sit there. Happy Zap is back for the Sunrunners after nearly being eliminated. And a nice hit there, locks it in on the track. All the cars are together. Graveyard Smash still reeling from the loss of Creature, but they've got the Mummy, could still be a troublemaker. Mummy knocks Happy Zap off the track. The Mummy and the rest of this team should not be discounted. They're a championship team for a reason. They've got what it takes to make it into the finals, even without Creature. Here comes Hershey's Miniatures for Sugar Crash. Miniatures knocks the Roadster off the track, upside down after a bad bounce off the track. And then Mummy is pushed off to the side, but so far is okay. Fresh off the destruction of Creature, it's the Hammered Coop. Look out below. Hammered Coop does it again. Takes out one of these big low bumper vehicles, just flips it over like it's nothing. That vehicle is vicious. Wolvie's Records just got the two station wagons left, or I guess this is a van, a Skyline van. 
The Skyline Van tries to push the hammered coupe under Captain America, but that's not happening. That thing actually does have a low enough bumper to prevent the kind of devastation that happened to miniatures. Now we're moving on to a different kind of van, a super van for Stranger Danger. They've got two left. Super Van actually manages to get the hammered coop under Captain America. Could this be another elimination by that vehicle? All that remains of Lambo number five is the Murcielago. Gotta stay alive. Murcielago does exactly the opposite of what I just said and flips over upside down on the track. We'll see whether he stays that way. Pink push with their remaining vehicle. It sure is a tiny one, Manga Tuner. Manga Tuner ends the Murcielago. Murcielago goes flying, does not make a recovery, not like last time, and is upside down. Lambo number five just taken out by Pink Push. That's one team down, Thunderlord sending down the Captain America bus. Manga Tuner goes tumbling over and over, all the way over to the crates, and does not have the ability to make a recovery. Pink Push are now certainly out of this match unless some sort of miracle happens that rights that car. Bad Moon did some damage last round. Let's see what he can do this time. And he doesn't get anything going this time. Just slams into the back of the Captain America van. Captain America up farther comes off the track completely and is safe. And now Bad Moon's curbside. Sunrunner is electing to send down Buzz off. Now let's see if this thing gets any undercutting. And no undercutting, in fact, Bad Moon is saved from being curbside now and locked in. It's kind of the opposite of what they were going for, I think. Graveyard Smash is sending down Wolfman. Amazing recovery last time. Wolfman forces himself under Buzz Off, but can't get any cars off the track and backs it up. Another big vehicle coming down for Sugar Crash, Raisinets. Raza Nets manages to get Wolfman under Buzz Off this time, and Buzz Off is pitching forward. Bad Moon even getting up a little bit. Legionary sending down their second car for the round. Only got two left, Troy Soldier. Troy Soldier bounces off the back of Raza Nets, manages to get Buzz Off sideways on the track. Wolfman is curbside. Troy Soldier better get ready to take a ride. Here comes the Plymouth Satellite. The soldier is down! Pitched over sideways off the back of Raisin Nets. And look at that, buzz off. Amazing job getting out of that pickle and recovering. Here comes the 77 Dodge Van for the danger. A heavy hit, and look at this! Wolfman slides off the edge, slowly goes over on his roof. And that might be it. Arguably the second best car on Graveyard Shift, and now that is probably out. Graveyard Shift in deep trouble here. Spider Machine's up now. Spider Machine knocks the van way up in the air. Big hit there, bounces off the back of the satellite that then manages to stay alive. Sweet 16 now for the dragon. Sweet 16 bashes into Spider Machine. Doesn't manage to get much to happen. That 77 Dodge van is almost recovered. Power Piston now for the runners. Power Piston pushes into Sweet 16 and the satellite's getting pushed up a little bit by Spider Machine, that's about it. With the elimination of Wolfman, Dracula's gotta step up to the plate for Graveyard Smash here. Good hit, gets a little bit under power pistons, start to cause some trouble, definitely getting some potential pileup options. If we just get a nice heavy hit, and that's what we're gonna get, Chunky for Sugar Crash. Chunky Slam, Sweet 16, and Power Pistons off. Sweet 16 getting the better of it, managing to tumble backwards, but Power Pistons also recovering, flipping off in the other direction. Great job by both those cars. Iron Man now for the Thunderlords. Iron Man causes the satellite to flip over off the track. Wolvie's Wreckers taking another hit. Cove Light, Fiercely Dragon. Cove Light takes Iron Man to town, flips over a couple times, lands over on satellite, and then drives off. You can tell this car likes to fly. It always makes a pretty good recovery when it's getting catapulted through the air. Here comes off track. Off track goes off Cove Light and then goes off track, and Cove Light also goes off track, both of them making a good recovery. Off track landing on his own teammate. Graveyard Smash likes to send down Bride of Frankenstein towards the end, I've noticed. 
Bride of Frankenstein lands a punch on the back of Chunky, but isn't moving. And that is gonna round out round two. And if my math is right, it looks like we've lost another seven vehicles. That's gonna take us up to 30, which means 20 cars left. Let's take a look at the aftermath. Every team on this page lost one. In some cases, that means their team is out. Lambo and Pink Push are done. Legionary's down to one, Greyguard Smash at three, and Dragon at three. Wolvie's Wreckers are down to one, Sugar and Stranger are at two each, and Sunrunners and Thunderlords are really starting to look good. Four left. Up first for the Sunrunners, it's Lightning Speed, formerly known as Happy Zap, which apparently was not the official name for that vehicle, so we've corrected it. And now Thunderlords are gonna send down Captain America. This is a heavy vehicle, it's got that rounded back, which makes it a real challenge for anyone to get it off the track. Captain America removes Evil Weevil from the track, and we've got a line started. First up for Fiercely Dragon, Sweet 16. Sweet 16 rocks Captain America forward, almost gets lightning speed off the track, but then lightning speed just settles back in again. Graveyard Smash are gonna start out with the Mummy. Mummy has a sloped back, can sometimes be used as a ramp. And Mummy gets underneath Sweet 16, impressive maneuver there. This next hit from the Super Van 2 could be a doozy. Super Van slams into the back of Mummy and goes up and off of it. Sweet 16 climbs on top of Captain America, and look at that. Super Van is pointed straight up in the air in an improbable fashion on the rear end of the truck. Sugar Crash now with Raisinets. Big hit coming. Raisinets knocks three cars off the track. The Super Van goes sideways. The Mummy is toppled over. Another disastrous hit for Graveyard Smash. That is not what they wanted right now. And Sweet 16 slides off very sweetly and safely. Raisinets is going to have to survive a hit from the nefarious Hammered Coop. And Raisinets does it, gets pushed up onto the back of Captain America, but manages to take the hit. And now Raisinets is performing a very precarious balancing act. The final holdout for Wolvie's Wreckers, the Nissan Skyline, here we go. The Nissan pushes into the coop, and now Raisinets flops off sideways. That is a big elimination for Sugar Crash. They are not out of this yet, but another big heavy vehicle just manhandled. Here comes an agile vehicle for the Sunrunners, Off Track. Off Track collides with the Nissan, and now uh, look at that super van recovers. I thought there was no way that was happening, but it just did. And now Hammered Coop is on the ropes. And there's a big hit coming down. Now Captain America bus 102 grams. Smashes two cars off the track, but they both do an amazing job of recovering Hammered Coop. Not a particularly agile vehicle, but manages to flip over and survive and save Legionary's hopes in off-track great recovery. Cove Light now for Dragon. Cove Light smacks the back of Captain America, but can't go anywhere. The cars are lining up. Dracula now for the smash. Dracula lines up behind the rest of them. We've seen a lot of long lines with this particular heat, and it's continuing. And now the custom 77 Dodge van for the danger. The van slams into the back while the cars cannot get anything to move. Let's see if Chunky can do anything for Sugar Crash. 80 grams, not too shabby. And another big hit, and they are just locked in even tighter now. Can anyone break the standoff? Next one to try is going to be Power Pistons. Power Pistons gets a little action, but can't make it happen. If anyone can do something here, it's Spider Machine for Thunderlords. Big hit from Spider Machine, but not able to get underneath Power Pistons. How did Power Pistons prevent that? It looks like there's some sort of a tailpipe or something coming off the back of that car that prevented Spider Machine from getting under. That is convenient. Bad Moon's known for some upheavals. Let's see if he can do it this time. Finally, a big hit that knocks a couple cars off. Didn't do much damage, though. Both cars make a great recovery. Looks like they're both going to go over, and they both recover simultaneously. Graveyard smash now with Bride of Frankenstein. Bride of Frankenstein gently nudges Bad Moon off the track. Maybe it wasn't gentle, but still, it was a bit of a nudge, and Bad Moon is fine. Two cars left this round. Now it's going to be buzz off for the Sunrunners. 
Buzz Off tries to get under Bride of Frankenstein. Bride of Frankenstein is not having it. And the final car of round three, Iron Man for the Thunderlords. Iron Man just slams into the back. We're seeing a theme here. Not a whole lot of eliminations this round, but it was a dramatic round nonetheless. Graveyard Smash lost Mummy and Sugar Crash lost Raisinets. Two big vehicles. Let's take a look at the aftermath. Dragon's got three now. Smash has two and Legionary still has one. Stranger Danger stays at two. Sugar Crash go down to one. Sunrunners and Thunderlords still at four and will be still at one. Here we go with round four. Captain America up first for the Thunderlords, who got first in the running order, randomly determined, of course. Tim in the background, you can see, is still distracting the remnant of the zombies, and uh, we'll see if that holds true for the rest of this match. Lightning speed up first for the Sunrunners, as usual. Lightning speed knocks Captain America up to the front and then sits back there. Fiercely Dragon sending down Bad Moon. Look out, Lightning Speed. Lightning Speed is thrown off, but it backfires badly for Bad Moon. Flips over off the back of Captain America, and that car is done. And Lightning Speed is fine. Graveyard Shift's gonna spice things up here with Bride of Frankenstein. And she can't go anywhere, but she did manage to stay solid on the track, which is important. Next up for the Dangerous, the Ford Supervan 2, who made that amazing recovery last time. And this time, annihilates Bride of Frankenstein, splits it off the back of Captain America, and she rolls over, and another devastating loss for Graveyard Smash. They are just being whittled away one by one in this match. And now that devastator of a car, the Hammered Coop for Legionary. Hammered Coop tries to take out the Super Van, but just manages to get underneath. Still, that's not a good position to be in. Sugar Crash's only hope is Chunky. Chunky slams two cars off, and look at this, Captain America is tipped and forced off the track upside down. Or I guess it's more sideways, and the Super Van also sideways. Wow, that was a devastating hit from Chunky there. Way to stay in the match and do some damage. Nissan Skyline. The Skyline slams it and locks it in. Thunderlord smarting from that potential loss of Captain America. Here comes Spider Machine. Spider Machine tries to get under the Nissan and almost does it, but can't quite finish the job. Still got those hooks underneath, though. Power Pistons now for the runners. Power Pistons tries to push Spider Machine underneath the Nissan and gets it part way. Nissan is going over. Sweet 16 now for Fiercely Dragon. Sweet 16 causing damage all over the place. The Pistons almost pushed off the track. The Nissan flips over, and we are looking at what is likely the end of Wolvie's records with the flip of that vehicle. Graveyard smash last season's champions, only down to Dracula now. Dracula, a nice solid hit. Gotta play it safe here to stay in this match. And Chunky's gotta be careful getting pushed up on his front right now. Stranger Danger hoping to stay alive with the Dodge Van. A middle of the road kind of hit right there. Not able to get Chunky off. And Power Pistons hops to safety. Time for the Captain America bus. The bus makes a big stop right in the middle of the track. Cannot get anything to happen. Chunky nearly gets flipped over. That could have ended Sugar Crash. But Chunky refuses to budge. Here comes off track. Off track bounces off the back of Captain America. Actually flips the outside shell of the vehicle up a little bit, but that's all he's able to do. Here comes Cove Light. Cove Light knocks off track off the track, but like I said, it's an agile truck. It makes a pretty great recovery and is in uh, relative safety right now. Except for that big clown zombie staring at him. That thing is scary. Iron Man now for the Lords. Iron Man slides right underneath Cove Light and Cove Light flips and goes over upside down. The Captain America van proving somehow as a great jumping off point, more of a jumping off wall, and Cove Light is done. Buzz Off gonna try to get some undercutting action here. Buzz Off is able to get under Iron Man, but Iron Man thrives under these conditions, backs over Captain America, his own teammate. It's like something straight out of an Avengers movie. 
And that was the final car of this round. We have a lot more eliminations this time around. Let's take a look at the aftermath. Fiercely Dragon is down to one. They took a big hit in that round. Graveyard Smash also took a big hit, also down to one. Legionary still at one. Stranger Danger now down to one. Sugar Crash still in it at one. The Sunrunners still have four. And Thunderlords down to three. Heading into round five now, the Sunrunners have a system here. They like to start out with lightning speed. They seem to know exactly when to send down their cars, and they're kind of sticking to a similar order. There's a lot of strategy in Junkyard Joust, and the Sunrunners are proving masters of that right now. Iron Man. Iron Man slides in behind Lightning Speed and locks it in. Fiercely Dragon staggered with the loss of two vehicles last round, down to just Sweet 16. Gotta stay in it. And a devastating hit from Sweet 16 in revenge for what happened last round. Now Iron Man is upside down and lightning speed is being pushed off. Great hit. Bad news for Sweet 16 though. Hammered Coop is up now. Hammered Coop. Ooh, man. The revenge was completely neutralized. Sweet 16 now upside down and Iron Man flips off. Recovered. Ah, man, that is rough. That was savage. You just don't want to be on the track when Hammered Coop comes down. Dracula now, last chance for the smash. Dracula goes right off the back of the Hammered Coop, deadly in front and in the back. And look at that, Dracula now is sideways. If Dracula can't find a way to recover off track, it's over for our former world champions. 77 Dodge. The van slams into the back of Hammered Coop, does a little bit more hammering back there, and then goes curbside. Chunky. Chunky pops the Dodge over the top of the Coop into the crates. That was a massive hit, and the Dodge is sideways and out. And that is gonna be the end of Stranger Danger. We're looking at the end of two teams right now. Here comes Power Pistons. Power Pistons tried to take out Chunky. Chunky managed to stick it to the side of the track, but that is an unstable position. Chunky survived these before, though. Captain America bus, big hit coming. The bus rolls on through, and Power Pistons knocked off the track. Chunky knocked off the track. Both of them, right now, are alive. Chunky, though, could be still in danger. Next up, it's gonna be off track for the runners. Off track stop dead at the back of Captain America, but stays on the track. Spider Machine's gonna have something to say about that. And off track gets booted, but unfortunately now Spider Machine is under his own teammate. He's pretty good at keeping his balance, but we'll see if he can survive this next hit. It's gonna be from Buzz Off. And Buzz Off hits a wall in the back of Spider Machine and instead of knocking Captain America off, actually takes out Off Track. A little collateral damage there as Buzz Off offs Off Track. And there are four cars eliminated in this round and we just lost three teams. Let's take a look at the aftermath. Fierce Lead Dragon is out with the loss of Sweet 16. Graveyard Smash is definitively done, and it's partially because of that one remaining car on Legionary. Stranger Danger is out. The Vans could not survive. Sugar Crash still in it. Sunrunners and Thunderlords now on equal footing with three each. Here we go, round six. There are only four teams left. One of these teams gets eliminated and this is over. And the three remaining teams are gonna move on to the finals. There also will be one wild card entry. A fourth place team is gonna get to make it into the finals as well. We'll find out what that is at the end of this match. Iron Man getting put curbside by lightning speed on this last hit. And now watch out, it's Hammer Coop. Hammered Coop tries to take both cars out, manages to get both of them off the track, but look at that recovery by lightning speed. Incredible. A flip and a roll and a recovery. And Iron Man also recovers. Chunky. Chunky, whoa, I did not expect that. I thought Chunky would probably go off the back of Hammer Coop. Instead, knocks Hammer Coop all the way up into the crates and off the track, and Hammer Coop, good job recovering from that. That could have been devastating. If Chunky taking Hammer Coop out on that shot, Sugar Crash would be in the finals. 
And Spider Machine makes Chunky pay for it right now. Chunky is rolled over and tossed off to the side. And that does not look like it's gonna be a recoverable place to be. Buzz Off's gonna go down now, but I think we might have our three champions. Let's see what happens. Buzz Off gets underneath Spider Machine. Spider Machine does not want to go off the track, though, and stays there. Captain America's got to be a little bit careful here. Doesn't want to rock the boat too much. And Spider Machine makes a great recovery after Captain America lofts him into the air. Power Pistons. Power Pistons get some movement on his own teammate up there. Captain America starting to go under Buzz Off. But that's it. That was the last car of this round and of this match, as it turns out. Taking a look at the aftermath of round six, Legionary had this one car for the last four rounds and made it all the way to the end. And Sunrunners and Thunderlords, wow, three cars left each. That's some championship caliber teamwork right there. And with our Heat 3 recap, you can see the progression of all the teams. Thank you, AJ, for this flashy graphic. Sugar Crash making a great showing, all things considered. With the addition of these three teams, we've now got nine teams that are going on to the finals. Who is our wild card winner? Rod Warriors, Mind Control, and Sugar Crash all placed fourth, but Mind Control lasted the longest and got the most points. They will be our wild card and 10th entrant into the finals. So here they are, our final 10 teams, and wow, this is gonna be a match, folks. And I hear the growl of zombies. Uh, I think something's up with Tim. Oh boy, uh, this is freaking me out. Tim, you, you should get out of there, man. Uh-oh, the clown zombie has collided with Tim. I don't know how he got airborne, but now Tim is falling off the RV, and the zombies have got him. They're climbing on top of him. Tim, Tim, you gotta get out of there. Oh no, the zombies got him. The zombies got Tim the Tool Man. Revrod tossed, recovers again. Revrod is being thrown everywhere. Ooh, a big hit from Lamelt, and Revrod is tossed overboard. Creature from the Black Lagoon pulls a fast one and goes down backwards. Look at Lamelt take that jump from way back on the track. Creature goes off the track. Creature slices underneath Lamelt, and just like that, the champions have been dethroned. Welcome to the Junkyard Joust World Championship Final. Graveyard Smash is out, but nine new teams and Emerald Undercurrent are going to compete to eliminate all the other teams and claim that trophy. Hi everybody, I'm Aaron Yanda. This is the Junkyard Joust. Each of these teams has had to fight their way into this final through multiple matches. What we've got here is the cream of the crop. Let's take a look at our teams. Amaranthan has proven to be a resilient team, and they have a good offense. Crimson Crashers are all about offense, and they have the Fleet Flyer with a secret weapon. Devastation Wagons are a heavyweight team, and they're hard to get off the track. Sponsored by Ranaman, our Season 1 champions Emerald Undercurrent are back, and they're ready to shake things up. Indigo Ice Picks have a good combination of agility and survivability. Legionary has devastated their competition, especially with the Hammered Coop. Our wildcard entry into the finals, Mind Control has proven themselves to have a surprising survivability. The Sunrunners have made it into the finals every single season, and this time they have a very promising team. Sting Operation has agility, and they're aggressive. Thunderlords are a bruiser of a team, and they are hard to eliminate. The rules are simple, survive. Every car has to drive down the track, smash into the rest of the cars, and if they end up upside down or sideways at the end of a round, they are eliminated. Any cars that are right side up at the end of the round move on to the next round. It's the finals, so we go until there is only one team remaining. 
Evil Weevil's gonna take his place as the track buffer. Evil Weevil's sister in competition tonight made it to the finals. 31 Doozy's gonna start out for Amaranth and sponsored by Wayland Enterprises International. The running order is up. You can see the randomized order the cars will be going down in. Of course, the teams get to choose which car they want to send down when, and that's part of the strategy of Junkyard Joust. Emerald Undercurrent doing just that strategy, sending down Lamelt. And now cars are gonna have to deal with the low back of Lamelt. First car to have to deal with it, Mercury Sable Wagon, sponsored by Liz's Wizard Arts and Witchcrafts. The wagon drives right over Lamelt and flops off the track upside down. Lamelt already claiming a first victim, and it's a devastation wagon. And here is the car that was responsible for taking out Creature from the Black Lagoon. It's Hammered Coop, sponsored by Deluxe Flame. Look out, Lamelt. And Lamelt gets tossed up in the air, pushed over, and makes an amazing recovery. That was a close call. Hammered Coop making an aggressive play on Lamelt here, but Lamelt manages to survive it. But wow, that was an impressive hit, and Lamelt barely scrapes by. Indigo Ice Picks are going to send down GT Hunter, sponsored by Brandon Walsh. GT Hunter smacks the coupe, which was curbside, and now the coupe is sideways on the track. We'll see if it stays like that. And the coupe kind of backs away. I think it's scared. Crimson Crashers aren't wasting any time. Sending down the Fleet Flyer, 181 grams with the secret weapon. And bam, there goes GT Hunter upside down. But look at that, Hammered Coupe makes an amazing recovery. Did it flip? It didn't quite flip. It did flip. It flipped over. You couldn't kind of see it. And uh, that was a pretty good recovery by the Hammered Coop. Legionary breathing a sigh of relief. The secret weapon did not deploy on that run. Looks like they're keeping it in there. Captain America now sponsored by Illuminati Public Relations. Thunderlords like this vehicle. It's big, it's heavy, it's hard to get off the track, and now it's created a little sort of a ramp right there in the back of Fleet Flyer. Wildcard Team Mind Control is going to send down Iron Golem first, sponsored by Hendrika's Heavy Hauling. And the Iron Golem hits the back of that heavy vehicle and flips up in the air on the forklifts and just hops off the track. Ultimately, that is going to be a successful run. No damage, but also did not get eliminated. Sunrunner sending down Lightning Speed, sponsored by Swedenborg's Smorgasbord. Sunrunners have a very particular order they've been sending their cars down in, and it seems to be working for them as a strategy. Here comes Scorpedo for Sting Operation, sponsored by Ellie's Hop Shop. Scorpedo knocks Lightning Speed off the track. Lightning Speed makes a nice dismount, and now Scorpedo is lined up. Next hit will be from Cruella DeVille, sponsored by Sean Patrick Hogan. Cruella DeVille has been a shining star on the Amaranthan team. They have a couple good vehicles, but this one is great at staying alive. And for the second car, Emerald Undercurrent's gonna send down Eye Candy, long-standing member of the team. Eye Candy smacks Scorpedo off the track. Scorpedo makes a good recovery there, sliding off Captain America. And now Eye Candy is in trouble. Next up, it's gonna be the Volvo 850 Estate, sponsored by Swedenborg Smorgasbord. The Volvo destroys Eye Candy. Eye Candy flying all over the place and cannot even attempt to make a recovery. Just skitters upside down over by the crates. Great hit there by the Volvo. That was just nasty. Volvo, though, is now curbside. Next up for Legionary, it's going to be Dual Fueler, sponsored by Sean and Patrick Hogan. Dual Fueler pops that Volvo off, and yep, that is not good for the Volvo. Good hit by Dual Fueler. That's definitely going to be an elimination if the Volvo cannot come back from being nearly upside down right there. Coming up now, it's Let's Go for the Ice Pick, sponsored by Chome. Let's Go cannot get anything to happen on the track and just locks it in. Crimson Crash is going to send down the Porsche 930. The Porsche gets underneath Let's Go, but can't quite get it off the track because of those crunched up front wheels. Don't let it get as much speed as it could. Captain America busts now for the Thunderlord, sponsored by Sean and Patrick Hogan. 102 grams of power rocks the field right now. Three cars thrown from the track. All of them in their current positions are out. That was absolutely devastating. Let's go is a car that's been able to recover from most anything. That Porsche has been as well. Wow, that was an aggressive play by the Thunderlords. They did the right thing sending that vehicle down. Mind control now, Spider, sponsored by Jedi. 
Spider gets behind Captain America and his back flips up, which is not something he wants to happen. That thing's supposed to protect him and it's not going to do it now. Here's a car that's pretty agile for the Sunrunners, Off Track, sponsored by Wayland Enterprises International. Off track. I don't even know what just happened to Spider right there. Spider tilted up almost on his face, but couldn't quite get all the way there. That's just a weird position to be in. I don't think that's going to end well. Good hit by off track, though. Super Singer's going to try to finish Spider off. Sponsored by Sloth's Automotive Sashay Buffet. Super Stinger gets Spider all the way up on his face and kind of gets underneath, but still couldn't get him off the track. Off track, great recovery there. And we're going to send down the Mercedes, sponsored by Sid from Cybertron. And a big hit there. Super Stinger is tossed off the track by the Mercedes and flips upside down. Solid hit there for Amaranthin. Emerald Undercurrent now with Salt Shaker. Salt Shaker tries to get underneath the Mercedes, can't quite do it, and locks it in. I think that line of cars is about to get disrupted. 76 Buick Estate, sponsored by Hey Steve Productions. Bam! Two vehicles removed from the track. Spider goes off and Salt Shaker's upside down. Those are both probably going to be eliminations. Solid hit. The Mercedes somehow lived through it. And there you can see Salt Shaker upside down for Emerald Undercurrent. Next up for Legionnaire, it's Double Vision, sponsored by Sid from Cybertron. Double Vision doesn't get anything going with the Buick. And now is curbside. That's not going to end well. Ice Pig's going to send down the Hydroplane, sponsored by Hendrika's Heavy Hauling. Hydroplane knocks off Double Vision, but look at that. Double Vision makes a great recovery. Now the Hydroplane is upside down. Ice Pig's had high hopes for Hydroplane, but not paying off right now. Crimson Crasher is going to send down Animal. This thing is an undercutter. Watch out below. Animal gets underneath the Buick, and a vehicle that's never been eliminated is just eliminated solidly by Animal, and the Devastation Wagons have just seen their best vehicle get destroyed. Spider Machine now, sponsored by Chome. Spider Machine takes out Animal and returns the favor. Animal thrown up in the air and cannot make a recovery. Spider Machine savaging the crashers on that one. Now it's going to be Ocelot, sponsored by Hey Hey's Hatchback Hanger. Ocelot! Wow, look at this! Another car that's never been eliminated, Spider Machine, tossed upside down. And Ocelot also may have just sacrificed herself to take out Spider Machine. Wow, that is crazy. Two long-lasting cars may have just gotten eliminated in the first round. Here comes Power Piston, sponsored by Bentley's Brakes and Bumpers. Power Pistons further takes down the Ocelot. And if you look at the field right now, you've got a solid line of cars, and then suddenly there is a point where the massacre begins. A lot of great cars already getting eliminated. Beasting now, sponsored by Judy Collins. Beasting almost takes out Power Pistons, but Power Pistons flips around and lands on his feet. Good hit there by Beasting, but Beasting is perched in a precarious position now. Auburn 852, sponsored by Sloth's Automotive Sashay and Buffet. The Auburn slaps Beasting off the track, and Beasting, another vehicle that lasted a long time for Sting operation, right now in deep trouble. Berserk's up next for the undercurrent, gonna cut through the chaos. Ooh, Berserk runs into trouble from two Amaranthan cars, biffs off the side and goes right upside down. An unimpressive start for Buzzerk. Volvo P220 Amazon now, sponsored by Wolf of Fiber Art for the wagons. And the Volvo somehow causes Buzzerk to flip right side up and Buzzerk kind of drives away like nothing happened. Wow, that was a crazy recovery. And unfortunately for Amaranthan, looks like the Mercedes is in deep trouble now. Troy Soldier, sponsored by Brendan Walsh. Troy Soldier smacks into the back of the Volvo, can't go anywhere, and is stuck. Up now it's the Blue Shark, sponsored by Judy Collins. Blue Shark slams Troy Soldier off the track. Nice hit there. Blue Shark has never been eliminated. It's been a very reliable car for the Ice Picks. Crimson gonna send down the 67 Ford GT40 Mark IV next, sponsored by Turbo Ventures. The Ford undercuts Blue Shark. This is a dastardly hit from Crimson Crashers. They may have just taken out Blue Shark and Ice Picks are gonna be devastated if that's the case. Wow, the undercutters on Crimson are just merciless.
Iron Man's up for the Lord, sponsored by Brendan Walsh. Iron Man smacks that car underneath a few more cars. The Volvo gets shunted off to the right and Blue Shark continues to stay upside down. Wow, we've already seen a number of cars that have never been eliminated. They're out in the first round. This is crazy. Yeah, exactly. Here comes Cookie in the cart, sponsored by Wayland Enterprises International. All right. Cookie goes underneath Iron Man and flips upside down immediately. Might not stay like that, but wow, what a hit. And now there's a big pileup there. It looks like a pileup that's ripe for the hitting. Buzz Off is going to give it a shot, sponsored by Jedi. Buzz Off slaps Iron Man over the top of the Ford. The Ford goes upside down, and Cookie is still upside down in the minecart. Good hit for the runners there. Dragon Tail now, sponsored by Wayland Enterprises International. Dragon Tail causes an upheaval, and I think the Mark IV recovers, and so does Baby Cookie. That shot did not do a whole lot. Actually, Buzz Off's now upside down. Still on the track, though. That was chaos. Here comes the custom Cadillac Fleetwood to enter the fray, sponsored by Raggle Radio. Dragon Tail takes off and jumps over the big pile of cars, flies over fairly well right until the end, and then turns sideways, and that might be it for Dragon Tail over there. And here comes the latest addition to Emerald Undercurrent, Gallant Eterna. The Eterna goes right off the back of the Fleetwood, flips over, and makes a fantastic recovery. That's one of the reasons that they picked that car up. Look at that. And guess what? Saved Dragon Tail from certain doom. With a little knock, it came upright. Next up for the wagons, it's the 67 BW 1600, sponsored by Tim the Bear Neal. 1600 locks it in on the track. Devastation wagons haven't been doing so well this round. That thing's got to stay alive. Next up for Legionary, it's the Commuter, sponsored by Raggle Radio. The Commuter gets underneath the square back, just about pushes him off the track. He can't quite do it. Next up, it's Power Rocket for the Ice Pick, sponsored by Swedenborg Smorgasbord. Power Rocket knocks the Squareback straight up in the air, off the track, and the Squareback makes a good recovery. Praetorian Guard now for Crimson Crashers. Praetorian slams into the pile, and two cars are upended. The Commuter and Fleetwood upside down. Power Rocket managed to survive that. And just look at the hill of carnage right there in this spot on the track. I've never seen anything like it. Seems like easily two-thirds of the cars that are coming down are ending upside down in this area. Now here comes Thor for the Thunderlord, sponsored by Sid from Cybertron. Thor hammers into Praetorian Guard, and Power Rocket goes flying off the edge and manages to stay upright. Thor's locked in. Mind Control's wisely saved their most unstable vehicle till the end. Redstone Monstrosity, sponsored by Sloss Automotive Sashay and Buffet. Redstone actually didn't really do any damage. In fact, helped Buzz Off make a recovery over there on the right-hand side. That's great news for the Sunrunners, not so much for Mind Control. Redstone is now curbside. Speaking of the Sunrunners, here comes What42, sponsored by Chome. What42 slams into the back of Redstone Monstrosity and can't make much happen. Redstone trying to lock it in on the track, but too big. Here comes Evil Weevil Sister, sponsored by TJG. And a big hit there from Evil Weevil, and What42 tumbles and can't quite make it back upright. And that was the final car of this round, so What42 is going to be a loss for the Sunrunners. And scanning across that massive pileup, it looks like we lost 24 cars in this round alone. That's almost half the field. It has been a wild first round in this final. Let's go to the aftermath. Devastation wagons and ice picks were disasterized in this round. They each only have one vehicle left. Crimson lost three, a lot of their undercutters, and Emerald and Amaranth and each lost two. Legionary lost three. My Control and Sting Operation each lost two. And Sunrunners and Thunderlords did great for themselves in this round. Only one loss apiece, though it was a big one for Thunderlords. On to round two of the finals. Evil Weevil slotting in at the middle of the track. Sunrunners are up first, and they are going to send down lightning speed first. They do like to do that, and here's your running order this time. All ten teams still in this match. Next up, it's going to be Captain America for the Thunderlords. Seems like the Thunderlords like to get this vehicle down early on as well. 
First up for Sting Operation, it's Dragon Tail, who had that near miss last round. Smashes into the back of Captain America and gets Captain underneath Lightning Speed. Lightning Speed able to hang on, sort of pinched in between Evil Weevil there. Now Cruella DeVille for Amaranthin. Cruella smacks a couple cars off the track. Lightning Speed and Dragon Tail both backing off in relative safety. And now Buzzard for the undercurrent. Buzzer can't do any slicing and dicing this time, just smacks into the back of Cruella and Evil Weevil's off the track. We got a nice line of cars going. Let's see if Iron Golem is gonna continue lining up or cause some mishaps. Oh, that was a nice hit. Buzzer gets tossed off the track. Iron Golem just lifted him off with those forks and luckily for Buzzer, managed to make a recovery. Now Iron Golem is curbside. Praetorian Guard now for the Crashers. Big hit on the Iron Golem, and Praetorian Guard knocks it upside down, flips on its forks, and it's probably done over there by the crates. Tough hit for Mind Control. Legionary down to two cars, Double Vision's up. Double Vision slams Praetorian Guard off the track. That was a great hit. Praetorian getting some of the same medicine that he just gave to Iron Golem. Indigo Ice Picks lost their ace in the hole. Blue Shark, now it's just Power Rocket. Power Rocket knocks Double Vision off the track. Rocket's gotta stay alive here. Devastation Wagon's also down to just the VW Squareback. The Squareback slams Power Rocket off the track. Luckily for the Ice Picks, Power Rocket makes a good recovery. And now Squareback is curbside. Sunrunner sending down off track. Off track tries to take out the Squareback, but can't do it. Pops up on the back of Squareback and stays on the track. The Captain America bus, 102 grams. Big hit, sends two cars flying all the way over to the junkyard, goes off track and slams into some of those cars over there. But he survives. Squareback also does a pretty respectable job of recovering. Scorpedo. Scorpedo, nowhere to go, pops the back of the Captain America bus up a little bit, but can't get anything else happening. 31 doozy now for Amaranthin. The doozy knocks Scorpedo off the track, squeezes it in between Captain America, and that is what saved Scorpedo right there. And here comes the car that got the number two spot in the finals last year, La Melt. La Melt, a nice gentle tap in behind the doozy. Nothing too dangerous there, but now La Melt is dangerous for everyone who comes down. I'm here to help you out. Baby Cookie in the minecart gonna take the plunge. And the minecart flops into the back of Lamelt, starts to push it under the doozy, and Cookie wobbles around and settles in. I hope this helps! Here comes a big hit from the Fleet Flyer. Let's see if they decide to release that secret weapon. And they try, but it doesn't come out. Cookie goes all the way down to Captain America. Lamelt is underneath, and the doozy is knocked upside down. That could be an elimination for Amaranthin. Looks like they intended to release that secret weapon, but it got stuck halfway out. Interesting test coming up for the Fleet Flyer. Hammered Coop's coming down. Hammered Coop tries to get under that flyer, but can't do it. Goes into the back. That's going to create a little bit of a jump now, potentially. Secret weapon comes halfway out again. Buzz Off is up. Buzz Off does not go off the back of the Hammered Coop. Pushes the Coop up farther into Fleet Flyer, but stays on the track. Next up, it's Iron Man. Iron Man forces Buzz Off up on the back of Hammered Coop, but can't quite have enough force to get him to fall off, and he backs right up. Evil Weevil had a vicious hit last round. Let's see what she can get up to this time. Evil Weevil able to get Iron Man off the track, but that is about it, and then she skids right off to safety, though, so that's good. Iron Man, however, is not in a safe position. Auburn now for Amaranthin. Auburn manages to push under Buzz Off. Can't get Buzz Off off the track, but Auburn's got that low slope back. Could be a bit of a ramp. Next up is the Galant. Hey, it's beat up, but it still runs. Galant slams Buzz Off off the track. Buzz Off makes a nice recovery after a flip there. Didn't even notice that that happened. And Iron Man manages to also make a recovery. The Galant is teetering. And I think Iron Man wants that trophy for the Thunderlords going over and trying to get underneath it. It's a little premature though. Still got a lot of competitors on the field. Next up, it's the monstrosity for mind control. 
Redstone Monstrosity goes right off the back of the Auburn, drives down Fleet Flyer and flips upside down. Not a good result there. Mind Control suffers the loss of their biggest vehicle, and the Gallant makes an amazing recovery from that hit. Now here comes Power Pistons. Power Pistons flips off the back of the Auburn. The Auburn goes off the track to the side and is fine. Can't say the same thing about Power Pistons, though. Just flipped right upside down and is done. Tough loss there for the runners. It's the Lord of Thunder himself, Thor. Thor tries to get that hammer down, but can't do it. Goes off the back of Hammer Coop. Speaking of hammers, skitters all the way across two vehicles and makes a recovery. Thor taking full advantage of those wings right there, I think. I don't know how he managed to make that recovery. That was impressive, and that was a nice jump. And round two is already over. It looks like we lost a total of five vehicles on that round. Taking a look at the battlefield. Let's head into the aftermath and see who we lost. Amaranthan lost one, Crimson lost one, Devastation managed to stay in the competition, Emerald didn't lose any, and Icebix stayed in as well. Legionary still at two, Mind Control got the worst of it that round, losing two, Sting Operation still at three, Sunrunners down to three, and Thunderlord stay at four. Here we go into round three. Captain America starting us off for the Thunderlords. Still got four left. They are looking really good right now. We still got 10 teams in this match. Sting Operation is going to start off with Dragon Tail. Dragon Tail pokes the back of Captain America, and Captain America runs up to the front of the trap. Kind of like he just got stung. Buzzer now for the undercurrent. Buzzer gets that blade under Dragon Tail. Dragon Tail is on the ropes, but then makes an amazing recovery. Bounces off the wings and flips over. Great job. Gonna stick around for another round, it looks like. Lightning speed. Lightning speed, a fairly gentle tap on the back of Buzzer. Can't really get anything going. Double vision. Double Vision gets under lightning speed, and Buzzerk is forced off the track, but not enough power there to cause much damage. I think with that big engine, Double Vision would have tried to do more damage. Cruella DeVille, Amaranthan down to two. They have not really been in this position in the matches they've been a part of. Lightning Speed makes a great recovery on that hit by Cruella, and pops back over right side up. That was a close one. Now it's time for the square back for the wagons. The Squarebacks knocks Cruella under Double Vision, and Double Vision flips over upside down. That is going to be an elimination for Legionary. They are just going to be down to the hammered coop. Ice Picks now with their only car, Power Rocket. Power Rocket slams into the square back and goes curbside. Very ineffective hit right there, but it may have positioned Power Rocket to rocket right off this track on the next hit. I'm an entrepreneur. It's the minecart. You ain't no friend of mine. The minecart pushes Power Rocket a little bit farther off the track. Can't quite do it, but now it definitely looks like that thing is going to be rocketing. And how? Fleet Flyer is up next. This is going to be a big hit. Power Rocket goes twisting off the track. Cookie is squished. A wild hit, and somehow Power Rocket still recovers, and the secret weapon does not deploy. Let's see what happens when the Captain America bus hits it. The bus slams into Fleet Flyer. Wow, got Fleet Flyer up in the air on the back of that minecart for a second. That was looking dangerous. And nope, that secret weapon is still stuck. Scorpedo now for the operation. Scorpedo slams into the back of that heavy bus and can't do anything. Cookie is poised on the back of that square back. Here comes the Eterna. Eterna bounces off of Scorpedo, but wow, did that end up working out flawlessly. The Eterna just bounces, flips, and is safe. This car has been a really solid addition to Emerald Undercurrent. Total survivor. Off track. Off track goes flying, but that is what off track likes to do. Look at all the twists and turns, and somehow off track ends up right side up at the end of this. That was incredible. Sunrunner's got a winner right there. Now Scorpedo's got something to worry about. It's the hammered coop. And the coop knocks Scorpedo off, but Scorpedo takes advantage of the Eterna being right there and flips off and recovers. Now the coop is going under. The Captain America bus could be trouble. The Auburn's got a chance to do some damage here for Amaranthan. 
The Auburn does it, pushes the hammered coop underneath the Captain America bus, and that heavy vehicle goes sideways and is out. A tough elimination, but these two cars in concert got him. Iron Man. Iron Man does a weird flip off the back of the Auburn, bounces and goes upside down. Wow, things are suddenly not looking good at all for the Thunderlords. Two successive eliminations. Evil Weevil now. Evil Weevil tries to take out Auburn. Can't quite do it, goes up on the back of Hammer Coop. And here comes Lamel, undercurrent electing to send Lamel down later in the round. Lamelt gets right under Evil Weevil, and that was a nasty hit. We've seen Lamelt do that to the track buffer time and time again, and unfortunately, forcing operation just happened again. Buzz off now for the runners. Buzz off gets underneath Lamelt, and look at that. That was nearly a devastating hit. Lamelt gets pushed off the track. Not many cars can actually do that, and Lamelt is endangered here. Thor's up now. Thor slams into Buzz Off, the final car for this round, and nope, they're not gonna do any more damage to Lamelt. No more damage at all. That's the end of round three. Scanning the field, it looks like we lost four cars on that one, and the ones that are gonna take the brunt of it are gonna be Thunderlords. And a close one for Lamelt in that round. Taking a look at the aftermath, Amaranth and Staying at two, Crimson still at one, Devastation and Ice Pick still at one, and Emerald is still at three. Legionary down to one, Mind Control still at one, Sting Operation down to two, Sunrunners at three, and Thunderlords, who were looking good last round, not looking quite as good now with two. Starting us off, it's gonna be Buzzard for Emerald Undercurrent. The randomized team running order is up. Teams, of course, get to choose which car they send down and win. Lightning Speed gonna start it off for the Sunrunners as usual. If you missed the first episode of the finals, make sure you go and check that out. It was wild. And it also has the rules to the Junkyard Joust event so you know what's going on if you've never seen it before. Basically, the cars just have to survive. Can't go upside down or sideways. Cruella now for Amaranth. Cruella slams into place, knocks Buzzerk off the track just about all the way. Buzzerk's got a good chance of surviving in that position but he is gonna have to survive a big hit from Captain America. Captain America pushes Buzzerk off the track completely. Lightning speed is curbside and the cars are starting to line up. Dragon Tail now for Sting Operation. Dragon Tail pushes forward the line and Lightning Speed is pushed off the track. No eliminations yet. Now things start to get interesting. Fleet Flyer for the Crimson Crashers and we are into the teams that only have one car apiece. There are five of them. Big hit from Fleet Flyer and Dragon Tail goes head over wing and manages to make an astute recovery. It looks like they've been trying to deploy that secret weapon but somehow they're not getting enough force to do it. Soul Devastation Wagon, the VW Squareback. Squareback slams underneath, somehow gets underneath that gate, pushes the secret weapon back up again. A nice safe move by the Squareback. Now here comes Power Rocket for the Ice Pick. Rocket bounces off Squareback and goes curbside, almost sideways there, definitely in danger, but there's still a good chance he could rocket to safety. Baby Cookie likes to ride in the minecart, and here she goes. A nice hit there, but Power Rocket, a very nice move, flips over and lands right side up. Great recovery. Power Rocket got off the track just in time. Here comes Hammered Coop, watch out below. Hammered Coop knifes under Baby Cookie in the minecart, and the minecart goes upside down right on top of her little head, and that could be it. We've seen that minecart recover from this situation before, but it is gonna be hard. What's wrong? And What's now you? here comes Lamelt for Emerald Undercurrent. Lamelt wanting to take a shot at the Hammered Coop. Can't get under the Hammered Coop. Pushes underneath the square back, and we've got a pileup going on. And now the Sunrunner's choosing to send down Buzz Off. This car also has some undercutting ability. Buzz Off gets underneath Lamelt, almost manages to take Lamelt out, but Lamelt hooks onto the back of the square back and <laughs> makes a recovery. Another close call for Lamelt. Here comes the Auburn now for Amaranth, and Lamelt's been in that situation a couple times in this final, just barely made it out of it. Buzz Off gets pushed up on top of the Auburn. The square back is in trouble right now. Get out your lightning rods, it's time for the Thunder God. Thor 
Omar goes off the back of Auburn, and Buzz Off is pushed upside down. After that brave attempt to go after Lamel, it ends with Buzz Off upside down on top of the melt, and Thor makes a nice drive off the track. Scorpedo. Scorpedo goes wild all the way down to the end of the track by the crates. And I didn't even see if Scorpedo made a recovery there. Seemed detritus flying everywhere. Scorpedo bounces and flips and look at that. An impressive recovery way down by the crates. Amazing job by Scorpedo there. Here comes the Gallant. The Scorpedo stepping it up when it matters most. The Galant pops the Auburn straight off the back of the coupe and it goes flying over and over into the tires and upside down. A nasty elimination there by that Galant. What a veteran move and then just drives back off of the hammered coupe. Great stuff. Final car for the round off track. Off track tries to take out the Gallant but can't do it. That Gallant is crafty and pushes into the back of the coupe and saves itself. And that is going to end round four. And what a round it was. And it looks like three vehicles were eliminated in this round. Let's go to the aftermath and see what happened. Amaranthan drops down to one and joins the ranks of many of the other teams. Devastation Wagon still in this, as are the Crimson Crashers. Emerald stays at three and Ice Pick stay at one. Legionaries still in it. Mind Control, the first team eliminated in this match. Our wildcard team and they are done. Sting Operation, Thunderlord stay at two and Sunrunners drop down to two. Emerald Undercurrent going with Berserk again first for this round. The only team with three cars remaining. The running order is up one through nine. It's round five. Here comes Dragon Tail. Dragon Tail gets underneath Berserk and Berserk goes up and over into the safety spot, but it's not safe. Berserk is upside down and almost certainly out of the match in that position. Sting Operation is a pretty well-rounded team. If one of their members gets eliminated, the other ones kind of step it up and manage to stick around. Captain America. The captain smacks into the back of Dragon Tail and the only thing to happen there is Evil Weevil, our track buffer, gets removed from the track. Sunrunner's down to two, and they're going to stick with sending Lightning Speed down first. Lightning Speed can't really do much against the back of that heavy Captain America vehicle. Just lurks slightly behind it. Power Rocket's up for the Ice Picks. Power Rocket bursts under Lightning Speed. Lightning Speed makes a nice bouncing recovery over off to the right of the track. And Power Rocket is in position. BW Squareback made a good play last round. Let's see if it happens again. Squareback locks it in. That's the best thing you can do in this situation if you can't get off the track completely. This is going to shake things up on the track there. The Fleet Flyers come down 181 grams. Fleet Flyer annihilates two cars on the track, and one of them makes an awesome tumbling recovery, and one of them does not. The Squareback goes right upside down, took the brunt of the impact, and that could be it, folks. Devastation Wagons might be out of this match, and now Hammered Coop is going to take a shot at the back of that Fleet Flyer if anyone can get under that thing. And it's not happening. In fact, the secret weapon now deploys on top of Hammered Coop. That is not going to help out Crimson Crashers at all. That's not what they want that weapon for. It's supposed to be a ramp, and it didn't work. Cruella DeVille now for Amaranthan. Cruella pops the secret weapon off the track and actually manages to get the Hammered Coop underneath Fleet Flyer. This is a big deal right here, and that thing is lightened up too after that secret weapon got dislodged. Here comes Lamelt. Lamelt, not a whole lot of force, but it starts to wedge Hammered Coop underneath there. Scorpedo's a fast car. This could shake things up. Scorpedo goes flying off the back of Lamel. Wow, dude, look at how fast that thing went off the back. And look at the recovery afterward. Just skittering all over the top of Fleet Flyer. Amazing lands over in the tires by the height bar. Wow, that car is on fire. Thor. Thor tries to do the same thing, but not with the same results. Pops on the back of Fleet Flyer, pops up, is going all right, and then spins on the hammer and falls backwards after multiple bounces on his own teammate. Wow, that is probably it for Thor, but what a magnificent way to go out off track. 
Off track goes flying off, and it's not good either. Lamelt is causing devastation here. The Sunrunners are gonna lose another vehicle. Off track, a survivor, been great for them, but not this time. Final car of the round is gonna be the Gallant. The Gallant has to go off his own teammate, and look at this, goes so far up to the crates and bounces and flips back and doesn't make a recovery, lands right next to Off Track, almost had it. Off Track managing to get a little revenge there right in the final throws of round five. Let's take a look at our aftermath. The teams are getting whittled down, Devastation Wagons are out. One left for all the other teams on this page. And the only team with two cards remaining, Sting Operation. Legionary, Sunrunners, Thunderlords all at one. We've got eight teams left. It's round six. Scorpedo starting us off. Scorpedo looking so good in this championship. Not really that impressive in the qualifiers in the main event, but it doesn't matter. Scorpedo stepped it up when it mattered. Lamelt seemed a little put off by the hammered coupe earlier in this match, but Lamelt has started to become the force of destruction it is known to be, and now slides underneath Scorpedo just ever so slightly. That could be bad for Scorpedo, though. Scorpedo's been recovering in very dramatic ways, not just from being pushed off the track gently or forcefully like it's probably gonna happen with Captain America. Captain America does just that and Scorpedo does it again, pulls it out, grabs onto Captain America and then uses Captain America to flip over and make a recovery. Wow, that was pretty good. Even Evil Weevil recovered right there. Let's see if the hammered coop can get under Captain America. Oh, didn't even have to get underneath Captain America. Look at that. Just smashes into the back of Captain America. Knocks him up into the crates. And that heavy vehicle flips right upside down like a big old turtle. And almost manages to flip over, actually, but can't quite do it. Assuming Captain America doesn't get pushed over somehow, we may have just seen the end of Thunderlords. Power Rocket's going right off the back of Hammered Coop and with an amazing grace, settles over on the left-hand side of the track after hitting the crates. Wow, that was a steady landing. And now Hammered Coop is going under Lamelt. Cruella's got a chance to cause some trouble right here. Cruella tries to eliminate Lamelt, but Lamelt is not having it. Goes up in the air, but then falls back and gets off the track to safety. Wow, another attempt on Lamelt that almost did the trick. Here comes lightning speed now for Sunrunners. Lightning speed slams into the back of Cruella and locks it in on the track. The three cars that are down on the track are gonna have to survive a big hit here from the Fleet Flyer. And the Fleet Flyer knocks two vehicles off the track, and one of them is out. Upside down, Cruella DeVille goes, and that is gonna put down Amaranthin. Lightning speed making a pretty good recovery. Still on the track, though, so not safe yet, but that is a devastating hit right there. Amaranthin is probably out of this match. Amaranthin made it all this way, and now they've had any chance at victory snatched away from them. Dragon Tail doing a little jostling in the back of Fleet Flyer, but that is it for round six, and it looks like we just lost two teams. We're gonna be down to six. Amaranthin is gone. Crimson, Emerald, and Indigo down to one. Legionary at one still. Sting Operation still at two. Doing great right now. And Sunrunners at one. Thunderlords, a team that many thought were going to be impossible to get rid of. They're out. Round seven. Scorpedo's up again, going down first for Sting Operation. Our running order is up. Six teams remain. And here comes Power Rocket for the Ice Picks. This thing keeps making great recoveries. Power Rocket gets underneath Scorpedo, and Scorpedo does not make the recovery that we've been looking at this whole match. Scorpedo gets a bad bounce and lands straight upside down. Not enough momentum to carry it over. A nice shot by Power Rocket there, very aggressive. And now here comes Fleet Flyer. Fleet Flyer tries to knock Power Rocket out, but can't do it. Power Rocket sticks it on the track and pushes Fleet Flyer back, rebuffed. Fleet Flyer with that back down, trying to protect from the hammered coop. 
And it works flawlessly. The hammered coupe just drives right inside. Almost closes that thing up. Not enough momentum to get the vehicle off the track, though it was close. They both could have got eliminated right there. Instead, he's lodged firmly inside Fleet Flyer. Looking pretty safe to me. Lamelt's not gonna have enough power to do much here, but might be able to get underneath Fleet Flyer. Can't do it, goes up a back and nudges Hammered Coop a little bit. And now Lightning Speed has to survive a jaunt off the back of Lamelt. Lightning Speed drives up on top of Lamelt and then quickly drives back off. Nice safe maneuver right there and that might do the trick for Lightning Speed final car of this round is going to be Dragon Tail. Let's see if Dragon Tail can cause some damage. Oh no! Dragon Tail has knocked Lightning Speed all the way over Fleet Flyer and Lightning Speed goes up on the side and stays on the side. Sunrunner's only hope left in this match and Lightning Speed is not coming back from that. The round is over and so are the Sunrunners. A lot of people thought the Sunrunners had a chance at victory this season, but that is going to do it for them. They're going to get sixth place in the final. Now there's just five cars left and five teams. Sting Operation finally getting down to one, losing Scorpedo. And things are about to get really interesting, folks. Round eight coming up. If you've ever wondered how we get those overhead shots, our sky cam is actually the hot air sky swami. The junkyard joust blimp that floats through the air and gets all the overhead shots. Thanks, sky swami. All right, the dice have been rolled. The running order is up, and Lamel gets luck of the draw, or bad luck of the draw, depending on if Lamel wanted to go first or not, because coming up second is gonna be the Hammered Coop. Hammered Coop takes it to Lamel, knocks Lamel off the track, and Lamel makes a pro recovery right there after a nasty little flip. Lamel looking pretty composed on that hit. Power Rockets now gonna have to try not to go off the back of Hammered Coop. And doesn't quite manage it, pops up on the top of it, and now both cars are curbside, and this is interesting because that's not good for either of them. They're gonna have to take a hit from 122 grams of Fleet Flyer. The Fleet Flyer messes them both up, couldn't see what happened there. Power Rocket goes up and almost goes over, but doesn't, and actually comes down enough to keep Hammered Coop steady, and both cars kind of helped each other there in a weird way. Neither of them is eliminated. That could have been bad, but wasn't. Dragon Tail, and now we are down to the last car of this round. Dragon Tail drives into the back of Fleet Flyer and survives. So no eliminations on that round, but a lot of drama. That was close for pretty much all the vehicles involved. There's only five cars left. We don't really need an aftermath anymore, so we're gonna get right back into the action again on the next round, Power Rocket. Ice Pick starting us off, then Sting, Legionary, Crashers, and Undercurrent. No cars were eliminated in that last round, so all the remaining competitors have been told to increase their speed to try to get those eliminations to happen. Dragon Tail. Dragon Tail takes it to the back of Power Rocket. Power Rocket manages to boot itself off the track just about completely. Not all the way, not completely safe yet. Now Dragon Tail's gonna have to take a hit from Hammer Coop. Hammered Coop annihilates Dragon Tail, but look at that recovery. Absolutely incredible. Flipped over multiple times and takes it like a champ. Wow, that was amazing. You gotta admire what Sting Operation's been able to do with the cars on their team. Amazing recoveries all around. Fleet Flyer now. Fleet Flyer hits the back of the Hammered Coop. Hammered Coop almost gets punched off the track by that, but manages to stay on target. And Fleet Flyer not going off the back of Hammered Coop. Lucky for him. Lamelt. Lamelt pops the back of Fleet Flyer. Can't really do anything offensively with such a big vehicle. Gonna be way more dangerous when Fleet Flyer inevitably has to drive over Lamelt. And we're on to the next round. Looks like everybody's gonna have to drive over Lamelt this time, potentially, since the Hammered Coop is gonna be the final car. And we've told all the vehicles they have to increase their speed even more because of no eliminations on that last round, even though there was a lot of action. Dragon Tail's gonna have to take a high speed jump over Lamelt. 
And Dragon Tail can't manage it. Dragon Tail finally runs out of luck. We've seen this happen before. It happened with Revrod. The same thing, an agile car, but it finally runs out of luck. And that just happened. Unless another car runs into Dragon Tail, it is in deep trouble right now. Fleet Flyer. And Fleet Flyer drives up on top of Lamelt. He's perched in a very precarious position right now. A lot of people wondering, how does a vehicle like Fleet Flyer ever get eliminated? Well, Power Rocket's got a chance right now. Power Rocket boosts underneath Fleet Flyer, and it is enough to topple the massive vehicle. It's like watching a huge tree fall, tips, and it's sideways and done. Crimson Crashers are out of this match. This might be two teams we're seeing eliminated right now, and Hammered Coop still has a chance to do more damage. Hammered Coop, wow, what a hit. That could have been the end of the match right there if Hammered Coop had gotten a little bit lucky. Power Rocket, the great recovery, and even Lamelt has a bit of a great recovery right there. Absolutely stunning round. Look at the devastation on the field, courtesy of Hot Air Sky Swami. We're gonna go to Aftermath because we just lost two teams. Crimson Crashers are gonna get fifth place in this event. Emerald and Ice Picks are still solidly in this. Legionary in this. Sting Operation, after all their acrobatics are out, but they are gonna get fourth place. And we're moving on to the next round. Three cars remain. Power Rocket, only car that survived round one for the Indigo Ice Picks. Unbelievable, still here and still a competitor. Took out Fleet Flyer in combination with the Melt last round. Hammered Coop really had a chance in that last round to do some damage. Still has a chance here to take out Power Rocket. Hammered Coop can't do it. Power Rocket, oh man, look at that recovery. Not only flips over, lands back on the track and then thinks better of it and is like, nope, I'm getting off the track. I don't want to be on here anymore. It's not safe. And now Lamelt's got to try to do something to the Hammered Coop here. Lamelt, even at the higher speeds, just not able to do enough to get that car off the track and sidles up behind it. No eliminations in this round. And guess what, folks? It's time for No Holds Barred. What's No Holds Barred? Well, we're gonna remove Evil Weevil from the field. No more track buffer. They're gonna ram into that safety bar at full speed and the cars can choose to go down backwards. Lamelt goes down forwards, hit that safety bar and bounces back a little bit. Lamelt wisely not going down backwards was burned on that last season. Power Rocket now going forward and wow, Power Rocket doesn't even go off of Lamelt like in the past actually boots Lamelt off the track. An unexpected hit right there. Fully expected Power Rocket to go sliding off Lamelt. And now Hammer Coop's gonna take another shot at Power Rocket. Hammer Coop, ooh, a nice hit right there. Almost got Lamelt over on that one, actually. Power Rocket, a great recovery as usual. How do you eliminate that car when it keeps making those brilliant recoveries? Now, No Holds Barred really gonna start to take effect. Hammered Coop taking advantage of the rules, going down back backwards, bouncing off the safety bar, going almost halfway back up the track, and now lurking and waiting for Lamelt, facing forward. Lamelt slides off a hammered coop. That almost worked, but Lamelt is too crafty for that kind of a ramp. Lamelt has been through it before with Creature from the Black Lagoon and knows how to make a recovery from that kind of a hit. Power Rocket, though, remains to be seen what happens when Power Rocket hits the front of hammered coop. Wow, Power Rocket goes flying up into the crate, slams into them incredibly hard, comes back, actually lands on top of Lamelt a little bit, and then just drives off like it was nothing. Man, this car's amazing, and guess what? Who's going first now? It's Power Rocket going down backwards. Power Rocket slams into that safety bar, goes all the way back up, and stays down now by the end. Could be a good position to be in to cause some trouble, Lamelt. Lamelt, even at the high speed, is still kind of a slow car, but enough to get Power Rocket off the track, cannot get it over and upside down. And now Hammer Coop gonna take a crack at Lamelt. Lamelt's gotta be a little worried right now. Hammer Coop! 
Hoop. Wow, look at that hit. Lamel just goes straight up in the air. Just straight up. And then lands flawlessly on the ground. That was an amazing hit. It looked like a frog jumping straight up in the air after it was surprised. Wow. All right. Well, it's time for another round. The melt going down first this time. Then it's going to be followed by Hammered Coop and Power Rocket. We go until there's one car left, folks. There's got to be a winner. We'll go until it's over. Luck of the draw and Hammered Coop gets to take another shot at the melt. Hammered Coop does it! Hammered Coop has eliminated LaMelt! LaMelt hits the crate, flips upside down, and there's almost no chance of recovery right there. LaMelt, unbelievable! This car is so difficult to eliminate, and it just happened. Now Power Rocket going down backwards. Power Rocket slams backwards into Hammered Coop. It actually prevents Power Rocket from going off of the back of Hammered Coop. Hammered Coop, wow, what a round. You don't see LaMelt on its back almost ever, folks. Take a good look. That is unusual. And that is going to put Emerald Undercurrent out of the tournament. They are going to get third place. They've gotten first. They've gotten second. They've never gotten third in the finals. Unusual, unusual. Ice picks now. Power Rocket slams into that safety rail. Paint is coming off the track, and Power Rocket takes its place. Not going down backwards this time. Hammered Coop also going down forward. Hammered Coop takes it to Power Rocket, but as usual, Power Rocket is not phased by those hits. Power Rocket somehow <laughs> recovering every single time. LaMelt couldn't take it, but Power Rocket thrives. And now Hammer Coop is going to try to shake things up a little bit and go down backwards. Hammered Coop gets a little bounce off the safety rail. You got to be a little bit careful when you take that hit at this high speed. But Hammered Coop manages to lock it in. And now, last time it prevented Power Rocket from going off the front of the Coop like a jump. And it doesn't work this time, but Power Rocket goes all the way up to the crates and comes right back, right side up. Yet again, how many more times are we going to see this? I think something might have broke off a of Power Rocket on that last hit. Power Rocket going down backwards again as it goes down first. Uh-oh, this is what you got to be worried about. Curbside now, not a position you want to be in on the track when you're about to take a full speed hit. Hammered Coop has a chance to win the match right now. Hammered Coop gets under and still cannot do it. Power Rocket goes over several times, over and over. Lands off the track, manages to get on his nose and flip over again. Big missed opportunity for Hammered Coop right there. Now gonna go down forward since backward didn't work last time. Hammered Coop takes that bounce, goes all the way back, and then kind of like a seesaw, coming all the way back to the front again. In position to try to do damage to Power Rocket. Hasn't been successful so far. Power Rocket has survived everything that everyone's thrown at him. Can he do it yet again? Oh, did you see that? What a hit by Power Rocket. Unbelievable. Never expected Power Rocket to be able to do something like that with the low back of Hammered Koopa. Look at this, folks. It's over. Power Rocket has finished the job. Somehow, this car that no one ever expected to make it to this point has just won the Junkyard Joust final match. What an incredible achievement, and here you can see the places that each of the teams got. The match may be over, but all of these teams did well just to get here in the first place. And there, unbelievable, your winner tonight, Power Rocket, with the second and third place teams, Legionary and Emerald Undercurrent, your new Junkyard Joust World Champions, the Indigo Ice Picks. This was a team effort. A lot of these cars put in great performances earlier in the season. It wasn't just this one car. Great team, great job. Congrats to the Ice Picks. We've got another award to give out. It is the most valuable player of the season. And as you might imagine, that's gonna be the Hammered Coop. This car seemed to come out of nowhere and it has been a menace on the field all season long. It'll be back next season along with the rest of its team and one new member. The first through third place teams get automatically entered into the main event next year and can skip the qualifiers. But they do get to swap one vehicle.
Well, that's just about it for- Oh. Whoa. Um. Well, I guess we're getting one final surprise here before the season ends. I don't know what that thing is, but I'm not liking the looks of it. Well, I guess we'll find out what's going on there in season four. Season four coming very soon. Thank you to every single one of my patrons for making this season possible. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I have. The post-apocalypse set is underway. I'm even doing a little revamp of the junkyard for next season. So become a patron now and help me make this happen. Thanks, everybody. See you soon.